Yo, what is up everybody? Jay the Great here, back with another podcast here today. I'm actually solo for the first time in quite some time. Uh, Batman might join us later on, but yeah, there's a chance that this one could be solo. Uh, like I said, it's been quite some time since that's happened, but the show will roll on. You know, the show must go on for the people. Uh, before we get any further, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. It's greatly appreciated. It gets us up in the algorithm. Um, the last pod did pretty well, having the great Thunder God on. Thanks to him again for that. Uh, but yeah, if you could take just a second out of your time, hit the like button. And if you're new, hit the sub button. Uh, there's plenty of content on the channel from you know, Naruto analysis videos, power scaling videos, uh, podcasts, etc. So if you could do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, so any questions you may have, folks, feel free to ask. I have a few pre live stream established questions already asked if you guys would like your questions answered more in depth like i always say make sure to ask them beforehand you can join my discord or comment on any video uh, specifically these would probably be better your questions and i answer them more in depth as i actually prepare for them so i take time out of my day to do that um so yeah if you want to ask if you want questions asked uh, if you want to ask questions and answer that and you want them answered in depth make sure to do that What's going on, Sir Goats, Legend, and Y State Prodigy? Thanks for coming in. But yeah, Batman might join us. We'll see. Uh, but yeah. So as you guys ask questions, by the way, members and super chat questions take priority. So I stop on my tracks and answer them swiftly and as efficiently as possible if you are a member or super chat. Uh, it's really appreciated. But while you guys do that, I will be answering pre established live questions while you guys come up with your own. Feel free to ask anything, folks. Anime, I always say this, anime, sports, whatever. Um, I try to keep it versatile on the pod for you guys and your entertainment. So, the first question that was asked, it's actually quite interesting, was Onuki versus Tsunade, right? So obviously a Naruto-related question. Uh, so this matchup is fairly contentious. Old man Onuki is relative to Daedara to some arbitrary extent, as evident by him and Daedara flying at relative levels of speed in the war arc, as we all know. Additionally, he possesses a one-shot elimination ability with his particle style, which is very, very potent, and like I said, a one-shot ability. So we have a guy, relative in speed to Daedara, with quite the arsenal, right? Now, with Tsunade, we have someone who is blatantly signing level, being a signing herself, with some of the highest levels of durability in the verse, excluding six path characters, of course, specifically with her strengths of 100 seal. So, continuing on, truthfully, if Onuki is airborne, it will present quite the struggle to Tsunade as she clearly can't levitate herself. Additionally, the particle style is something that even her durability and an individual of her caliber wouldn't be able to tank. In fact, she'd be de-atomized by it, so her high levels of durability would be negated by the durability negating ability of Onuki. Onuki is a hard counter to Tsunade's strengths right in most cases her durability is a huge advantage in battle however in this altercation and in this scenario against this specific combatant her durability would be negated so hence in conclusion i see onoku winning more times than not due to the advantages he has thanks to his very unique arsenal so actually the onoku would most likely win um is there scenarios where sonati could come out victorious absolutely if she's able to blitz him before he gets airborne and one-shots him with her monster strength, that's certainly plausible. Maybe she uses her uh, ninjutsu expertise to maybe cut him with her, you know, those chakra blades that medical ninju the medical ninjas use, something of that nature. But more than likely, he goes airborne and de atomizes her. Um, is it just UJ? Yeah, it's just me for now. Batman may join, so it, this could be an all solo pod. Uh, but Batman may join. Shinobi was busy. Uh, but Batman may join though. Do you think John Jones should be seen as the goat, even though he got caught for steroids? So this is actually something most people are not aware of when it comes to John Jones. Usada has reformed their standards and regulations for what is to be deemed as a positive steroid test, right? So actually, with the current legislation and standards of Usada, John Jones would have never uh, tested positive for steroids. So I do think he's the goat, and I do think that Usada has vindicated him. And the current standards are were made this way because essentially technology has gotten so advanced in the drug testing realm that even minuscule non-digestible amounts of steroids will be detected. So 
essentially if you even breathe in a whiff of whatever the steroid or PED is, you will be caught for it and test positive for it, right? It's not even digestible. It's not something that you can consciously and intentionally digest, right? Something as maybe drinking tainted water, for example, with minuscule amounts of PEDs, that is something you will test positive for with the current technology USADA possesses. So actually, I think John is the GOAT. And keep this in mind, he fought a lot of guys early on in the UFC's history, right? Guys like, um, his name's not coming to mind, guys like TRT Belfort, Vitor Belfort was on roids, um, there's other individuals as well, most likely. So, if anything, he beat guys on roids. He's that talented. So, if Batman joins, do you all want to debate if I pay? Yeah, we'll be down for that, for sure. Um, he hasn't hit me up. Let me see. Um, but yeah, if he joins, we'll definitely be open to that. What's up, Phantom Realm? Thanks for coming in. And by the way, folks, for you guys that all came in, make sure to hit the like button if you haven't already. It's greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated. But yeah, John Jones is the greatest of all time. Yeah. I got Onuka. He's a very hard counter to scenario. Literally her exact counter. Exactly. He is a durability negating combatant, which is the forte of Tsunade. Right. So. Um, but next question, while you guys ask, like I said, any questions at all, I do enjoy combat sports as well, almost as much as anime. So if you have combat sports questions, IRL questions, uh, any questions at all, feel free to ask. Uh, so the next one was Sakumo versus Five Kage Summit Sasuke. Very interesting indeed. So this is the way I decipher the conclusion to this one. This matchup is significantly contentious, mostly due to the minuscule datums that exist for Sakumo, aka there's really nothing on him empirically. Sakumo is stated to be far superior to the Sanin, with them not even paling in comparison to him according to Minato. Now, Five Kage Summit Sasuke, who clearly has more empirical evidence for him, is implied to even have surpassed Sage Mode Naruto from Naruto's own admission, who himself has surpassed the Sanin as well. So essentially what we have here are two Shinobi that are significantly superior to the Sanin. Right? So, however, one of the strongest premises you can create is the argument that Sasuke is faster than the rake faster than Sakamo, and here's why. Sasuke at the Five Kage Summit was displayed to have competed with Rekage, at least in V1, in terms of speed, who was deemed as the fastest shinobi of his time, only second to Minato himself. Um, and it's more than likely that Sakamo is included in this lore as well. So he would he would be inferior in speed most likely as well. Hence Sasuke being comparable to some arbitrary extent to that the caliber of speed allows us to rationally deduce that Sasuke is most likely faster than Minato. Additionally, Sakamo was heralded for his Kenjutsu, which is a which is the ability to to wield swords, uh, which would be a bad matchup against Sasuke as he had, he possesses a Susano and several long distance attacks on top of Genjutsu. So imagine this: a guy that's slower dealing with an individual that can fight long distance when that guy in question, the guy in question, uses close range attacks because he's a Kenjutsu god. Right? That's essentially what we're dealing with here. So. Sasuke, the specific iteration of Sasuke, I see coming out on top most likely. Again, I am aware of the minuscule datums for Sakamo. It's very, very, there's a very minuscule amount of information on the guy, but because of that, there is no real theory to create for him. So, did you see NC Hammer's radio? He says Madara was afraid of Onoki. Yeah, dude, he has to be baiting because there's literally a scene, at least in the anime, where Onoki's scared of Madara. So, in fact, the antithesis takes place. Onuki is scared shitless of Modern, and then we see it in the Warwick as well, when Modern is dropping like island-sized meteors on the battlefield. So, it's uh, I would say bait to be honest. Imagine you're a therapist, and the first thing you see is Boruto in your waiting room. Oh, that's current Boruto has a lot of demons. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. But yeah, folks, feel free to keep asking questions. Any questions at all? How strong do you think Code will be without his limiters? Where do you scale him potentially? Without his limiters, he's certainly very, very uh, capable. But even in the most current manga, from my recollection, he seems fearful of Ida and Damon, even without his limiters present, implying that he most likely is inferior to those two. Um, that's the most rational conclusion to deduce. So I would say he's very capable. Um, he seems fairly confident in facing the current 
not the current, but the iteration of Kawaki he does observe and you know uh, encounter. So it's, he's more than likely superior to current Boruto and Kawaki. I, I don't include the time skip. I mean the last chapter of Boruto that we see. I do think Kawaki is most likely superior to those guys. Um, now someone did ask me a good question as far as the time skip. Someone asked me how strong do I think Boruto will be. I'm actually very curious on the progression that Kishimoto will give Boruto um, with the time skip. Will he make him significantly stronger, which will transitively mean Kawaki as well, or will he only make him, to some arbitrary extent, slightly stronger? It's definitely interesting uh, to see what will take place. How much time is going to pass? Um, that's also another aspect of the narrative that I am very curious about. All these factors would determine... Uh, what the progression of Boruto and Kawaki will be. Um, as far as Sasuke, maybe to make him relevant to the narrative, they give him some sort of ability or increase in power. Um, just for him to be relevant, something's going to have to take place. Because if not, he will be complete fodder to someone like Code uh, or Damon for that matter. So I'm very curious on how that dynamic is going to play out as well. Um, I do think Boruto will be stronger, obviously. It's very obvious. And I do think Sasuke will teach him some of his ways as well. It's it's very, very uh, intriguing to see where this will go. So, Do you think Boruto looks younger than Boruto from episode 1? Where does that there might be a second time skip? Interesting. Um, I don't think he looks younger uh, than episode 1. I wouldn't be surprised if there's, if there's a second time skip. Uh, because right here in the, the very picture that I posted for that I have for this stream... Boruto doesn't appear to be as old as he is in the very first scene of the time skip. Um, actually, reading your question again, yeah, I do think he looks younger. Um, I thought you meant like kid Boruto. Uh, if you mean the time skip scene, yeah, I do think he looks younger than that. Um, so it's very possible there's two time skips. I think that would be a little bit of an overkill. I think there should just be progression. Um, even if it takes more chapters, that's fine. But I do think he's younger here. I don't think he's as old as he was in that scene. I'd be surprised if that's the case. Um, not to counter myself, in the very design that we're seeing here, we see Boruto with what appears to be Sasuke's sword in his glove. So there is a possibility that he is as old as he is in Episode 1 in the, in the time skip scene. It's certainly a plaus plausible as well. However, I doubt it. Um, I doubt it that Kishimoto would jump to the very scene that we see. Um, but we'll have to wait and find out. So, As far as do I think... Well, yeah, I think I answered it. Two time skips? No, I don't think so. It's a possibility. I wouldn't be completely shocked by it, but I predict not. Daedra, Hydev, Sage Jiraiya. Sage Jiraiya? It's definitely debatable for sure. Who you got? Casey Minuto versus Peak EMS Sasuke with and without Jugo's Curse Mark Amp. Well, with the current Minato one-shot... Right, that has just been released. Minato's skill is even higher than what we thought, once thought, right? So I do believe that KCM Minato more than likely is superior to even Hashirama. And Hashirama is superior to Madara. And Madara didn't approach his past power, according to Hashirama, until he got like Sage Mode and etc. So I think EMS Sasuke, definitely without Jugo, would most likely fall to KCM Minato. Um, However, with Jugo, he has a little bit better chance. Um, a little bit better chance. But either way, I see him falling with the current scaling that we now have of Minato. So, Minato is just ex extremely powerful, apparently. So, as much as some people don't want to admit that. I don't think, and I really hope that Borto doesn't become stronger than Baron Monaroto. Yeah, uh, TG was talking about this on the last stream. He said that... Um, he hopes that Baron Baron Mo Naruto is like the peak power in the Boruto narrative, and I understand that because Naruto is this revered shinobi, not only to the shinobi world but to the Naruto fandom in the real world. So I would understand that. Um, do I think that will be the case? If I'm being honest, I don't think that Baron Mo Naruto will be the strongest because we already have individuals like Damon and Shibai and Ida who seem to even surpass. Possibly even Ishiki Otsutsuki at his best. Or at least the Ishiki that we saw fight Naruto in Baron mode. Um, so more than likely, 
eventually, uh, you know, Boruto will surpass his father and his predecessors as well, Kwaki as well. That's what I'm going to predict. You know, it's it's inevitable. The passing of the torch will take place, and unfortunately, the generations of old will, you know, be passed up, just like the generations of even before Naruto were passed up. Yeah. There will probably be a three-way war between Boruto, Kawaki, and Code. Yeah, the way I look at it is Code is going to use his Tentel clone army to possibly invade Konoha. I, I definitely see that. So there is some sort of war coming. It has to be. I mean, Kishimoto's style is sort of building up suspense and then reaching a climax with, with a very like prolific altercation. Right In the Naruto narrative, it was the war arc. Right? That was the climactic event in the narrative. Alright, so I, I do think there's going to be some kind of war for sure. Certainly. I think Baron Naruto should be the ceiling. Yeah, I, I, I think that would pay, res pay respects to Naruto. You know, I wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Even though I think it's unlikely. I wonder how potent a Baron Naruto Russian Shuriken would be. Psh, I mean, Baron Naruto is probably the single greatest amp we've ever seen in the narrative. So, a Russian Shuriken of that caliber... I mean, who knows? Maybe it... Maybe you would blatantly disintegrate even the likes of Fuse Momo, Kaguya. It'd be extremely, extremely potent. He must have said that after I left. I think so, yeah. Me and TG, uh, we, we think a lot alike. We think a lot alike. Which I'm not surprised, yeah. Could Obito hypothetically phase his arm through someone and become tangible to insta-kill them, or would his arm just explode? Uh, yeah, that's a good... Uh, hypothetical to try and deduce right because we never see that um i would deduce that it would not go well because he would have done so in the original narrative um you can counter me and say that's an appeal to ignorance which is fair but if i had to deduce how that would go i think it would depend on the durability of the individual because the closest that we get to observing that is when kakashi and naruto come up with their plan to hit obito once kakashi learns that you know the, the guy in the white mask has the other eye, right? The other Sharingan. And it seemed that he was damaged, right? It, it was not an exact hypothetical match or match to the hypothetical that we're talking about. But I do think it depends on the durability of the individual. Um, if it was like a fodder individual, someone like you know, 1010, I think it would just one shot her. Now, if it's someone like KCM2, Sage Mode Naruto or something like that, that might be detrimental to him. Um, that's all my own subjective lens deciphering to this conclusion but that's what i would say more than likely would be the case so but then again you could even say organs don't have durability you know like kakashi said you can't make your organs tougher so maybe it would one shot everybody it's it's definitely a very interesting hypothetical that was going on zero thanks for coming in how big a role do you think shiba will play in borto so i've uh, conversed about this before but i would say more than likely He's going to play a Hagoromo type role, right? He's going to be the, this conceptual entity that transcends and sets the standard for the narrative, right? Hagoromo represented that for the majority of the narrative, and then he comes to light in the war, right? Even then, he's still a conceptual entity. He doesn't actually engage in battle. He has history of doing so, but in the actual current narrative, during that point in time, he didn't engage in battle himself. I think Shibai will play a similar role, um... Oh, 20 bucks from YCA Project. I appreciate that, brother. Thanks a lot for that. Gonna answer that right away, but I gotta get credit where credit's due. I'm gonna put it on the screen as soon as possible. Put this on the screen real quick, folks, and we shall continue. Um, I'll keep updating. I'll keep uh, updating, updating you guys on Batman to see if he joins us in our discussions. Put this on the screen real quick, folks. Thanks again, YCA Project. Greatly appreciate it, man. But yeah, folks, if you guys haven't read my community post, there is a uh, video coming out. I'm not going to say by with who and and when, but I uh, collabed with a bigger content creator, great content creator himself, and um, he's going to release it on his channel very soon, and it should be great. Very good topic as well. I think it was a very good conversation. That's another reason why I didn't post myself this week because I was doing that. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't miss the opportunity. So, give me a second, folks. But me and this content creator will do content on my channel as well eventually. So, as well, I just gotta come up with a great topic. All right. So based on everything uh, we've seen so far in Boruto, 
How would you end the series? It's a great question, by the way. So, not to try and reiterate and have Borto parallel how Naruto ended, but I want to see an ideological clash, right? Because in the time skip scene, we see Borto and Kawaki having this conversation almost as if their ideologies are clashing as well, right? So, I think that that's a great way to end it, right? Um, now, as far as how it should end, that's it's extremely interesting because you got to ask yourself, do you want the shinobi, the shinobi way of old, right, i.e. Naruto's ninja way, to die with the previous generation? Because that's what Kawaki is trying to eliminate. To him, the old shinobi way no longer suffices in dealing with the threats that exist, right? Because he sees Naruto get dealt with with Jigen and Ishiki sees Sasuke deal with Jigen and fail. You know, uh, he sees these threats becoming more and more apparent and high level. So to him, his ideology is, I have to retain power, right? And I have to protect Naruto, right? That's the only person he seems to care about on, on the face of the earth. And I have to avoid this happening. And because of that, unfortunately, the old Shinobi way no longer works, right? So that's his ideology. His ideology is cheating has to be done. We have cyborgs with, with literally Shinjutsu while Naruto worked 10, 20 years to reach his level of power and still isn't enough. Right, so that's his ideology. Boruto is trying to defend that. Even in the time skip scene, he says, "I'm going to defend the ninja way." He implies that, right? Um, he he he's trying to carry the mantle and defend his father and Sasuke's honor. Um, now, as far as how I want that to conclude, I don't know. I don't know if I want a, a repeat of the Naruto Shippuden conclusion, because I think we need change. Right? I think change is important. Now, I'm not saying I want Kawaki to win and I want Boruto to die and you know Naruto's honor to be put to shame i don't want that either but i do want a different sort of conclusion maybe a consensus and a compromise maybe not borto says you know what you're right the old shinobi way doesn't work but i'm not going to just let it wash away let's come to a conclusion together and let's come to let's create a new ideology All right i think that would be a great conclusion they come to some sort of compromise after a prolonged battle and they say let's do this instead um, that's what I would say a very good ending would be. I wouldn't mind Boruto winning, but to me it would just be a repeat of the past. You know, so That's what I would say. That's a great question, by the way. Very good question. Uh, just saw five uh, Gear 5 in the title and wondered what was going on. So yeah, um, someone asked me a question on Goku versus Gear 5 Luffy. I haven't read One Piece, um, but I have read into Gear 5 a little bit. This is limited knowledge with the, with the conclusion I'm giving, but from my understanding, Luffy has, with the Gear 5 ability, he has tune logic abilities, essentially implying that anything that is within his own imagination and within the parameters of it can come to reality, right? It's kind of like SpongeBob or Popeye or Bugs Bunny, Looney Tunes. It seems that's the case. I might be mistaken. I haven't seen, I haven't seen the animation. Uh, but for, if that's the case, Goku would most likely fail, right? Because Luffy could literally imagine whatever he wants and that happens. There's nothing Goku could do. Unless Goku theoretically blitzes his synapses and G Luffy can't imagine in time. But even then, if, if Luffy imagines that he has infinite speed, it still won't be enough. All right, so Go Goku most likely falls, if that's the case. Again, this is limited knowledge. I haven't seen One Piece. I haven't read One Piece. This is just from what I've read. I could be wrong, so... Uh, how powerful do you uh, think Casey and Minuto is after the Minuto manga? Would she be multi-continental to small planetary and AP? Yes, I do think that Minato, right, because, because this is what we do see in the manga. We see a teen iteration of Minato compete with a partially developed Bijou Bomb from a full Nine-Tails tailed beast. As a teenager, in the Astro Plane, where I have provided evidence that you're actually weaker in, a, in another person's astral plane than not, he was able to at least stalemate a partially developed Bijou Bond from the, from the full Ninetales. That is preposterous for his age and for where he's at in his Shinobi career. So if we imply that he has developed and this KCM amp provides an amplification similar to Naruto's when he got KCM, then yes, I think he would most definitely at least be multi-continental in AP. Um, so while a small planetary, that's quite the jump. But I do see it as a possibility. I, I don't see small planetary. I don't deduce that's a classification for anyone in the universe until we start hitting like Jubidara levels. You know, like Jubidara, possibly Jubito, but Jubidara levels, six past Naruto levels. So 
Small Planetary, I have a harder time um, accepting that he's that level of AP. But at Multicontinental, yes, I do see him at least reaching those thresholds of AP. So, uh, If you don't mind me asking, Jay, what are you in college for? I'm struggling with finding something to go back into school for myself. Um, I'm a computer science major, so I actually just concluded my studies, thankfully. Thank God. It was a very rough time. Uh, but what I would say about school, um, from my experience, is firstly, pick something that you enjoy, but then be realistic with yourself. Ask yourself, am I actually good at these kind of things? Am I good at deducing you know, arithmetic type equations, or am I good at writing? Am I good at speaking? Am I good at whatever the case may be? Find what you like, and if you're lucky enough to be good at it, then it's just tunnel vision. So, you graduate, graduated, Jay. Uh, technically, I'm done. But uh, as far as like the ceremony thing, I don't know when that's going to be for my uh, my educational institution. I don't know when uh, they're going to do that. So, well, technically, I'm done. I submitted my last project. It's a, it was a computer science project in Linux. For you guys that are doing computer science, I'm sure you're aware of that uh, sort of environment. And, yeah. Um. Let's see here. Six, 100%. Hey, no comment. Can't say who it is. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Just know it's a great video and shout out to him, the content creator, for um, letting me come on. So, There's a lot of deeds with the Borto's outfit since Borto has an identity problem. The only way of telling him telling people that he's the real Borto is the stuff on his jacket. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good observation. Um, what we do know, right, looking at the, the picture here, he has Sasuke's coat, he has his sword, and he has his and he has his glove. Now Sasuke doesn't appear to me to, to be the type of individual to just give things away. Um, he doesn't. Now we could be wrong, and you know Sasuke has reformed from the, the Sasuke we once knew in the, in the Shippuden narrative. But I just don't see him giving things away like that, especially things he uses in combat, like his sword. You know, um, it's almost as if he's dead. Right, that's why I, I predict by the end of the narrative, he'll most likely be deceased. Um, because if you have a sword, that's what he uses for combat. You could counter me and say, well, maybe Sasuke decided to go into hiding, or maybe he decided to you know, retire and say, hey, you're the next one up, Borto. I can't compete with these guys. Take my sword. You, you're better off without it. You're, you're better off with it than I am anyway. That's a possibility, but that's not in his character, I'd say. Arshir, congrats. What can I call? Bless up. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, it was a uh, computer science is a rough, it's a rough, uh, you know, field of discipline to sort of delve into. But um, the rewards are good. You know, so when can I call a bless up? Yeah, we're gonna do a call and show maybe next week or the week after. It's been a while, so we want to talk to the people again. Into rubber, I mean. Sorry, autocorrect. What did you say? Let me read up. Uh, let's see here. Luffy, uh, Luffy's Gear 5 form is his awakened form. He can now, after the environment around him, uh, turn anything he touches off, not run uh, uh, into rubber, including living beings. Oh, really? Very interesting. I'm eventually going to read One Piece. I've been reading JJK. I'm about 80%, not 80%, maybe like 70% done with the narrative. Uh, very, very good narrative, by the way. If you have any JJK questions, I could answer much better. I haven't caught up to the Gojo and Sukuna stuff. I'm currently on Chapter 173. Uh, during the cooling games for you guys that have read the manga you guys know what that is um, and yuji is, just finished conversing with uh, one of the top sorcerers in the cooling games i think his name was higaruma higarama um and he gave him 100 points uh, you guys know exactly what i'm talking about if you read it so uh do you think sasuke will also get strong in the time skip i think that inevitably he's gonna have to compete you know i think that um even in the last chapter, he wasn't blatantly inferior to Kawaki. I mean, he did do something against Kawaki. I think he defended an attack from Kawaki. So he's not absolutely inferior to someone of Kawaki's caliber. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's training with Boruto. Um, so yeah, I do think he's going to be somewhat stronger. Maybe not, you know, stronger tens folds over, but I do think he's going to be stronger for sure. When I call, oh, and I cannot bust up. Sorry, I was spitting through these. I got a big donation. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that a lot, brother. My mind is a little fried from that project, so. 
Yeah, I read that wrong, my bad. Appreciate that, man. It's a big accomplishment. Yeah, man, it's... Uh, college, I would say... Well, depending on the major, the difficulty will vary greatly, but... College is just a lot of work, man, mostly. You know, um, be really be realistic with yourself, you know, that's why I tell people if if you're objectively speaking an individual with a very high IQ, then you can do basically any major you want, right? Including the top difficulty majors such as computer science, physics, etc. Um, so I would I would be realistic with yourself when uh, trying to pick a field of discipline to adult, to, you know, to delve into, as I would say. Appreciate that though, brother. I uh, love Luffy Gear 5 and Kaido caps at moon level though. Really? Yeah, I've heard that several times. So I, I definitely need to check it out. Yeah, I know. I'm still going through it. Yeah, man. I, uh, I've had many, many long nights. I'll say that. It's worth it at the end though. So I'll tell you that. It's been said that Gear 5 is only limited by his imagination. Yeah, exactly. That's what I read. And turned his imagination to reality. I mean, it can mean something about his power in the future, but for now, he's multicontinental. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah, that imagination thing, that's literally toon logic, man. So guys like Spongebob do things like that or have that type of capability. Individuals like Big Bugs Bunny, individuals like Popeye. But like you said, uh, you know, Luffy doesn't have those feats yet to show for it. It's just been stated. So, yeah, I'm very, very uh, curious to see what he does accomplish now with this with this form. So, But, yeah, folks, great questions. Any questions at all, feel free to ask. So Luffy has omnipotence. Yeah, definitely a derivative of it at best. Uh, at least a derivative of omnipotence, man. I mean, if he's able to make imagination reality, he has a derivative of omnipotence at the very least. He's a reality manipulator. At, that's bare minimum, you know, apparently from the statements that I have uh, observed and heard from others. But yeah, for, uh, feel free to keep asking questions, folks. Let me check Batman real quick. If he said anything. Hopefully you can join us and join the conversation. Uh, I think he's still busy, uh, but we shall continue on. Show shall continue on. Um, let's see. So the next question uh, was, this is a just a, a fun question, but what which which reanimation had the best drip, Minato or Itachi? Great question. Both guys have extreme drip. Speaking of drip, right, with Borto having immense amounts of it now with this design. It's a W. I think Minato had more drip as an Edo. I think the KCM cloak aided his aesthetic very well. His aesthetic is made for it. Like this, the hair, he already has like the, the hair kind of going up. He has the fire cloak, literally and figuratively, the, the Hokage cloak. So he was just set up with the right aesthetic for it. So I think Minato had more drip as an Edo than Itachi. Itachi has drip for sure, but Minato has a lot of it, arguably the most. Uh, but yeah, folks, any questions at all? Uh, combat sports, anime, college, IRL, politics, the elections, whatever. I'll try to stay versatile here, folks. Uh, but as you guys do that, I'm going to move on. Uh, Bleach-related question. By the way, I'm caught up with the anime as well. Very good so far. Most underrated character in Bleach. So this is a very good question. To me, the most underrated character in Bleach is possibly Uarhara. While he doesn't have the, the blatant raw power of someone like Yamamoto or you know Ichigo, he does do some of the most beneficial things for the protagonist side of the narrative. Right? He's he is pivotal in the defeat of Aizen in the Aranka arc with his intellect. Even Aizen, uh, you know, he acknowledges the intellect of Urahara and he even resents him for not using his potential to do greater and bigger things. Right? Aizen was this visionary that wanted all the power in the world, very similar to like Orochimaru in that sense, or Madara. He wanted all the power for himself. He wanted to hog it all away. And when he would look at Urahara, he would see a guy that was wasting his potential from his perspective, right? He would say, what the hell? You're this genius, and you never try to reach higher levels of power. You don't have the hunger that I do, right? So Urahara is, to me, one of the most underrated. On top of that, with the current anime, spoiler alert, he was pivotal in turning the tides of the war with the Quincy's with his deduction that hollows are poisonous to Quincy's hence that is the key to get the captains of the Soul Society's Bankai's back which is a very good deduction which is, speaks testaments to Urahara's intelligence um, he's very underrated very underrated uh, let's see here Casey Tuminito with his red Edo Tensei eyes looks badass and intimidating facts it was fire 
Yeah, I know my biggest talent is writing by hesitate because I know it takes a while to mix a cinema and come off of it. That's something I'm urgently needed. Yeah, so um, that's a, that, that's actually a good point because that's another factor to consider, right? Um, like, for example, you're a philosophy prodigy, right? Let's like say, for example, you're a philosophy prodigy. In the corporate world, right, there really is no fields of profession that will generate significant income unless you're a prof you're an actual professor you know uh, but besides that there's nothing for it you can go into the entertainment business become someone like i don't know maybe ben shapiro or jordan peterson um but that's a hard route that's business that's like you starting from scratch you're not getting set up and propped up by a corporate entity unless again you're a professor and you go to an educational institution so that's another factor to take into consideration is how's the income for these fields of discipline right computer science it's everywhere because the hardest majors have the most demand for talent because most people don't want to delve into those very high IQ, high tedious levels of effort type work, right? So you got to take that into consideration as well. Uh, man, I feel like the fights on Bleach lame. The Quincy's get killed way too easily. Really? I actually think the Quincy's are quite dominant, but uh, you know, I haven't read the whole narrative though, so we'll see. I've I watched the anime, but I haven't seen the whole anime. Gear 5 is also grants far greater strength, speed, durability, and faster recovery rate, even while unconscious in a stronger rubber body. Kind of like Plastic Man, huh? Yeah. I saw the clip where this guy, Bradley Martin, oh, Bradley Martin, shout out to him, said he'd beat Nate Diaz's thoughts. So, <laughs> Bradley Martin is definitely trolling to some arbitrary extent. Um, as far as Nate Diaz in a street fight, Nate Diaz would maul, would, uh, maul him and get him in some sort of choke derivative very quickly, guillotine. Uh, rear naked choke, you give him an omniplata, he, he'd get him in some sort of submission. Bradley Martin isn't conditioned to deal with individuals that know how to contort your body and manipulate it to their will to harm you. He's never been in that field of discipline before. He's strong, he's a big, strong dude, right, obviously. But against someone like Nate Diaz, he's going to get mauled. Um, obviously, if he gets... Nate Diaz and slams his shit on the concrete or something. He's going to hurt him. Obviously, he's much bigger and stronger. But on the bounce of probabilities, in most altercations, Nate Diaz will beat his ass. Um, speaking of Riley Martin, I've, I've, to, I've actually kept up with that. He's supposed to roll with Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson, who to me is one of the greatest uh, mixed martial arts talents of all time. I think Demetrius Johnson is going to fold him like a pretzel. He is over 100 pounds lighter than the guy, but he is a master at contorting your body via wrestling and jiu-jitsu he's a master so he's probably going to choke out bradley maybe armbar him omni plata him guillotine him jars choke him there's so many things he could do you know so obviously in a street fight if he picks up fucking demetrius he'll throw him like a fucking football obviously he's way smaller than him but yeah uh yeah the best Okage drip definitely goes to me to Tober i agree i agree completely i think Toberama has a lot of drip he has a fur coat no fur coat he has the the hair he has the the face the aesthetic and minato as well so i agree uh since shibai has omnipotence how big of a threat could shibai be if he ever shows up in the time skip oh man if he's an actual combatant if kawaki and boruto are not significantly superior to the current to their current iterations they would get folded um they would get absolutely obliterated it would be a massacre which would probably even dwarf the massacre that Ishiki caused. I mean, this guy is the creator of Shinjutsu. Even with the small explanation we get from, Fuse Mom from Momoshiki, uh, you know, inside Boruto's subconscious, he's talking about like these weather, these weather changing sort of environment shifting abilities that this guy can do. I mean, this guy is a monster with omnipotence and Shinjutsu being the creator of it. So he would be an absolute monster. And Boruto and Kawaki better have progressed significantly to even stand a chance. So they can't even compare to Damon or Ida right now, let alone Shibai. So, um, let's see here. Literally every episode of the Quincy's Darn Off one by one will happen to fights lasting multiple episodes. Yeah, it seems like they are increasing the pace. I don't, I personally don't mind the pace change. Certainly, they've certainly increased the, the, the speed of the pacing for sure. Um, but to me, the Quincy, especially part one of Thousand Year Blood War in the anime, at least, they dominated. I like the back and forth. I like real suspense and sort of stakes in this equation. I like that there's a lot on the line. You know, I don't like that all fucking 
the, the Soul Society's clapping to Quincy and they win the day. I want to see real stakes involved. So I, I don't mind it, but I see what you're saying. The most ridiculous power in the world. The, the more lo Luffy laughs and Gear Father. Oh, really? Stronger he gets. Kind of like Hulk with his anger. Very interesting. Or in the future, Boruto will actually see characters blowing up planets and galaxies like Kid Buu did. Yeah, man, it's um, it's a possibility. Who knows? Maybe uh, Kishimoto will say, "Hey, it's time to really up the scaling," you know. And Shibai is confirmed 4D, so I mean, it's plausible. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. It's hard to tell right now, but yeah. Like one of my biggest dreams was always to make my own series similar to Naruto. I've always written and drawn. Yeah. Uh, I would say the number one thing to work on any craft, regardless of the discipline, is just persistence um, and evolution. Not only persistence, because a lot of guys get stuck in the same sort of routine, but evolution on the very routine that you persist in, right? So let's say you start off six months with, let's say, writing, and you gotten better and better, but you hit this plateau. Then you got to evolve your routine to further increase your development, right? So... Persistence and evolution are the biggest factors, for sure. Um, gear 4, Snake Man Luffy is the best design gear, in my opinion. Can't wait till you see that version of Luffy. Yeah, man, I definitely got to check that out. I think after I conclude JJK, I only have about 60 chapters left. I think there's 230 chapters. I'm going to start maybe reading One Piece. That's going to be a long, long uh, process because I know how many chapters it is. So. Bradley is big, don't get me wrong, but people think that size matters. Need a reality check. Technique beats strength, in my opinion. Absolutely. Plus, Bradley seems like he has a glass jaw. Yeah, uh, size matters, right? But when you're so, so much more skilled and there's a large discrepancy in skill, it starts to be less of a factor in how the fight will most likely conclude. Like, for example, if you're 250 pounds, right, and you go to a bar and you're messing with this 130 pound guy who's a golden glove boxing champion you're gonna get your ass whooped more than like he might be smaller than you but he's going to box your face off you know so yeah you're right it, it, technique certainly matters you know in fact i have a story where because i used to box for a long time and i had this friend that was a golden glove champion and that happened you know we were at a we were at a location and this bigger guy kept messing with him and he beat the shit out of the guy and the guy bought him a beer after. He said, hey, man, uh, I get respect. And, you know, the guy was like 100 pounds heavier than him. So that just shows technique greatly matters. So if you're used to getting hit, all it takes is one or two good shots or you're going down. Exactly. Here's the thing about striking. No matter how big you are, your temple and your chin are susceptible to putting you to sleep. No matter how big you are. So if fucking Nate Diaz or Devin Haney or Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson catch bradley coming in due to his subpar striking he's getting knocked the fuck out you know you're gonna get knocked the fuck out your temple is not dependent upon your you know your muscle density or your or your weight or your strength that that is susceptible and vulnerable so you're absolutely right about that um let's see hot take akashi failed sasuke telling sasuke to get over it and team seven could fill the void of his entire clan did he fail um I think Sasuke's personality requires harsh reality. Um, he's not someone you could coddle and, and hope to get through. Um, so I think Kakashi did the best he could. He's very similar to, Sa to Kakashi, actually. Kakashi was aware of that. Um, I think his speech right before he got t took, uh, you know, kidnapped by the Sound Four was a good speech. It was, it was harsh for sure. I mean, Kakashi's harsh in his technique and his lectures and his lessons. But um, is there some fault on Kakashi? Sure, there's some arbitrary extent. He is the like, he is his teacher after all. Um, he certainly could have been more persistent on his, you know, trying to change Sasuke's ideology. So to some extent, he failed. To some extent, if Boruto and Kwaki end up having to fight Shibai and they and then and they win, then that would mean Boruto and Kwaki would basically be DBZ level. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the guy's 4D. Yeah. I don't think they're going to leave Naruto behind like that. Yeah, man. Naruto's sealed right now in this this dimension that literally freezes time. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm curious to see what they do with him. I know someone who wants to debate you, Jay. Oh, really? Yeah, there's several guys that want that these days. Speaking of debating, um, if you guys aren't aware, for anyone that's uh, you know not on my Discord, 
there's going to be a debate, not with me. Um, it's going to be Shinobi debating uh, Ken, for you guys are aware of him. They're going to be debating Itachi versus Minato on my server. Me and Batman will be judges. It's going, coming this Thursday. So if you guys want to see it live, feel free to um, join my Discord and be ready for that. Uh, Shinobi's going to post the recording, I think, regardless. So if you miss it, he'll post it on his channel. Make sure to subscribe to him and Batman. It's in the description. But yeah. Uh, I'll never forget getting punched in the solar plexus. Thought I was going to die. Oh, dude. Specifically the liver. Um, I'd argue that it might even be worse than getting fucking slept. Because you get hit in the liver, you feel it. At least when you get slapped, it's, you know, you lose consciousness. And that's the end, you know. So, getting hit in the liver, it's like this forced shutdown of your body temporarily. Right? And you have to endure that shutdown. The pain that comes with the shutdown of your body. You wince in pain and you just suffer the, the very pain that that shock caused. Right? At least when you get knocked out, you're, you're slept. It's over. Um, so yeah, getting hit in the body sucks, man. Really bad. So. Realize that's a perfect place to hit someone. Oh yeah, man. The liver, the temple, the chin, behind the ear where the equilibrium sort of functions are. Um, solar plexus. Yeah. This guy is too toxic for me, but I'll join yours, Jay. I know it ain't bad. Yeah, I, uh, I ban a lot. Of, not ban a lot of people, but if someone's just playing games, I just I just kick it, bro. I don't really give a shit, to be honest. To me, it's just to chill out, debate for fun, you know. Do you think Walker will be doing messed up stuff behind the scenes, like killing villagers with questions, his hacks? Um, so, the way I look at him, he's a morally gray character, right? Because he is willing to go quite far to get what he wants. Um, but he isn't willing to exactly be a morally unrighteous, irredeemable person, though, right? He, what he did to Borto is fucked up. Don't get me wrong. He literally told Ida, hey, brainwash everyone into thinking he's a fucking terrorist. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, that's definitely fucked up. But he did it out of love for Naruto and the desire to eliminate the Osuski clan. Right, and the reason he did this is because Boruto has Itsuski DNA in him. At this point, I believe he's 100% Itsuski. So, he did that because of that reason. Um, I think he's more than gray. Similar to Modern, possibly. Um, so, I don't think he's going to do that. Um, now, I will say this. If a villager becomes suspicious of the omnipotence Jutsu Ida did, and maybe he's beginning undone or something, or Asarada convinces a bunch of them, maybe then he'll be willing to kill. At the very least, incarcerate. So, uh, what do you debate? Is it a sort of competition for you? Yeah. So, this is the way I look at debating. I enjoy sort of like the verbal altercation. Um, I'm, I've always been inherently competitive, um, and I've always enjoyed sort of attacking other people's arguments for the sake of sport. Now, do I ever have? Do I ever go to a point where it's personal? No, I don't. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a sport to me. It's sort of a sport. I enjoy the competition. Um, it, re it refines my own ability to articulate myself and to work my ability to orate, right? to become a better orator. Um, there's certain benef There's several benefits that comes with that. Not only do you become better at argumentation and persuasion, but you also become better in articulating your point, even in just regular discussion. I think it's a very important skill to have regardless of the field of discipline. Um, it makes you more marketable as a man, regardless of the field of discipline that you endeavor in, to be able to market yourself, right? For example, if you're a physicist and you get an interview and you're able to articulate these theories and these theorems very, very precisely in a refined way, you have a better shot at getting a job in comparison to maybe someone that's smarter than you intellectually but doesn't have the, abil the ability to iterate themselves and articulate themselves in the way that you can, because you can paint the canvas better than they can verbally. All right. So I think articulation is extremely, uh, extremely important. Debate him. Hit me up on discord. Is he like a, a name? Been a while since I've seen you debate, man. I can let your edge go dull if you want to. Yeah. Me and Batman are supposed to debate possibly at the end of, uh, of this month or September. We're certainly going to debate soon. Um, yeah. And 
I made a deal with Ken. So if he beats Shinobi, because on a, on a call show he said he was better than Shinobi, I said, I'll consider debating you. If you could beat him, I'll consider debating you. So we're going to find out. I'm going to be impartial, regardless. Um, the winner's the winner. If Ken wins, he wins. If Shinobi wins, he wins. But it was kind of like the the deal. It's very possible that I debate Ken if he beats Shinobi. Shinobi is a good debater. Very good debater. Uh, since Kawaki wants to kill all of the Gotsuski, that probably means we're going to see a lot of them trying to attack Kawaki and Boruto. Yeah. Um, Momo certainly has resentment towards Kawaki currently. Right, because we all see what happened. He literally used Ida because she's infatuated by him, which is a ridiculous plot point. I think it's fucking absurd, but it happened to brainwash the entire globe. Now, Momo due to this event, has gone so far to even aid Boruto in this problematic situation that he's in because his life is on the line as well, right? Because he is embedded in Boruto. So if he dies, Momo probably dies. So he has to help Boruto. You know? Jay said, if you can beat my level 50 commander, you can beat the level one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shinobi, uh, when we debated, it was a good debate, man. He's a good debater. I just had more points, you know, I, I refined my points, and yeah, it was a good debate, though, regardless, so. Batman as well, he's a good debater as well. Uh, let's see. But yeah, folks, any questions you may have at all, feel free to ask, any at all. IRL, college, philosophy, debate stuff. Um, speaking of debate, another thing that comes to mind is I recently... I haven't been, I've been debating like text wise on social media because I just like trolling sometimes. But another thing I've been doing is I've been watch, I've been watching a lot of debates, not just anime debates, but you know, in you know, real life aspects, topic debates as well. Um, trying to sort of catch on to the articulation and the rhetoric of some of these guys to try and sharpen my own sword, right? Trying to learn more philosophical razors or possibly uh, other terms to better paint the canvas of the art the argument you're trying to create or construct i right, trying to essentially bring more tools into the shed not to sharpen my own um so i've been watching a lot of debates i, I was watching this course um it's just i think you can find them on youtube it's a free video um this one guy he's a two-time world champion harvard debate coach literally he's the coach of the harvard debate team arguably the greatest debate team on the face of the planet and he was giving tips as well i was listening to what he was saying um on the art of argumentation and how to improve you know so uh does it doesn't it dull the point of debating to some extent doesn't it make it harder to actually put your heart into it so what do you mean as far as what Jay, are you still interested in debating that old man? Forgot his name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ken has been uh, asking me about that. Yeah, so a few guys are willing to donate, you know, a donation for that to happen. Ken's one of them. So, yeah. But I'm going to give you guys your money's worth. And I'm going, I am going to take time to prepare because this old man has more experience than I have life. He's literally been debating longer than I've been alive. So I would have to thoroughly prepare. Because I'm not worried about the logic. I've heard him debate. His logic is extremely flawed and full of fallacious premises that are just spewed constantly. What I'm worried about is the rhetorical devices embedded in his mind, even if they're sophists in nature. Because he's been debating for so long that these fallacious and sophist tactics that he utilizes are embedded in his mind so deeply, it's like riding a bike. It's second nature to him. And I've seen how he iterates his premise. It's second nature. It's like he's just flexing the muscle that's already been flexed. So I'm going to have to prepare thoroughly if I decide to debate him um, when I when I debate him. So I'm going to give you guys your money's worth. Because if I go in blindly, I'm, I'm mad enough to admit he will have many more rhetorical devices than myself. Despite being sophist in nature, I don't think he's a better debater than me. But the tools in his arsenal are vast. More vast than myself because... I haven't even been as I haven't even been as live alive as long as he's been debating. Let's put that into perspective. 
The guy's like 70 years old. So. Uh, Momoshiki is probably the biggest fucking insecure I've ever seen. Bro likes to run up fights and talk shit. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's had some doughty moments like when Boro was fucking smashing Boro to the bits and, you know, he came out and fucking folded him. That was a W moment, but yeah, you're right. He's definitely an instigator. You have seen countless people, uh, countless examples of people being right but not able to articulate themselves as well as the other person or lacking the proper resources to prove their points so they still lose. Yeah, exactly. It's the philosophical razors you possess, the, the rhetoric you possess, the knowledge you possess. It all also aids you in your argumentation because I know guys that are very knowledgeable. In certain fields of discussion, they just can't articulate themselves good enough. All right, their articulation lacks. It, it lacks in the ability to efficiently paint the canvas, right, or create their argu the argument. So, it's very, very important uh, how you articulate yourself for sure. Yeah, I'll definitely help Ken and uh, and pay. When are you thinking of doing that? Um, probably September. Oh, the payment. When do you want the payment? Um. Yeah, I'll let you guys know. Probably next month sometime. Um, I'm, I'm currently in a transition of you know college to the workforce, also juggling YouTube as well. Um, so I want to I want you guys to have me at my best for sure. I'm not gonna you know fuck you guys over and give you a subpar performance. You know, so <clears throat> the rub pill might be the worst form of relationship advice in human history. It depends on the exact aspect that you're inferring of the red pill. I think a lot of the red pill is helpful. It's harsh in nature, but I think a lot of men need harsh reality checks. Um, yeah. There's certainly a, a dark side of the red pill, for sure. Uh, I will agree with that. Debating is the art of convincing someone why your point is correct. If you're debating without necessarily believing in what you say, then the diminish, diminish the point of it to some extent. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, if you're not debating what you believe in, then it's certainly arguably in bad faith or for monetary gain or for entertainment. I don't see a problem with that. Um, if I'm going to be honest, the old man that we're talking about, I don't really respect him. Um, he has a criminal history. Um, and I do want to entertain. And I do want to assert my ability to rhetorically dominate him. Because I don't, I don't see any virtue in him as an individual. So I don't mind arguing in bad faith against him, truly. Uh, but I see your point. You're right. I think there is something that is diminished when you're arguing in bad faith. But I'm willing to do that to beat him. So. But yeah, folks, any questions you may have, any at all, donations take priority. Uh, if you're a member, it takes priority. Feel free to ask. I'll keep asking. Uh, I'll keep answering these questions while that continues to go on. Um, another bleach question: Should Shinji be inherently immune to Bankai stealing, being a visor? Visor, excuse me. And Shinji versus Toshiro, how would that go? So that's actually a good question. So to me, from my current knowledge of Bleach, uh, yes, he he should most likely, due to the negative poison of effects Hollows have on Quincy's, be be sort of a kryptonite towards the Quincy's, right? Because the Quincy's, for those that don't know, eliminate hollows because of that very fact. The hollows threaten their existence because they're poisonous entities to their very life, right? To their very livelihood. So they have to eliminate these Quincy's, for, excuse me, these hollows for survival. It's the converse of the Soul Society Shinigamis. They want to purify hollows and guys like Aizen want to use them to even aid their own power. Right, so Quincy's and the Soul Society and the Shinigamis have antithetical purposes with the Hollows. It's actually very interesting, and it really explains why they have this eternal rivalry, if you will. Um, so Sh Shinji should be some sort of kryptonite to them, and that was displayed in the anime uh, that I recently watched. Um, as far as Shinji versus Toshiro, I'm not aware of current Toshiro. Um, I know he gets more powerful. I would say this, bare minimum. Full potential Toshiro is more than likely superior to Shinji. Shinshui in the Aranka arc iterates that Toshiro will surpass even him in about a hundred years, right? And Shinshui currently in the anime is the he's the commanding captain with with Yamamoto passing of the cap of the Soul Society. Right, so if he's implying that Toshiro could even surpass his caliber, 
then I would safely deduce that he's above Sinji at his full potential. Current Toshiro, it's hard to gauge where he's at. Both him and Sinji were bested by Quincy's, so it's hard to tell. Uh, Toshiro seemed to have the better performance against the Quincy's. I'd have to like exactly um, analyze which Quincy's each faced respectfully, because there is like a seeding hierarchical structure to the Quincy's, similar to the, you know the the Iran cars and Soul Society. So I'd have to look at that. Um, is this Ken you're talking about, or whom you're, you're talking about? Yeah, uh, Ken wants me to debate the old man. Uh, did Aeroflim actually believe here's in beat Itachi, or was he just debating for fun? I think he was debating for fun. I highly doubt someone of Aeroflim's intellect would think that. I think he was just trying to beat Six. Um, I thought Six won the debate, by the way. But yeah, it was a good debate. Have you ever lost a friendship over some soup stupid? Oh yeah, man. I certainly have. Um, if... For the guys that have been on my, you know, around my channel for quite some time, you saw what happened with a certain someone. Um, I debated the guy, on Batman versus Iron Man, um, and I do not regret whipping his ass on several occasions, including physically as well, um, because of what he did with a certain female. Um, so yeah, that friendship dissolved. It fractured after what took place. Um, I even offered him to box on video. He's a YouTuber as well. Um, and I said, we could post it, and whoever comes out on top comes out on top, but he's a pussy, and he's not going to be willing to do that. He hasn't been willing, and he probably never will be. Um, I wouldn't say it was stupid, actually. I think it was a legitimate reason why I broke ties with him. As far as over a stupid reason, like some dumb, I've had temporary friendship breakups because of stupid shit, for sure. Um, but they were all mended. Like some stupid, like, oh, you're talking shit about me or something like that when I was a kid. Not as an adult, but like as a kid. Definitely happened. I'm still friends with those guys to this day. Um, yeah. I said physically as well. Yeah, uh, we sparred a few times. I whipped his ass. That was me showing mercy. Uh, I was being nice. That's when we were still friends. Now I, would, I wouldn't show mercy this time. I'd probably hurt him for real. So that's he probably is smart and not coming down here anymore. So. Uh, let me know if I'm missing something, but why didn't Minato just put a seal on Reen to eliminate the three tails threat? That's interesting. It's an interesting observation and question. Um, now, Minato, from my understanding, I'm trying to remember the history here. He wasn't present during the Reen kidnapping. Um, I'm sure if he was aware of Reen becoming a Jin Cherokee, he would have done what he, what had to be done if he was present. Um, I think the way it's implied in the narrative is that that's one of his greatest failures, which, you know, as a result and a byproduct led to Obi's, Obito's fall and turn to the dark side in this very Anakin Skywalker way. Um, so I think if he was aware and present, he would have certainly put a seal. Certainly. Um, but yeah, it's I'd have to look at the history exactly and where Minato was exactly at that point in time. Yeah, bro, you already beat his ass, so he knows. Yeah, he should. He knows. Um, but yeah, that's probably the only guy I have, like, actual uh, altercations with currently. As far as Discord, I don't give a damn. Like, I'm, I just entertain you guys, put on great debates for you guys, try to evolve as an orator myself. Um, I don't really care about beef here means nothing to me no sweat off my back but yeah he we have real life uh issues so do you know who charleston white is i think i saw aiden ross have him on he was this is really weird a really weird dude i think he said like fuck brawny even though he had cardiac arrest that's fucked up man that's not even funny uh but yeah he's a weird dude the weirdo yeah i don't think minato was ever aware of that yeah exactly so he couldn't have aided reen you know if minato was there man Let's say he was there when Reen and Kakashi and all that shit happened. He would have soloed that fucking platoon of fucking Jonin. Obito could have just sat back and watched. He would have been bloodlusted himself. Guaranteed it. Guaranteed it. Got a Valley franchise. My mother used to always say, you don't need a lot of fake friends. Just a few loyal ones. Exactly, man. That's usually the case, man. Um, if you have a lot of friends, I would say more than likely you're not very good at picking friends. Truthfully. Most of the time. This is truth. Um, it's hard to trust these days. You know? Whether it's virtual, online friendships, or real-world friendships, it's certainly um, something that you got to 
deal with, you know. But yeah, folks, any questions you may have, this next question, I was actually looking forward to answering. This has to do with JJK, and uh, JJK has been going great for me. Uh, reading it has been pretty great, I'm not going to lie. So, someone asked me, dissect Gojo's strengths and weaknesses. So, firstly, Gojo is most definitely one of the most intriguing arsenals I have ever, he has one of the most intriguing arsenals, excuse me, that I have ever seen. Gojo is so dominant because not only does he have immense amounts of curse energy, but his, do his, his dominant limitless defense technique is one that only utilizes minimal resources, allowing him to be untouchable most of the time. Most of the time, he's not touchable. Right? It's almost subconscious. Right? The, the, the ability to, of the limitless technique is almost subconscious due to the minimal resources it takes. He really doesn't have to be mindful of it. There only has to be a slight sort of intentional indication of it being on it's almost subconscious it's implied in the narrative as well so he says it himself um now this along with his higher ap arsenal is the reason why he is consistently stated literally as the strongest sorcerer in the world uh you know jogo said it right uh gato said it uh, several individuals ug said it. it it's it's reiterated throughout the verse right by some of the most powerful individuals in the verse they Harold Gojo as this like godlike entity because of the six eyes, because of the limitless technique, because of red, purple, blue, all the, all the ridiculous abilities that he possesses. Um, he's truly one of the most. He's the most powerful. Arguably, I haven't seen the again. I haven't seen the Sakuna fight. He's arguably the most powerful in the verse. So, as far as his weaknesses, there aren't, there aren't very many, obviously, but one of his most blatant weaknesses. Is his high his high AP arsenal due to the high levels of destruction they can create? Uh, this is actually exploited. Spoiler alert! In the Shibuya arc, when Gato and company, well, the person in hate and inhabiting Gato's body and company fought him with this in mind, as as he has some honor code where he tries to avoid killing people. So essentially, what they did is they exploited the fact that there there was going to be inevitable collateral damage due to Gojo's ab uh, abilities. So they use that to their advantage. To gain the advantage on him and seal him, as we all know, or the people that read JJK know, they use that as a weakness for Gojo, right? And it worked to some extent. Eventually, Gojo said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna have to kill some people to beat these guys." So he was willing to take lives, um, and I believe he had some sort of strategy to mitigate that as well. I forgot what it was. It's been a while since I read that chapter, but um, another weakness. Uh, that he has, which is more slight, just like everybody else, is that his limit his limitless technique does not work in another's domain expansion. Right, so his limitless technique doesn't work as domain expansions guarantee attacks or strikes or whatever methods to be enacted upon you. It's like a guaranteed hit. Right, so essentially those are basically his weaknesses that I'm aware of currently. So Gojo's a fucking monster in the verse. That's all I gotta say. Itachi versus Harrison isn't something you have to try on. I don't debate seriously at all. I'm confident I thrash anybody regardless of debating skills just because of how common sense it is. Yeah, Arrow did a good job. But yeah, Six mitigated the refutations that Arrow had very well and won the debate. It's it's not a contentious debate. Now, the Harrison argument is a creatable premise, but it is not a very strong premise to sort of defend. It's an easier premise to refute and a harder premise to to defend basically what it is fugaku versus a legendary sawning so so similar to sakuma and hanzo and guys like that the empirical evidence on fugaku is certainly limited uh, if i'm not mistaken he was a candidate to the fourth hokage position if i'm not mistaken um itachi considered him a threat when he was uh, massacring the uchiha clan that puts him in some sort of caliber higher caliber right if itachi sees him as a threat um but at that point in time it's hard to gauge whether or not he was signing level um, because you got to ask yourself is Fugaku superior to Itachi because Itachi not too long after that sold Orochimaru and folded him really really badly right at 14 that was not too long after the, the Uchiha massacre you could argue Itachi got stronger to some arbitrary extent which is fair um, I would say more than likely Fugaku doesn't beat the signing it's a hard premise to create if I had to create the premise for that, I would say Itachi saw Fugaku as a superior, and that's why he said he'd be a tough battle. That's pure speculation. 
it all depends on your interpretation of his statement and narrative. All right, what what semantical representation does that statement hold to you? If it's that they're relative, Fugaku might have a chance. If it's that he's a threat but still inferior, Fugaku would probably lose to the signing. If it's that Fugaku is superior, then there's a good chance that Fugaku would be the signing, at least one on one. So, Pokemon versus Yu-Gi-Oh, which one is better? Uh, I've I've always leaned towards Yu-Gi-Oh. I like the premise of the narrative more. It's a little more, a little bit more versatile in the way that combat takes place. This is my opinion. I like Pokemon a lot too, though. Um, I think I actually watched more po Pokemon growing up. So, as much as I like Kawaki, he's kind of a bitch. There's no way to get you get accepted into a household and get a whole family, and the way you pay them back is ruining their son's life. Yeah, man. Um, Kawaki's a troubled child. That's not an excuse. He's a fucking almost grown man now. But he was a troubled child, traumatic experiences. He's essentially what Naruto would have became if Naruto didn't have Iruka, didn't have Kakashi, etc. So essentially, that's what that's what Kawaki kind of is, right? Because he's ostracized, he's like this fucking monster, and and he has to deal with Jigen fucking torturing him and using him for experiments and. He's essentially what Naruto could have became. Um, I do think his resolve is high uh, to some extent. But I do think it's not as high as Naruto's. I think Naruto didn't fold as easily as Kawaki. Because Kawaki was starting to become uh, accepting of Naruto's way. right Before Jigen and Ishiki and all that. He was training. He was becoming a shinobi. He was trying to learn the right way. But then he saw Naruto get his ass beat and Sasuke get his ass whooped and shit. And then he said, fuck it. I'm going back to my old ways. All right? So I do think Kawaki lacks the resolve that Naruto did um, in that manner. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fugaku has great, great lore. How far do you think Gojo gets in Naruto verse? So there are a couple of factors that will play a pivotal role in answering that question. One. How does cursed energy react and sort of mix with chakra? First of all, that has to be answered, right? If chakra and cursed energy have no effect on each other, then Gojo would simply be a supersonic speed individual that gets fucking one-shotted by a guy that maybe like the Rei Kage, right? Uh, if cursed energy has an advantage over chakra, Gojo would have the advantage. If chakra has the advantage, like I said, Talk, uh, Gojo would just get slammed. More than likely, let's presuppose that Curse Energy attacks affect Shinobi and Chakra attacks affect Sorcerers in JJK. Gojo lacks the speed of the higher caliber individuals. Um, light speed seems like a very far fetched classification uh, for the current JJK that I'm reading. It seems like even supersonic speed and things like that are impressive to these people. Right to like the sorcerers and the cursed energy spirits and things like that. At least from my knowledge, so he would lack speed there. If he doesn't have his limitless technique on and he faces someone like the Red Kage, he's gonna get fucking blitzed and one shotted very quickly. Um, now, if he has the limitless technique on, now it gets interesting because no one's gonna be able to hit him, right? Because the way the limitless technique works, for those that don't know, is <clears throat> if you try to hit him, you inevitably converge towards infinity meaning you never truly reach the target. The target is infinite in distance away from from you and your attack, right? So it seems that if even a shinobi like the Rei Kage tried to hit him, they would just be converging forever towards infinity. Um, now, would Gojo's af attacks affect shinobi? Well, some of them are quite unique, like purple, for example. Purple creates imaginary m mass that erases you from reality. That's what I've read about purple. So this sort of unique property that Gojo creates by manipulating matter could possibly hurt Shinobi. I mean, I don't know how Shinobi would react to imaginary mass hitting them. That's not something we ever see in Naruto. It's extremely, extremely nuanced and ambiguous as far as how that interaction would take place. What sort of physical and chemical reaction would take place? Um, honestly, from my objective lens, I think it would hurt them. But again, Gojo's slow. 
much slower than someone of the Rikaga's caliber and beyond. Um, like Hitachi's caliber, you know, even Sage Mode, Naruto, guys like that would be substantially faster than him. Um, so more than likely, in a battle of attrition, Gojo might last a long time, but eventually his cursed energy will run thin and he'll die. I think eventually they'll get him um, and he'll probably fall. As far as how far he gets, he beats part one pretty conventionally, except guys like Itachi. He'd beat like part one Naruto and guys like that. Maybe even part one Kakashi. Um, but guys like Hiruzen and Orochimaru and guys like that, I, I highly doubt he beats. So he'd, get, he'd do all right part one, but then, you know, he'd, he'd fall to the, to the higher caliber individuals. So more than likely, this is all speculation. This is all my own presuppositions of how certain interactions go physically, chemically, etc. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would deduce. <clears throat> With that being said, I recommend anybody taking the position of Hiruzen because you have to have crazy debating skills to have a chance. Yeah, Nero did. He did very well. When Obito died, Minato met up with Rin and Kakashi afterwards and did nothing about the Three Tails. So, is that Minato not caring? Am I getting the timeline wrong? I have to reread the history, to be honest. I'm not sure. Right now, like off the top of my head, I mean. Did you see New Horizons tier list for Naruto? No, I saw it on the suggestions page, but I haven't seen it yet. I need to check it out. Shout out to Horizons, by the way. Naruto and Sasuke versus Goku and Vegeta equals stats, just hand to hand. Hand to hand? Ooh, that's an interesting discussion. Um, Naruto's Taijutsu is very good. Uh, so is Vegeta, so is Sasuke's. Now, the way com hand to hand combat is implied in Dragon Ball. It's like this very sacred thing that's passed on from generations to generations. And a, a very unique ability Goku has is Ultra Instinct. Right? So essentially, what would take place is if Goku gets Ultra Instinct, he seamlessly defends and attacks. Right? Specifically, Master Ultra Instinct or True Ultra Instinct, like the current uh, narrative in Dragon Ball Super. Um, I don't know how Naruto and Sasuke would deal with that. Maybe Naruto has Sage Mode. But then you have to start considering... The comparisons between ultra, true ultra instinct and sage mode. How would the physical attribute amplification compare? If it's equal stats and it's equivalent, then you have to try and deduce the discrepancy in skill between true ultra instinct and sage mode, or like true ultra instinct and EMS Sasuke or something like that. Um, it's truly hard to like determine even qualitatively the discrepancy between the two. If I had to say. The way Naruto and Sasuke and the Naruto verse is set up, it seems hand to hand combat is more revered and emphasized and detailed in comparison to Dragon Ball, at least current Dragon Ball, where it's all about power level. So I would say Naruto and Sasuke probably win more than likely and equal stats in pure hand to hand. Now, there is arguments for Dragon Ball, I'm sure, as well, but more than likely, I'd say Naruto and Sasuke winning is a more likely conclusion. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, man, JJK has one of the most unique and intriguing power scaling systems and power scaling, not power scaling, but power systems I've ever seen. So, do you think Barry Monarto could hit MUI Goku without equal stats? Absolutely not. With equal stats, uh, it's tough because MUI is specifically designed for seamless defense and offense. Barry on mode is more like an amplification of power. It's like an amplification in power, not necessarily hand-to-hand -hand combat skill. So if you sort of deduce what each ability is intended to do, um, MUI Goku might have the advantage. Um, as far as what the abilities and what benefits come with them. So, But overall, I would say Naruto and Sasuke. Uh, overall. More than likely. It's tough, though. It's tough. Tsunami versus Rochimaru, I think she won 7 out of 10 times. If we exclude Edo's, um, it is an interesting conversation. Um, Orochimaru has better speed scaling. Orochimaru was able to contend with Fortel Naruto. Um, even sick, implying that him at his best is even faster than that. As we know, Jiraiya almost died to Fortel Naruto. To be fair, he was not trying to kill Naruto. Um, but he almost died to a weaker Fortel Naruto if you consider that the seal is weakening over time. So the, the Fortel Naruto that Orochimaru faced is actually stronger than the one that Jiraiya almost died to. 
And keep in mind, that's a sick Orochimaru. Right, so Tsunade, her durability is ri ridiculous. All right, her durability and her stamina and endurance. Her, her cotter vascular ability is ridiculous. Her stamina, etc. Um, as far as who would come out on top, Orochimaru has lots of abilities. Uh, lots of abilities. He has a pseudo sage mode. Um, if he can find an ability that can maybe decapitate Tsunade, he could possibly take the win. Maybe the Kuzunagi sword. It, it seems that he thinks he can cut almost anything with it. He was very surprised when he wasn't able to penetrate uh, Fortale Naruto's cloak. He was like, oh shit, this can't even penetrate him. Not even pierce him. Right, so maybe that would penetrate Tsunade and cut off her head and he'd win that way. I think he's faster than her for sure. More than likely. He's faster. Do, can I see Shinade winning? Yes. I think if he if she is able to get into strength of the 100 seal and starts pummeling him and he doesn't take decisive action, then yeah, I think he, she could kill him. Um, but I would actually lean towards Orochimaru. I find it very hard to believe that Shibai is the only god that existed. I think there's a Atsutsuki god that's probably on par, maybe even stronger than Shibai. Yeah, the Atsutsuki history is still to be explained, right? Because... Before Shibai, there was this stone tablet that Sasuke comes upon. I believe he was in some Otsutsuki realm. I believe it was where one of the Tentel clones existed, an actual Tentel beast. And he sees this like hierarchical structure. Right? He sees Kinshiki on the bottom, he sees Kaguya and Momo parallel to each other, and then he sees Ishii on top, implying like this sort of power hierarchy. But later on, we see Momo talk about Shibai, who seems to even surpass that, almost as if he transcends that hierarchy. All right, so maybe there's some sort of hierarchy amongst his realm and caliber of Atsutsuki. I wouldn't think that's crazy to say. Um, it's a possibility. Um, but if I had to say, is it likely? I don't know, because Hagoromo was the guy for all of Naruto, right? I don't know if they're going to bring in another guy like that for Shibai. It's possible, but I don't I don't think so. Well, time will tell. So <clears throat> Let me check on Batman real quick, folks. Um, let me see if we said anything. Uh, nothing yet. Uh, this might be a full solo pod, so feel free, feel free to ask any questions, though, folks. Next week we should have everybody back, the whole gang back. So, <clears throat> um, Standard Rochamaro wins mid to high diff. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Do you think Shibai is stronger than Ida and Damon? Yes, absolutely. He is the creator and founder of Shinjutsu. He is basically confirmed to be 4D, and Damon and Ida simply contain a fraction of what he can most likely do. So I would say more than likely, yeah. Worker Roshimaru wins low diff since he's much stronger. Yeah, yeah, especially like Boruto scaling, yeah. He certainly improves. By the way, folks, for everyone in here, if you could take a second and hit the like button, it's really appreciated, really appreciated. Um, <clears throat> this is big news, but I guess I'll say it, and this will probably be the only time I say it, so if you're in here and you're listening to this point in time, you get exclusive information, but more than likely, sometime in September, we're going to have Clyde on the podcast. I talked to Clyde, he said I'm down, so more than likely, he will be in one of these pods in the month of September, around mid-September. This will be the only time I iterate this until close to that date. I'm not going to say the date, but this is it is in September, and he will be present more than likely, so... I have to get you guys the best in the business. Clyde's one of the best in the business. Um, we'll continue to try to get other other great creators on as well. So, I had to tell you guys that. Why Sasuke is, uh, I don't know, Techikara so special? Isn't it just a substitution? You should think about it. It sort of is, right? It's similar. There's some certainly some parallels. But it's a swapping of animate or inanimate objects, right? So, it's, it's very useful. Because he can even switch with attacks, right? He can switch with, like, I believe uh, against Fuse Momo, he switched with a, I believe it was a Ross and Shuriken. He switched with it. So it's, it's very, very, very useful in that manner. It's a great asset to have in combat, right? Because you could fake somebody out with it. You could have someone like Fuse Momo, for example. He was about to absorb the ninjutsu, right? And then Sasuke swaps with it and stabs the absorption hand that he has with the eye in the middle, right? It's very, very useful. Um, but it is similar to substitution, substitution due to in some way. But it's there's more functionality to it. So, 
Or imagine if the in the time skip Shiba probably gets even stronger and becomes 5D. Oh god, that'd be overkill. Then we're talking Dragon Ball scaling. <laughs> everyone in the verse is fucked if that happens. Yeah, there'd have to be an immense power cliffing or everyone would be fucked. And he'd better stay a conceptual entity because if not, there's no point of writing boards anymore. So, how much stronger are war art characters compared to the rest of the Shippuden before it? Um, so if we compare people like Kakashi to his previous iterations, he's quite a bit stronger. I mean, even in the war, in the pain arc, after a couple, you know, Rikeries, Chidoris, and a couple Kamuis, he's fucking gassed, right? And then in the war arc, the whole war arc, he's fucking using them. So he's considerably more capable. Naruto as well. He goes from Sage Mode to KCM 1, KCM 2. They're significantly stronger. And because of that, I honestly believe that Kishimoto had to upscale some of the Edo, like Zabuza and Haku. That if we're being logically consistent, Zabuza should be remotely no threat to fucking Kakashi, and so should Haku not be a threat. Chiyo should not be reacting to KCM Naruto. Kimimaro should not even remotely touch KCM Naruto. But because there has to be a thrilling and entertaining narrative, Kishimoto had to upscale these individuals. And that's inevitable. It's, unavo it's unavoidable. And I understand. That's why we have fucking crazy scaling that Kimimaro scales to fucking KCM Naruto when in the fucking part one narrative, he's not even fucking remotely similar to Rochimaru, right? So... It's truly a little wonky for sure, but it had to make sense. At the end of the day, they want to sell manga, right? So I get it. Uh, early in peak EMS Sasuke versus full power Edo Nagata. Early Sasuke, that's a good question. Early Sasuke, what's tough about that is Sasuke and Itachi are implied to be relative based off their performance against Edo Nagato. I would say Itachi is the stronger of the two. Because he kind of carries the mantle for that battle. I mean, he does more of the work, so to speak. He also casually reacts to, to uh, Sasuke's Susana when he's uh, traveling towards Kabuto's location. He seems like the superior, again, uh, in comparison to early EMS Sasuke. Now, comparing early EMS Sasuke to Nagato is quite... A task because then you gotta ask yourself what's the discrepancy between them two because we know more than likely I know I know pain fans hate this and Nagato fans hate this Itachi was a superior in the Edo altercation at least in terms of speed he was able to intercept Nagato from ripping Naruto and Killer B's souls out and then later on he seals Nagato because he was faster right and even Kabuto says he wasn't mobile enough to beat Itachi and again this was after he got replenishment and chakra from Killer B this wasn't when he was crippled he said that after Kabuto, uh, not, not, Nagato was defeated. So he's more, more than likely faster than Nagato. But how does Sasuke compare to Nagato? That's tough. And unfortunately, I have to give an arbitrary conclusion to it. Um, and what I would say is Sasuke is probably faster than Nagato. I think the discrepancy in speed between Sasuke and Itachi is less so than the discrepancy in speed between Nagato and Itachi based off their performances. That's what I would say. I think that, that Sasuke more than likely would defeat Nagato uh, full power. Now, if we're talking about EMS Sasuke at his peak, he's going to beat Nagato. At that point, he's more powerful, more capable, um, faster. So, yeah, he, he would probably beat full power at Nagato. I could say that safely. I have to make the distinction between early and late, later EMS Sasuke because we see a huge power. Goal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Baron Monaruto, time to get bored to Kawaki, no limiter code to Ishiki, Damon, and Ida versus Shibai. All of them are all bloodless except Shibai. Shibai absolutely obliterates. Um, he's 4D. I don't know if that, they can even perceive him or even observe him in the tangible universe as he is in an entire dimension beyond their own. Uh, you know, an entirely higher dimension. Um, essentially, he can access a dimension that they can't even see nor access. Um, so they'd be fucked. More than likely. I have to really touch up on my physics and like multi-dimensional studies, but more than likely that's what would happen. That's what would happen. What's going on, Nio? Thanks for coming in. There's no excuse for Dry not taking the Ranchero back to the Leaf. Why, uh, with him, he left them in a war-torn country for nothing, and bringing them with him is a benefit for the Leaf. Yeah, that's that's a good observation. The counter to that would be maybe they wanted to stay. There were children, but I know they he they held the Rain Village very dear to themselves, especially Yahiko. He was always like this sort of visionary. 
as far as political aspirations and things of that nature. Um, but I get it. It's a war-torn shithole. So why wouldn't he? That's certainly something you can question. He would be the... It would certainly be noble of him. Oh, shit. 50 bucks from YC Project. I appreciate that, brother. I have to stop the fucking show for that, guys. Give me a second. Put it on the screen. Give credit where credit is due. And we shall continue here. Give me a second, folks. Appreciate that. Appreciate that once again, YC Project. Much appreciated, brother. Give me a second, folks. But yeah, it's been a while since we've done a solo show. It's been quite some time. Brings me back to the old days. You know? Give me a second, folks. Found it. I believe it is over here. I have a lot of screenshots. I need to delete these old ones. All right, got it, folks. All right, let's go ahead and read it. How far do you think a Itachi at his peak and Kisame at his peak could go against every Kage in a 2v1? It's a great question. Great question. Um, so, as far as the Kage, let's go through the Hokage history, right? Let's go through one through seven. Now, against Hashirama, I mean, the best argument I can create is through the Minuto one shot. And we say Obito considers Itachi a threat. Obito as a teenager was already a threat to Minuto, and Minuto was compared to Hashirama as a, as a teenager in the one shot because of that Itachi scales to Obito and Obito's arguably even Hashirama level. Um, I, I don't agree with that. I don't think Itachi reaches that threshold. Um, but that's the best argument for how they, you know, those two could beat um, Hashirama. Now, my real premise would be Itachi is in the realm of KCM1 and KCM2 as far as ability and caliber. Um, so at his peak, I would deem him in that range, in that threshold. And Kisame is tail beast level, um, superior to Killer B. Um, so he would be like in perfect to Cherokee threshold levels of power. So that's why these guys scale. Because of that, they would fail to defeat Hashirama, who literally ragdolled uh, Kuruma with a perfect Susano attire on top of him, and then fucking killed Madara. So I would say uh, he d they don't pass him. They would fail to defeat him. Toborama, sorry Toborama fans, he lacks feats. He certainly does. He admits inferiority in, of, in terms of speed to Minato. So they would defeat Toborama. Itachi's Genjutsu, Kisame's Water Dome, Kisame's Shark Form, eating Toborama's Chakra. Itachi Susano, Itachi's Yadamir, Itachi's Tomsuke Blade, they most likely would get past him. Sorry to the Toborama fans, he lacks empirical evidence for his scaling. Um, now, Hiruzen, if we take pre retcon Hiruzen in his prime, they wouldn't beat him because it's stated he's even beyond Hashirama. If there's anything after that, they'd slam. He doesn't compare. I mean, he's literally competing with Orochimaru as an old man. Orochimaru got folded by 14 year old Itachi. So yeah, he 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 would get folded. Minato, unfortunately, Minato as at his best, probably beats Itachi and Kisame, especially with the Minato one shot. The scaling that we have now been able to create thanks to the one shot. I mean, as as a Hokage man, I think he's a threat to even Hashirama, at least in base. So he most likely, due to his speed, uh, deal with them. I could see possibly them contending giving him a hard time but I think his speed would be too great at his best so that's what I would say about that Tsunade I don't even have to say anything she gets folded um, Kakashi if we're talking novels as canonical literature he folds them he's even as it's stated he's even significantly superior to his war iteration Naruto I don't have to say anything he folds fucking Itachi Kisame now let's talk about a few other Kages um, let's see the Rei Kage they beat him um, who else is out there? Onoki, they beat him. May, I don't have to say anything, that's a joke. Gara, he loses. Uh, who else is out there? More legendary Kage. The third big Kage, most likely would lose. Genjutsu is a hard counter. Um, Raza, lost to Rechimaru, he's fodder compared to them. Who else is out there? I think there's all the Kages I can think of. Uh, the Borto Kage. They unfortunately don't beat any of them. I'm sorry. He, uh, they, they all 
even because they even contend with Otsutsuki, they're in a whole other caliber. They fucking fold Itachi and Kisame, unfortunately. They, in in the manga, I believe Garth restrained. He restrained. Uh, I believe it was Kinchiki in the in the movie in the anime. He was literally restraining Fuse Momo. Gar would fucking fold Itachi and Kisame. Chonchiro was comp- would, you know at least had some success against Kinchiki. Uh, so did uh, Onoki's granddaughter, whatever the fuck her name is, and then um, Garui as well. So they all would fold Itachi and Kisame. So yeah, I give the upscale in the war, and I don't, uh, and why I don't entertain certain arguments because obviously it's clear Kishimoto didn't think about certain things and did things just to add suspense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All love, bro. Yeah, appreciate it, Watch it, Prodigy. Much appreciated, man. Much love. Um, let's see here. How would Shiba be with Bear on mode? Oh God, Bear on mode. <sighs> just icing on the cake, man. Icing on the cake. It is be. Even more superior. It's comically superior. It'd be like fucking throwing Bugs Bunny in Boruto or something. It's just way, way above these guys. Way above them. I think people pay too much attention to certain things to the point of ignor- ignoring narrative implications and your knowledge of Kishimoto clear. Just didn't think about certain things. Also didn't. Yeah, exactly. Like, what they do is... What a lot of people do, especially in debates, right? Is they pinpoint and triangulate this substrata of empirical evidence, or the, or this substrata of datums, if you will, to try and spin this false narrative, when in reality, when looking at the narrative in its entirety, the antithesis is being implied by Kishimoto, right? Like, for example, uh, here is in with the pre-retcon scaling, right? People will say, oh, well, Kishimoto said uh, he's even above Hashirama, so that's the case, right? But then later on, we see here is in struggling with Orochimaru, and here is in, in the war, n- clearly being inferior to Hashirama, etc., right? So, nitpicking and triangulating the substrate of information, I don't find vaguely appropriate in a debate. I think it's a very obvious, sophist tactic. And it is clear and inter- intuitive dishonesty to do such a thing. Um, and I think if you're even a decent debater, you can exploit that hole in someone's premise. Yeah, sometimes people have trouble with that. Some guys are very good at triangulating a substrata of empirical evidence to spin a false narrative to defend their fallacious premise. Some guys are good at that. All right, so you gotta be wary of that. And I agree completely. Uh, since Momoshiki is the smartest character in the series, besides Amato, how much of a bigger threat would Boruto be to Kawaki if Boruto had Momoshiki's IQ? That's a great point. If he gained access to Momoshiki's intelligence and still, you know, was the, was operating on his own will, he'd be a huge threat. Um, who knows what Momo knows? I think Momo only tells Boruto what he wants to tell him. Honestly. I know that he's trying to not die. I know that. So he's telling him just enough to survive. But he still has it out for Boruto to some extent. There's this dichotomy with Momo. It's like this love and hate relationship. He has to care about Boruto to avoid death. But he hates Boruto because of what he's done and his father whipping his ass and all this stuff. So I think there are certain secrets that Momo still withheld from Boruto. So if he gets access to this intelligence and knowledge, um, who knows? Maybe there's even a counteract. There's a ca- there's a countermeasure to Ida's omnipotence. Maybe there's a countermeasure to the cyborgs. Who knows? Um, I certainly think that's going to be interesting to see. There is the clam. Uh, there is the clam guy and Moo, the Moo, the mummy guy. Oh, those guys get folded by Itachi and Kisame. Yeah, they're fodder in comparison. Dagonite thinks that tail beasts are not stronger than their Dinchurkis versus them being in their own. Really? If you just look at the feats, we see what Kuruma dealt with. We saw him get manipulated by Madara. We saw him get manipulated by Obito. And then conversely, we see KCM to Naruto carrying a war. Could Kuruma do that? Could Kuruma carry an entire alliance with tens of thousands of shinobi? Most likely not. So, I disagree. I think uh, Jinchurikis are certainly stronger. Especially stro- uh, perfect Jinchurikis, like B and Naruto. Dator and Sasori versus assigning a full power. Sasori is interesting because a lot of people don't realize he beat the Kazekage. Kazekage was stated as like the strongest in Sand Shinobi history, which means he's even above Chio. Chio stalemated Hanzo 
as she stated or the data book stated they still they had several uh, several altercations implying she stalemated him on more than one occasion implying relativity implying chio is relative to hanzo and with sasori being above that he is above hanzo hanzo spared the signing hence sasori is above signing level signing level safely um so if it's sasori and datara they most likely would defeat the signing uh, even at full power, more than likely. There's an argument for the Sonin. You could argue they're older, they're stronger. But even an older Jiraiya, when he finds out about Hanzo's death, was shocked. Right When he finds out that Pain killed him, he's like, holy shit, I didn't think that was possible. How the hell can one guy kill him? I was implying that even he deems himself as unable to achieve such a feat. So, more than likely, Sasori and Data would beat these guys. That's what I would say. Would it be easy? No, I don't, I don't think all three conjunctively would be an easy task but i do think it's possible and more than and more than likely the conclusion so yo 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 batman's here folks what's good what's uh, going on? i don't sound too well i'm not in my setup so all right good yeah we we're just talking a lot of Naruto today okay okay what's been going on with what, what's... Um, what i meant today let's see we thought naruto bleach I don't know if you know yeah. Bradley Martin. We were talking about that shit. How he like thinks he can beat up uh, like an actual fighter just because he's a bodybuilder. Talked about uh, a bunch of good <laughs> shit. Yeah, a bunch of good shit. JJK. I'm actually like almost done yeah. reading it. I'm about like sixty chapters away from finishing it. Um, what was your thoughts on the the bodybuilder thing? Would you oh, say dude. on that? Yeah, I said that. The truth is, size matters. It matters, but when there's such a discrepancy in skill level, that that size, yeah, that size advantage starts to diminish. Like. Take, for example, I gave this example earlier, but if you're at a bar and you're 250 pounds yep. and you don't know how to fight, you go up to this guy that's a Golden Gloves boxing champion and you try to talk shit, you're going to get fucked up. Even if the guy is 100 pounds lighter than you, he's going to beat your ass. Yeah. So, he's still the same week. Yeah. Like, Chin, and joints, I actually, bone. And I, I told this story earlier. Like that, I actually saw that. So I was I used to box for a long time. I was friends with the Golden Glove champion. And this bigger guy yeah. started talking shit to him. Probably weighed about 220. My friend was even smaller than me. He's probably like 130 pounds. Small guy. And he beat the shit out of the yeah. guy. He beat the shit out of the bigger guy. Beat his ass. And then the guy bought him a beer after. He's like, I hey, respect. Hey, man, I, I can't fuck with yeah. you. So, basically, you know, skill like, definitely matter, matters. But it does, it, it's it's not a factor if the other person's way more skilled. Yeah, That's the exactly. Problem. exactly. So, so, you know what I mean? Like, and I know experiences of my own. Uh, my brother was just one of them. Matter of fact, the party I was just at. His cousin, you know, they, they always goof around and shit, but his cousin's like way bigger and muscular. Yeah. He shut, he shoot it. Uh, he did a, you know, a double leg shoot. Yeah. Perfect technique with the double leg, everything. My brother was a former wrestler back then, uh, you know, competitively and whatnot, but he had to get out due to a back injury, but he was really, really good. Yeah. Went into college and everything for it. My brother's a fucking toothpick, like skinny as fuck, but since he has really good technique and he's still strong, even though he's super skinny. He just destroyed him. They yeah. Immediately reversed, he got him on his ass, and immediately subdued him. Exactly. Know? Like <laughs> skill, skill greatly matters, and skill. The, the more the, the bigger the discrepancy in skill, the less size matters. Now, if the skill's comparable, yeah. like John Jones versus fucking like, like, yeah. like Mighty Mouse no, Demetrius fuck. Johnson, then Demetrius Johnson would get his ass fucking beat because John Jones is a fucking <laughs> monster. So, yeah, yeah, or like or like Mike Tyson versus Floyd Mayweather, Mike. Would absolutely fucking annihilate Floyd so Mayweather. Destroy him. Yeah, yeah, that's when it's relevant size. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So that that was a good question. Uh, someone asked, but I miss that people, yeah. You know. Um, let's see. Any questions here? I think Itachi would be swapping hands with Yotsuki because he would have been training all those years leading up to their arrival. That's a good hypothesis. I uh, I think he certainly would have gotten stronger. I, I I don't think we saw the best of Itachi, like his true potential ever emerge. No. Um, he died. He what, hindered like, it. Perp- yeah, he died at like what like. 19, 20 or some shit like that. He was young. And man. that was that was insane itself, Jay, because yeah. the fact that his true peak of power, whether when he was first in Akatsuki alive or when we even see him as an Edo, you know what I mean? Even though he's like close to his power, you know what I mean? So maybe about 5% or 10% away from his real power. Yeah. But either way, bottom line is we get to see him with as that with just an MS or mind you. No EMS, you know, you know, no none of that shit. And he was already so fucking high in scaling. You exactly. Know what I mean? Like ridiculous. Yeah. So imagine if he didn't plan on hindering himself, he would have easily surpassed what people talking about when we're talking about people like, you know, Minato, yeah. you know, and Hashira, 
by Mater, he would have gotten past that if yeah, he kept like, going. Like a, an Itachi, but Sasuke is an example. Yeah, like, behind. like an Itachi in his thirties. Yeah. yeah, that would have been crazy to see, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Could, like Sasuke, probably. he had to cheat technically and get a six path amp, but yeah. and all that. But either way, Itachi though, he would have just did it with just raw training and shit because exactly. he was already progressing so high like, uh, and his structure control was that good to where he was already in the KCM spectrums and yeah. shit. And that's without nine tails. Uh, oh yeah, Charlie's <laughs> in here. So what's going on, Charlie? Uh, haven't read the series Dude. yet. And as of right now, don't have the greatest opinion of Borto, but nobody can deny how fucking clean that design is. Oh, dude, that shit is drip. That that design is drippy as hell, dude. The the Borto design, yeah. um, I I like it a lot. It kind of like it illuminates the hardship that Borto is going through. Like you know, he's he seems worn down, battle tested. He has like Sasuke shit on. He has a sword. Um, also, I know you're wondering, Charlie. Also, I'm almost done reading JJK. I'm about. 170 chapters in 173 to be exact um it's fucking fire like i i'm, I'm glad i started reading it it's fucking fire i'm on the colon I'm games watch. yeah i'm on the colon games watch. part where uh you know the colon games already began and they're trying to ma Ooh. maneuver their way through it it's fucking dope it's pretty fucking dope man so jjk is fire as fuck so. yeah it's, re it's really fucking good and obviously what you learn early on is that gojo is that guy you can learn very quick that he's that guy. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is 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 watch the anime first, my girl. Yeah. Um, because right after we're, we're gonna do Boruto first, because you know how I am. I gotta always prioritize Naruto. Yeah, dude. So yeah, for sure. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Boruto first. Watch that, you know, the rest, you name it, and then obviously catch him in the manga. Once I do that, we're gonna go straight into JJ. It's fire as fuck. Right Sh into that shit. Watch the yeah. anime, and I'm gonna read all the manga. Obviously, uh, Shibuya like was nuts. Oh, dude, it was so good. Like, I like how they, cause cause Gojo is such a threat that his enemies have to exploit his high AP. They say, hey, we're going to have to, like, use the fact that he creates collateral damage to combat him because he's too dominant. Like, that's how we're going to seal his ass. Like, we have to fucking exploit his his pure power against him. It's like they're using his power against him, and that's how they got him, you know, in the corner, and they fucking sealed him. Um, they, they had to strategically plan around his dominance because he's so dominant that if you go one-on-one -on -one with the guy, it's like fucking fighting, I don't know, like, Mike guy in eight gates is like the equivalent of like, dude, you're not going to win if you don't prepare for the guy. Like he's like fucking Goku and MUI or something. Like you have to prepare or you're going to fail. Or you're just not on that level. You know? So it's pretty fucking dope how they did that. Toji coming back was crazy. Oh dude, that was dope as hell. His return. I didn't expect that. Yuji was a highlight for me. His fight against Mahito. Oh dude. Awesome stuff. I like, uh, I like Yuta as well. Seen him a few times. And an interesting statement he made was that he has more cursed energy than Gojo, but Gojo is so efficient with his that he can like use it for more amounts of time. Like his uh, limitless technique, he uses such minimal resources that it ends up being to his advantage. Uh, it's, Gojo is just him, man. Uh, can you ask Batman thoughts on my first donation? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, Prodigy asked. Um, Based off everything we've seen so far in Boruto, how would you want the series to yeah. end? Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. If I if to give a, a full transparent uh, answer, I'm only as far as to where I'm about to meet Kawaki. So I still got way to go into and all yeah. like the peak shit. Um, but once I kind of get to the end, and I've already heard so much about it so far. I'm going to be honest with you. The Basically, the way I see for it to end is I want it to end in a way that we're not really going to expect. I really do want to be kept on our toes. I want it to be to where it could potentially go in different directions and we just don't fucking know. I want it to be really interesting. Um, I don't want it to be too predictable. Or I don't want it to necessarily even be like a true happy, peaceful ending. Because yeah, we exactly. realize it's not, you know, yeah. I don't want any like weird, uh, goofy stuff like that. I want it to be... So where either there's some middle ground where it's not a true good ending, but it's kind of, you know, yeah. kind of good or, or some bad. Or to where maybe it's like some Thanos shit, you know, or where things just get dark and bad. And, you know, and it's and it's this sets off for there to where now we get are basically set up in a direction to go into a whole other, you know, story series that connects to that timeline now. Yeah. And it goes from there. Like, yeah, you know, I want it to be something that we're just not going to expect. Yeah, it's so. funny because I, I said the same thing. I said. I would I would wouldn't mind like a sort of compromise ending like maybe Kawaki and and uh, Boruto fight for a while and they're like you know what your way doesn't work your dad's way doesn't work or too scared too dominant you're not gonna catch up to them training and Boruto's like well I'm not gonna allow you to erase my my father's 
ninja way so let's let's come to a compromise let's fucking maybe we'll make a new ninja way and this is the way we'll protect earth from now on or some shit like that like that that would be cool yeah. like not not just like a perfect peaceful ending or i don't know just something new not to like not a repeat of the past you know that's basically no what, no i don't yeah. want that yeah exactly mm. so basically what i was saying too yeah, when yeah. they asked me yeah yeah because we think alike another thing too is uh fucking um, if I ever uh, start not sounding off where just let me know, Jake, because I'm going in a different spot. Oh, yeah. um, but what's it called? Another thing that I would also prefer if they were to do is maybe to go with the potential direction it would have went if Sasuke won the fight in the end. Yeah. Because they could always do a, a very similar take like that, which is kind of like what well, me and you were saying, eh, we don't really want. But at the same time, if they're going to do something that we could have potentially had in Naruto Shippuden or whatever then they might as well do that dynamic because that would be fucking crazy. Oh, Cause dude. imagine like a yeah. scenario where it was Sasuke where he won and you know, oh, he's going to try to roll it under iron. Fist, blah, blah. So basically picture as like whoever that's going to, I'm assuming I think Boruto's the bad guy or no, not, uh, I don't know who's the bad guy. You see like, uh, it, it, seems, Boruto, yeah, it seems implied Kawaki. Yeah. Yeah. So Kawaki then, so let's say he somehow wins, you know what I mean? And he now gets the whole Sasuke story. It kind of goes in that direction. And that's going to be crazy. Cause then from that point, we just don't know at all what's going to fucking go down now. Like, shit's going to start, you know, being really dark, serious, you name it. Yeah. And that's something I also take. The only other direction I can see besides that third would be, like, some Dragon Ball shit, where now they're getting more into, like, the space territory of things, because I'm going to be honest with you, eventually Kishimoto's going to kind of run to a wall where he's going to have to think of something. You know yeah, because I mean? they're getting so and fucking only... powerful already. Yeah. It, exactly. It's like, how do you even get them beyond? So it's like, the only other thing I can think of that he could do would be something uh, illustrated with space to where more entities are coming or getting involved, yada, yada, to where that can start being able to get them along the scaling lines, reaching like Dragon Ball Z and Super and yada, yada. Yeah, exactly. So, and but, a dark ending would be different. Like a dark ending where yeah. things don't end well and the world is like up for grabs or there's a big question mark on what's next. I wouldn't mind that at all, actually. Um, that's definitely a different taste. Um the whole dynamic of board, of like the Naruto narrative would change. It's no longer like a like uh, peaceful and peaches and cream anymore. Like a board, it, the beginning of board. It gets so even worse. Yeah, I mean, like war, like like some extreme, like like imagine this. This would be crazy, which this would also be unpredictable. But imagine it got so bad to the point where now it goes back to how the eras were with Madara and Hashirama. Oh, Jesus. Like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that would, would be crazy. Insane. It, it would be like we Borto. It's like Borto would have a different path than his father like he's he's basically yeah. fighting an, an uphill battle he's like fuck man I, I lost now i have to yeah i have to co i have to go back i have to go back to the drawing board i have to evolve somehow because i'm not good enough yet oh, to, yeah. to, you know it, somehow figure out how to pull a hashirama and you know and fucking get the world back together basically yeah um you know so there's that or the last thing i could potentially see if kishimo is writing this off is uh let's say that all just goes to shit to where and somehow some way naruto gets out or he comes back and he realizes everything that has changed and has to go through that whole emotional experience and spectrum and, and trauma to where then he starts like getting a wake-up call and he yeah. just starts going through like a training period and then he just comes back into business and starts fucking shit up you know, be going, like, yeah to where now it switches back to naruto as the main character i mean i can go through shit also yeah <laughs> yeah it would be unpredictable yeah exactly yeah. it's like going from gohan and then back to goku so if yeah. they were to do something like that that's also okay because that would be unpredictable and that would be crazy yeah that imagine fucking a blood crazy. pissed off narc where he's more cold and he's just had enough and he yeah. goes about it in a more harsher way than hashirama did that would, no, that would be a plot twist uh your guys mics are dying yeah. oh if, if our mics are dying let us know folks i'll try to check like the settings and shit um let's read the chat Gojo has unlimited uh, cursed energy, uh, essentially. Oh, let yeah. me connect uh, Yada real quick. Then my Wi-Fi. Hang on. All right. Yeah, if I'm cutting out too, folks, let me know. Um, let's read the chat here. Who do you think will be in top 10 strongest Naruto verse by the end of Boruto, if you had to predict? Boruto, Kawaki, um, Ida, Damon, Sarda, um, Shibai. This is not in order, by the way. Shibai. Uh, who else is out there? Code, more than likely. Who else? Who else is out there? From the people we currently know. Maybe Mitsuki. Mitsuki as well. Um, yeah. Two more. Two more. Who else? Uh, 
Which, uh, maybe Delta. Maybe a, maybe Amada like modifies her to be even stronger since it is his daughter after all. And then, who hey else? chat, let me know if I sound good right now. By the way, I'm, I know Jay can hear me good, but let yeah, me know yeah. if you guys can hear. Um, Worst case scenario, if you here and there, you guys when you go back to the recording, if you want, you'll still hear as crystal as day. So, but yeah, I can't think of a ninth person. I'll just throw someone in there, like fucking uh, so uh Sakura. I'll just throw her in there. Um, let's see what other questions. Uh, what do you what do you think Orochimaru would do since Naruto and Sasuke aren't there to keep him in check? Dude, he's so he's so inferior to everybody else. He's not doing shit to fucking Ida or Damon. Uh, he's not doing <laughs> that shit. If he wanted to, he's not doing. Imagine yeah. he tries to like experiment on Damon. Damon's like, what the fuck, bro? He slaps his shit. He wouldn't do shit. Um, exactly. Who do you think the strongest Kage aside from the first four Hokage are? I personally think Mu is a fair contender, but I could be wrong. I feel like he beats uh, third rate Kage, but because he's a hard counter. Uh, the strongest Kage. Um, so not Hokages. Or excluding Hokages. Um, let's see. Third is up there, man. He's really fucking powerful. Um, who else? Honestly, the fourth is up there, too. Onoki. Really powerful. Um, this is unfortunate. There's not much history on the other Kages for the most part. Guys like that are probably in the top, like in, in contention. Uh, let me see if Batman's still here. Oh, he's muted. Feel free to keep asking questions, folks. Can't spam the fuck out of it. Yeah, dude, Gojo is just. Let's just check in your chat. Yeah. Um, you guys are. I already read that. Uh, what characters in Naruto do you think would be Kage level if they didn't die, get sick or trained more? My answers would be Kimimaro and Haku. Those, those are good picks. Kimar and Haku would probably yes. yeah they they Very have good picks. Strong. Yeah. Yep. Both would be better than May's mid ass. Yeah, they would be better than her more than likely. Haku Haku is a little hard to determine though. I'm gonna be honest with you because literally the most peak that we ever get to see her like at her full power because we know she was beyond part one Kakashi and Zabuza, but she yeah. was holding back to very kind. So she never so when but she shows her true power in the war arc where she's forced to, and she's over here kind of going. And blow for blow with you know basically base guy things like that um so she's pretty strong you know what i mean uh she was pretty damn strong things like that uh you know so if she at least had more time you know i don't know she probably could have definitely gotten started getting towards like you know the sonning tier and shit like that yeah um and etc but you know yeah but she was she's interesting kim mar though is a little bit easier to dissect in my opinion because he's kind of like a, a jack of trade, like, you know, a trades and shit. Like, he's kind of, he's difficult, but at the same time, it's a little bit more straightforward with him. To where, like, if we're analyzing prime Kimimaru, we do know he's able to clearly fight Kage-level opponents with Orochimaru. You know, he fights the, the Kazakage. Orochimaru even said if he was there, what he was in, it would have been a smooth assassination, which those are pretty big claims. Yeah, that's a big claim. Um, what's it called? Then you have the part where him and Chiyo somehow, some way can deal with a Casium clone. Um, and they could at least bare minimum dodge a Ryzen Shuriken. Um, so that was pretty cool. Things like that. So Kimamaru, he would have been a monster. Yeah, he If he was still alive, he would have been very similar to Atachi in a sense. Nowhere in the same caliber, but he'd be not that far behind, if that yeah. makes sense. Haku, you know? he, yeah, Haku was very young when he died. So he certainly would have improved yeah. quite a bit. But yeah, I don't see him yeah. reaching like Itachi or Sanin is like. Yeah. Maybe like his max potential. Sonny maybe Sonny. Yeah, maybe yeah. Sonny. Because at that point in the narrative, Sonny was like unreachable. Like even Kakashi wasn't touching that. Um, so th th that was like an unreachable threshold during that point in time in the narrative. I think at, at best, maybe like Sonny level. Kimi Morrow had a lot of potential because even Orochi Morrow saw him like, as like the perfect vessel before he was sick. Um, he would have been a fucking threat. Like probably beyond Sonny for sure. Um, now, would he be able to be Itachi in that vessel? I don't know about that, but he'd be beyond Sani. So, uh, what do you think about the new four to uh, the four new Naruto episodes? Four new Naruto episodes. I don't think I'm even aware of those. Um, it could be something like Madara has the power to create people and insert them into the dream world. Thus, the Otsuki were born or some shit like that. It's crazy because Boruto acts like Naruto. But has a Sasuke path and opposite for Kawaki. He acts like Sasuke and has a Naruto path. Yeah. It's very, very uh, deliberate how they wrote those guys. Very deliberate. 
I feel like Kimura was already Kage level when he went fully healthy, like low Kage. Which Mara directly thanks Kimimaro for helping him kill Rasa. That's true. So we know before his sickness took over, he was up there. Yeah, he certainly would have been Kage plus at his best, for sure. Maybe Mara didn't want them to live peacefully in the dream world and created those excuses to cause problems for them. Oh, dude, the whole Madara theory? That would be amazing if that actually did happen with the fucking twist. <laughs> the Madara yeah. like the, the big bad guy in the end. <laughs> Uh, Another thing too, Jay. Um, back to the the original question at bay with like how Abortus should end and whatever. Another thing they could do if they're if they decide not to kill Sasuke, which I think I'm pretty sure they're gonna kill him. Yeah. Um, but let's say if they decide not to do that, to maybe the story, which this would be even more unpredictable, where it starts becoming a Sasuke story, you know, somehow. Where instead of it going back to Naruto as the main, it goes to him to where he's just going full on like I just don't give a fuck anymore. You know what I mean? Like type yeah. of vibes. Yeah, that that would somehow be crazy. Strong enough to be relevant and try to pull, you know, a hot drama to win while everything is so bad and war and you name yeah. it. Uh, no. And then, like, let's say he goes as far as like you know doing Edo Tensei, where he's somehow bringing back the Chia people, Kage, Like, I don't know who knows. Like, if he's just doing so, going out, you know, yeah, and just doesn't care. That That's would be crazy. Yeah, that definitely so. would be a crazy twist. Uh, you can search it mm -hmm. up. We get four new episodes of Naruto in September. Really? Let me look it up real quick. I didn't even know that. Oh shit! I That'd see be here. fun. Brought back the Okages and the entire Chia. Oh my god! It'd be like a war part two. <laughs> Imagine uh, Naruto officially returns with four new episodes. Oh shit! Uh, it's been a while since the last time fans of the hit anime series Naruto could tune in and watch a new episode of Masashi Kishimoto's legendary Ninja Classic, but that's no longer the case. And they post to the Naruto uh, website in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the original anime's debut. The first of four all new episodes of the anime will begin airing in September 2023 for all fans to see. Unfortunately, the announcement did not include any details as to what the episodes will be about. Though, as suggested by Anime Network News, the story is expected to happen somewhere in the timeline of the original series to pop out interest. Reruns of the original series will begin being broadcast in July. That means it already started. Oh, wow. So there's nothing about it? Jesus. Um... I mean, that, that just leaves endless possibilities as to where and what these episodes will be about. Um, it's, it ought to be like something that maybe fans are wondering about, possibly. Maybe like, um, that's tough. Maybe a point in history was a little bit unexplored. Mm, maybe Sasuke's journey with Orochimaru, like more in-depth. Yep. That, that wouldn't be too climactic. It's like, yeah, he's getting stronger, so what? But maybe that. Yeah. Or Itachi's journey. I know there's a lot of Itachi out there already, but maybe him. That's the only thing they could really show with Itachi would be the... um, It would be basically like more things either with him and, and like the war when he was a little kid. Yeah. Um, Or it would be... Uh, trying to think what else because we we already got so much from the novels and name yeah, it exactly. showing his whole life who else could they fucking talk about i don't even know <laughs> or like a kotsky stuff on the side you know yeah, maybe, a maybe a kotsky shit or yeah but it, they I'm... even showed a lot of that though because in the anime they showed a lot of his akatsuki adventures adventures yeah, too <laughs> exactly so... it's, pro it's probably gonna be like a moment and during the narrative where something's not really explained or some shit i'm guessing it's hard to tell yeah, yeah. Um, it ends with Madara sitting on a throne laughing. <laughs> yeah, dude, more thunder like that. Be fucking crazy. Um, that would be the biggest troll to be honest. From Kishimoto, yeah. Kishimoto would just be trolling her asses at that point. Uh, it just be like, you no, know, you guys want to hate Boruto, or you guys are with this and that. All right, bet this is the ending you get. <laughs> uh, Kishimoto could have been at least a lower level of Koski if healthy. Yeah, probably. If he definitely beats Hedon, at least that here is in stone and holds up pretty well in that regard. Yeah, makes sense. But it would be new as in we never saw an ending like that before. Yeah, it would be. Early Shippuden Kabuto versus Hedon. That'd be cool to see. It'd be cool to see if something like that comes out. Um, out of the big uh, four, Chiha... Uh, Kabuto? Yeah, Kabuto versus Hedon. I guess that'd be a cool fight to see. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But basically, like, if Kabuto, which I don't see why he wouldn't, 
has similar per, per, or at least some form of relativity. Like, let's say it's not even equal, but you get the relative or equal progression like Kakashi when they were in part one, then he should basically be able to do what Kakashi can do against head on. But the only difference though is Kakashi had a shot at gun. So yeah. I'll be honest, Kabuto might get caught slipping and yeah. might get nicked. Because if know? he gets nicked once, he's fuck he's fucked. He's dying. So yeah. Because yeah. if Kagato or Kakashi was over here going blow for blow and didn't get hit once. And, yeah. and mind you, he's, he was fighting both of them at the same at time. At the same too. time. Yeah. So like Kabuto, I, obviously he's not gonna be fighting both for this exception, but still the fact that like Kakashi was struggling with hit on you know what I mean? Like, I know he was pressured, but he was still having his 1v1 moments. You know what I mean? So, and he yeah. still couldn't do anything. Exactly. But the fact that was the situation, I don't know, bro. I think Hidon might actually get it over Kabuto, but that's just me. Yeah, so. Hidon might actually take it. One, one cut, even if it's subtle, he's fucked. All he needs but is a the, drop like, of his blood. It would have to be like a Genjutsu combo in order to, like, to cut his head off or some shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, get him in Genjutsu. And cut, he, that's the only way I can see. Yeah, he doesn't use like his cho his fucking chakra blades, ninjutsu tools to cut his head off or some shit. It's the only way. Um, out of the big four Uchiha, what do you think Ishimoto did best with each compared to the others? It's a good question. Um, so when it comes with Sasuke, that what he did best with him out of the others, I got is he created rel he he created re um as, as far he created what's the word I'm looking for relativity like as far as being able to relate to the guy uh re relatability is what I, the word i'm looking for relatability uh to the fandom so he made he made sasuke human like this guy makes mistakes he he, he let his own ambition get the best of him he wanted to kill sasuke uh, itachi so bad that he was willing to go rogue you know, he gave him like relatability to the viewer not to say that we're fucking all like trying to be human fucking global terrorists or anything but as far as like yeah. making mistakes uh he did that very well with Sasuke gave him an understandable like journey and path uh, now as far as Itachi emotional appeal I think the way Kishimoto wrote Itachi and the tragedies that he endured um, yeah it was, it, was, it was poetically beautiful so he did that best. very real yeah very realistic uh, he gave him a very honorable you know life and and death um, so I think he did that best for Itachi, emotional appeal, like appealing to the audience. Yeah. Um, as far as Obito... It, 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 it's a situation, it's like, it, it just makes us think about it. It's like, what would you have even done exactly. in that situation yeah. he was put in between? You know, like, that's just nuts. Exactly. You know? And then Obito, uh, just his narrative progression, the way that they set up it was, the, the suspense for who Obito really is, like whether it was modern or not. That was really well done. Um, Cause we all believed he was Madara, like yeah. he was like the the injured Madara. You know what I mean? Like, but back, he was still like that guy. Yeah, because back then like, people, was totally... yeah, people were like theorizing: is it really Madara? It's probably Madara. Like before we actually or anybody actually knew. Um, so they did that very well. And then for Madara, it was the lore. Madara is the lore. But it was like everybody was like theorizing like who it could potentially be like maybe it isn't Madara but even though the, like the, the narrative is clearly going in direction to try to convince us it is yeah like and then some people were actually correct about it being obito but a bunch of other people have like different theories like it was pretty cool with him yeah so. and i remember back then i was kind of young still but i remember the theories and like videos on theories coming out and shit i remember that yeah. back in the day i was like <laughs> oh shit but uh i think Madara was his lore like the lore they built for him yeah it was better it, it was extremely well done Better than the others in comparison, even better than Obito. And let's be real, so. fighting with Obito. Whenever you're seeing him fight with his Kamuin, you name it, it was just so good. Dude. Yeah, it's really really good. He just <laughs> so, look, he looks so dominant and superior to the majority of literally, people. bro. And Madara, his lore is the best. His introduction was the best out of comparison to the other yeah. Shiha as well. One of the best introductions ever. He's anime history. Guy. He was. <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing. Fucking him slapping the alliance like they're children. Literally. Yeah, him coming back in the alliance. Yeah, yeah, literally. They're literally. Or, uh, him, Obito freaking out when Kabuto brought him. He's like, oh shit, oh fuck. Yeah, it's like they're literally <laughs> pissing themselves. Every everyone that saw Madara was pissing themselves, literally. Um, yeah, Hasra, they were just built different, man. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they were the pinnacle of the Shinobi world until Six Pass. So. Another thing with Obito J is well, that was really great was how they started him as a as as a beginning character, to where he was kind of like fodder in comparison, even to like Kid Kakashi oh, and able yeah. to keep up and you that's, know what I mean, like at least scale scale high enough to have some relativity where he could do combos and shit with Kakashi. But, yeah. but either way, like 
I loved how they started with that and how he was in his personality and how it was extremely similar to Naruto. Yeah. And then next thing you know, all it takes is one bad day, kind of similar to the Joker shit. It just takes one bad day for everything to go to shit and then you turn and become something else entirely. And just shows how even humans as well, how relatable it is because, you know, no matter what, if you have just a really bad fucked up day, that could be all it takes to make you just become something else entirely. Yeah, like, you know, you just become, you know. Yeah, like one bad day. So- for the wrong person could literally threaten their mental fortitude to the point where they make a 180 and end up going like the dark side like like obito did and like joker yeah. did like it's just it's that epiphany the epiphany event that caused obito to turn on his allies on his old shinobi way which was very similar to naruto's that was very well done um so uh, i want sasuke who would kill Mother? Oh, that would go mad. All jokes aside, I want Naruto to be alive in the end. Um, it's possible that he's alive in the end. I know I'm pretty sure Sasuke's dead. I'm like fairly certain he'll be dead. Um, and I think Naruto won't be part of the equation, whether he's sealed or dead. I think one of those things will probably be the case too. Uh, he died from boredom. Can't die. Remember Osutsuki. But Kabuto might be able to keep himself from dying if he don't get him in the blood ritual. If he realizes his juice through the chakra scalpel should be enough, but could go either way because he don't should be relative. Yeah, because he don't could just literally put a kunai through his fucking his heart, and I I doubt Kabuto could mitigate that or put one through his head or something. He's dead on on the spot, you know. So that's the problem with Hidon, Why his arsenal is such a problem. Kishimoto said he wanted Kuruma to win that one shit thing instead of Minato. Do you think it's a tailed beast secret, like how you, uh, like how you make, make a return? Um, I don't think it would be currently for the narrative. I don't think it'd be logically comprehensible to bring him back. Um, it, it just wouldn't make sense. It would it would undo <laughs> the stakes that are now involved in the Boruto narrative and the Boruto verse. With Kuruma, de- with Kuruma dead and Naruto nerfed and sealed, he is no longer the deterrent to the threats that exist. He was a deterrent before that. He, he beat Kaguya, he beat Momo, he beat Fuse Momo. He was fucking up the inners like Delta whipping her ass and shit. Now... He was the peak. Yeah. Now, he's no longer that beacon. And no longer and Sasuke is no longer that beacon as well. So I doubt they're going to bring Kuruma back. I Sasuke is like a baby crutch. Like, if anything, Sasuke is the only one kind of really like holding it down in a sense. Like, for them to have any form of hope to begin with, it mainly just boils down to Sasuke now. But not even him is anywhere near shit. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. <laughs> uh, what do you think Joker scales to Batman IQ wise? Joker's actually extremely intelligent. Um, yeah. Now he has to be in a separate guard because he can compete against Batman. Yeah. So. Congratulations on graduating, Jay. Oh, Alex is in here. <laughs> What? Everybody type in the chat. Congratulations. That's a big deal. What's up, Alexa? Big moves. Um, what do you think Joker scales to Batman? He's relative in intelligence to Batman. Yeah, he, he is. definitely relative. Yeah. I think yeah. empirically, I'm not sure if this is correct, but he's caused Batman the most hardship out of any villain in Batman's yes. role gallery. Even more than Bane, even more than fucking Penguin, more than like uh, Bane Deathstroke. Bane was close, but... Joker was way beyond. Yeah. yeah, like like Bane broke his back, no homo. He broke Batman's back. and But Joker, <laughs> dude, the, the things Joker has fucking done, bro, he fucking, he fucking crazy, tortured, yeah. he tortured Tim Drake. He fucking paralyzed Barbara Gordon, killed Jason Todd. Raped her. Yeah, for raped her shit, all kinds of disgusting ass shit. Killed Jason Todd. Fucking all killed. He tortured uh, him first and yeah. then killed him. <laughs> Beat the fuck out of him, recorded it, and then killed him. And then fucking. And then all- made him come back. So for him to be evil and like give PTSD. To yeah, Batman. literally, like all the shit he's done. And then in one of the iterations of Batman, he literally tortures him when he gets like uh, uh, Mister Plixies or whatever his name was, the fucking five D guy. He, yeah. gets, he gets his power and he he fucking yep. tortures Batman. Fucking, yep. um, he's caused the most failures, I think any villains ever caused Batman. It's fucking crazy yeah. how good he is. He's man. the only one that can do it. Not the Justice League, not Superman, yeah. not nobody, just him. He's a, he, he, he's a fucking bigger threat to Batman than arguably the Justice League in some iterations. Like, he's a fucking the Brainiac, threat. bro. Yeah, like, fucking bigger than Brainiac. <laughs> like, fucking, he caused injustice. The whole storyline was fucking because of the Joker. All that shit 
The world almost fucking ending was because of fucking Joker. That was just one Joker, not even yeah. our Joker. That was just another Joker on a different Earth. Bro. Yeah, he was that much of a fucking menace, dude. That's how much of a fucking monster he is. Then you got the Joker in the Dark Multiverse that literally oh, does Jesus. his last to where it threatens the entire fucking multiverse. Dude, yeah, he's a fucking monster. Yeah, he's a fucking uh, monster. Like, if Joker and Batman combine, like the Batman who laughs, Batman can't stop him. He needs Joker's like help. Like, the fact, the fact that Joker thought, if I make Batman evil, then everything just ends. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's fuck, <laughs> he's it's, not wrong. It's fucking That's over. That's all his plan was. Yeah, and he yeah, was right. Like, if I just make him evil and with me combined, we're unstoppable. No he, one can beat us. He literally. <laughs> and he took almost took over the multiverse. Literally. Uh, it took for the it took for outside omnipotent entities the hand yeah. that uh, was being uh, driven from something connected to A and B and then that connects to the presence which is basically the one above all for DC. Yeah. It took for them to send the hands to come out and be like, "Hey, what the fuck?" Like, bro, Perpetra, all you dumb fucking omnipotent gods, like, what the fuck were you doing? Okay, bet we'll handle this shit. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then literally. And then literally for the Batman who lasts, like, hey, bro, Wonder Woman, if you don't join me and let me absorb your power, I can't kill the hands. The fact that he said that if he could take her power and then he could be able to still kill the hands, Dude. that was ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yeah, Joker Joker is the perfect a antithesis of Batman. That's why he's his greatest foe still to this like, day. He would have been, he would have literally been an omni, like, omniverse threat, which yeah. basically pertains to all multiverse. That goes. All the way beyond to connects to the yeah. Marvel verse, yada yada, the whole nine yards. You need like literally if like you, yeah. The only people power that, beat the hand, like the, power, the only know? person that would probably beat him would be like the fucking presence, like the god of DC itself yeah. or something. Like that's the, the presence only would stop it. Yeah, the only one. Um, congrats, Jay. Thanks, bit, bit it if I said your name right. You can't know home of that, Jay. Yeah, man, it sucks that. That's what Bane did to Batman. I have to fucking say that <laughs> shit. Broke his back. That's, that's <laughs> sus. I think Bane's a little sus for that shit, low key. Um, yeah, I agree. If he don't goes for the kill immediately, but in character, as we saw against Asuma, how he acts, I can see Ka giving Kabuto an opening to heal himself if he strikes a non-vital wound first. Yeah, if he if he works quick, for sure, he could definitely heal it up. Like if it's a very superficial wound, he could heal it up. Yeah, he could for sure, heal it up. Whatever. Now, if it hits yeah. the heart or the brain, he's fucked. I don't know. About yeah, he's fucked. that one. Yeah, he'll get Sonati and Hanrama could better do shit like that, but I don't know about Kabuto. You yeah, know? I don't know it's, if he's that was, caliber. Like. He'd probably, yeah. I'd probably kill him, yeah. You think Boruto yeah. will learn Sageman or something? Uh, surely the Jogon can't be the only thing he relies on. I think Momo's going to teach him his ways. He might have to because of the threats that are going to come in the time skip. Sage mode? Yeah. Um, I know Sasuke's not teaching him that. I doubt it. Um, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he's going to learn that. Uh, maybe a Who would learn Sage mode? What'd they uh, say? Boruto. You think if, if he, Boruto. Yeah, I doubt he it. Could, he could... Yeah, that's the problem, because he wanted to kind of go more in the foundation of Sasuke's way and kind of go that route, in a sense. Yeah. Um, and he took some stuff from Naruto, so it's possible, since he was at least willing to learn the Rising-Gon and shit, and then he even immediately starts off with Shadow Clones, Maybe. which is Naruto's whole Yeah. But, yeah, possibly, you know, I, sure. Um, like, the only problem is, is the fact that, like, uh, with what I was I was getting so far in the beginning of the world, like I said, I haven't seen it as far, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But the main problem I was always seeing with Boruto is he has a similar issue like Akashi. He doesn't have a lot of chakra. Yeah, And doesn't. that's his fucking problem. Yeah. And kind of stunting his growth. And, and he's still over here having to use his genius and prodigy skills like Minato. And basically figure out a way around that. Utilizing chakra control and figure out to do the impossible basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Kakashi, you're telling him like, bro, you only got this much chakra. There's only so much you can do. You're basically me. Suck it up. It is what it is. You know, you're not, yeah. you're not your father. You know, or Sasuke. So basically... The way I see it is, if that eventually changes somehow to where he grows, which can, because, you know, there are characters that do get stronger, it's shown and should put in an Arto, then there you go, he should be able to tap into it. Because one of the first requirements for Sage Mode is you need to have an enormous amount of Chakra. Yeah, if you don't, exactly. you can't do it. You're just fucked. You, yeah. It's impossible. The only, you know? yeah, the only possibility is if the Karma is so... With the karma? If, if it's Jesus so karma. if it's so embedded in his DNA that he's like one with with Momo, then maybe he'll have like a fuck to chakra yeah. or something. But um, and yeah, yeah. But then again, it's like, what's the point of stage mode? Yeah, he won't when fucking, he has karma. He won't even need it. Yeah. So I, that's why I say it's probably exactly. not the case. He he literally has fucking yeah. Suski DNA, so probably not. Like they're going the direction for Boruto. Basically, the karma is yeah. a curse mark for Sasuke. They're just doing basically they're making board to the main character but with sasuke kind of like sasuke dynamics if that yeah. makes sense uh what you know? do you, yeah 
what do you think happened to the Uzumaki clan? So in the Minotaur one shot, when uh, uh, the fuck is her name? I already for, fucking um, Kushina's talking to uh, Hashirama's wife about the Uzumaki. She actually kind of it doesn't explain what what like what's hap what happened to them currently, but she says that the Uzumaki are exploited for their ability to seal, and yet she also says that they're they're actually fodder in terms of war potential, like they're not good at combat. So what most likely happened is that. Maybe there are Uzumaki running around, like still present, but they're just used as probably slaves to seal, or maybe they're extinct. Um, it's either they're being exploited still, maybe by other villages, and they're like kept captive to seal shit or something like that, or they're extinct. One of the two. That's most likely yeah. the case. They're not made for combat. Naruto is an exception. Naruto's a fucking. I mean, his father is Minato, and he has Kurama, and he bonded with Kurama, and he has fucking six pass powers, and he's a reincarnation of fucking Ashura. He's a, he's a fucking exception. But everybody else is not made for combat. You know, like, Hashirama's wife wasn't. Kushina wasn't. Um, other Uzumakis were not. Nagato, another exception. Fucking Obito gave fucking him, gave him moderate fucking eyes. That's an exception. Um, so, yeah, besides those two, you got, these guys aren't made for combat. So they're either extinct or they're being exploited somewhere. If there's any left. So. No, um, I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, the Uzumaki are just... They're great sealers, but they're not com combatants. They're not made for combat. Unless you're Naruto. I'm sure. real. What would also be pretty cool for Kishimoto to do is since he kind of made the Uzumaki clan get extinct because he allowed the Uchiha clan of Senju to join and jump them, basically, and kill them, and then take their bitches and be like, yeah, we're going to use you for reproduction so we can be broken as fuck, too. Yeah. But anyways, since they went that direction, what they could do is if there was like a Uzumaki, like whatever, that was like sitting somewhere low-key where nobody knew, you know what I mean? Since they were on the verge of extinction, basically... And they had one, like, on the side, and they started doing their things, okay, you know, whatever, generation shit, right, you know. And the next thing you know, like, one of their kind comes into Boruto, and that person just becomes a fucking interesting threat and starts fucking shit up and maybe wanting some vengeance. That would be a cool thing to get into yeah, as well. Yeah, that would be like, cool. Could, could, if they start giving a person like that a karma or whatever other lines of, you know, shit, whatever, blah, blah, that motherfucker's going to be strong because they were a, a threat, like so yeah. much of a threat to where both clans had to work together to beat them. Yeah, ex exactly. So, uh, there was a Maka dude yeah. we saw with Hashirama look really strong. Yeah, but most of them, like like uh, Hashirama's yeah, well. wife said, they're, most of them are fodder. She literally said that. They're fodder. That's what she said. Um, yeah, I think Joker is smarter than Batman from what I see in the movies and the few cartoons. The thing with Joker that makes him so special to Batman is... He exploits Batman's ideology. And what I mean by that is he exploits the very fact that Batman's not willing to kill. So what Joker will do is he'll go, you know, beyond the ends of the earth to fucking mentally and physically torment Batman with all the things he's done, knowing that Batman won't break. And he uses that to mentally torment Batman. Right? And it it that's why he's Batman's greatest foe. He's willing to fucking bomb the fucking elementary school and kill a bunch of kids just to fucking torment batman because you know batman can't fucking kill him he knows that yeah and um that's why he's one of batman's greatest foes on top of that he has nothing to lose he doesn't give a fuck if he dies harley dies he loses all his money he doesn't give a damn about any of that he is a man that, that has nothing to lose and like a great quote in the dark knight by alfred he says some guys don't care about anything else they just want to see the world burn that's that's joker incarnated he's just chaos the opposite of what batman represents batman represents justice to like the purest extent while conversely joker is the antithesis he is the pure form of chaos as pure as you can get in one human being that's joker that's why joker is such a fucking threat and that's why to me joker is the greatest villain of all time that's my opinion but um joker is a threat that batman constantly has to deal with and he knows that he actually respects joker as far as his ability he says, dude. This, you, yeah, he respects him so much where he'll he'll utilize him in yeah. certain missions. Like he, he only he can pull certain shit. Like in, in certain iterations, like in some of the an animations and even in the in some of the not the manga, the comic books. He's like, dude, you, like when he's talking to, to to others about Joker, he's like, you have no idea what the what you're fucking with. Like this guy does not give a fuck. Like he will. He's a monster for Batman. Bro, to he say killed Flash, but he yeah. had enough and wanted to. Superman and, and to start the whole Injustice story, yeah. he killed Flash instantly, bro. <laughs> like, for Batman to call someone a monster, you gotta be a fucking like a real evil entity. He's like, this guy's a fucking monster. Like, Batman is aware of what he is. Like, especially like, a good uh, comic book to read or a video game to play is Arkham Origins. 
or like Batman yep. Year One, when he first meets Joker, even he's shocked. Like, holy shit, dude, what the fuck is this? I've never, ever. He was starting to give up first yeah. in the Arkhamverse. Yeah, he was he's like, like I can't beat him, Alfred. Like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, it, he's like, I've never, ever dealt with a monster like this. Like, he was almost traumatized. Like, man, luckily, and Arkham meant... Batman is fucking a beast, bro. Yeah. Like, that man was over here one shot yeah, he... people, beating up a super soldier. Death that's crazy. basically Batman. Yeah, was, uh, Captain America on top of it, just, just shitting on him. It's funny because like, that Batman's a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's funny because in the Arkham Origins storyline, he fucking he beats all of his rogue gallery almost. He beats fucking, fights fucking Bane, the entire Sh- Shiva, <laughs> yeah. Deathstroke, Deadshot, all of them. And then he, he meets this guy for the first time. He's like, what in the fuck is this? Like, what what is yeah. this? That's how you know that you're all-time great, when you can actually leave an impression on Batman. There's not very he many really people does. that there's not very many people that can do that. Superman does that because of his character. Joker does that because of his evil. And there's only like a handful of people that have that impression on him, to be honest. So... It's fucking crazy. Yeah, no, he's just, yeah, no, he's just absolutely fucking crap. Like that was that was a feat itself. Like that Joker, not even though he's not he's not part of the main DC, yeah. but he's part of the Arkhamverse. Which I, I would have to do my homework and double check, but I actually do think the Arkhamverse is connected to uh, our main Batman verse too, as well. By the way, I don't think it's actually non canon, but yeah. Anyways, sure. um, what's it called? But even if I was wrong or right, that's not the point. Bottom line is that Joker was just so ridiculous to where the most cracked Batman we've seen besides the main Batman. Okay, he's over here just beating all his whole gallery, and it's like Spider Man going through his whole guy. And yeah, exactly. Spider Man, whenever he has to fight his whole gallery, he's getting his ass beat. Bro. Oh yeah, he gets like, he struggles a lot. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Like well, Batman, he's over here just like nope, beat you, beat you, beat you, outsmart you, beat you. You name it goes. And then next thing you know, like he comes across his final two threats, which is mainly Bane and, and Joker. Yep. Bane gave him a good run for his money, beat his ass, but then he came back for you know, and and he was able to uh, over overcome him. And, but Joker, nope, just immediately getting L's and once again just begging Alfred like, I don't, what, what do I do, bro? And then Alfred just kind of gives him the, the Naruto talk no jutsu, like, oh, don't give up, you got this, just keep yeah. fighting. You Alfred, know? And, Alfred, and goes, Alfred really so, hasn't talked to Batman, especially his first couple of years. He's like, dude, I know this is a new kind of evil you've never seen, but you have to endure. Yeah. You have to endure this. So you're the only one that could stop it right? and stop him. So that's why Joker's his greatest foe, for sure. Um, literally do you think batman who laughs is beating dark side yeah i mean yes, batman fucking absolutely. sold the multiverse um he would fuck dark he outsmarted side perpetua the goddess of the entire fucking yeah. multiverse that was set or that was given the responsibility to watch the multiverse and do whatever as long as she obeyed the rules and yada yada yeah exactly. he was able to outsmart her bro that has that's omnipresent you name it blah blah all this da- shit fucking so yeah I mean, he, he could he, dark he recruited all the Batmans, took Doctor Manhattan's powers, yeah. like fucking he beat Matos, who is literally an Spect- entity guy. Specter, every fucking everybody. Yeah, he's whipping everybody. Uh, who's your favorite, Robin? <laughs> my favorite, my personal favorite is probably Dick Grayson. My, oh no, Jason Todd actually. Then Dick Grayson. Who's your Who's the strongest, Robin? The one with the best feats uh, is probably Dick. But I think yeah, yep. I'm not I'm not aware yep. of uh, Damian Wayne, but I think he has the most potential. He is Bruce's son, after all. Um, yes. I think he has the most potential. Yeah, is in Damien's uh, hands, but the reason why Nightwing is just so dangerous is because he's like a combination of of all traits to where he's very very skilled in combat as well. He's yeah. like you know he's competitive with Batman, but Batman still wins. But he's competitive. And the fact that he's competitive is a very big deal. Exactly. Damien has this edge in hand to hand combat because once again, Damien's also willing to somehow take more extreme measures in killing. While Nightwing's like Batman, and he holds back on more in the incapacitation side of things. Yeah, exactly. So that's why you know he has that. But overall, Nightwing always wins because his intellect is greater than Damien. Yeah, and he'll use that it's when like the fight. A, yeah, it's like, like Damien. His it's almost like his arrogance is holding him back. Batman always talks about it. He's like you lack control. Like you you have yeah. potential, kid, but you lack control. Your own arrogance blinds you. That's why Dick beats your ass still because you might have my There's potential. No self- yeah, you might be my son, but you fight angry. I, I don't fight like that. I fight to win, to, to bring justice. You don't. That's the one thing that the League of Shadows taught you incorrectly, and I didn't take that We don't skip with prime me. Dan until Batman Beyond, where he does get those qualities and traits yeah, like Batman. Exactly. And he's a fucking monster to where he yeah. was 
washing with no suit remind you no suit or nothing yeah he's just slamming the batman beyond suit terry mcgiggin exactly who's a clone of, uh i think what a clone of bruce's son i don't remember yeah he's like a either way clone or some shit yeah yeah and the fact that he was just slamming with a suit remind you yeah and he has no suit that is ridiculous he's and that just skilled. goes to show he wasn't doing the stupid shit he's doing that we have in the dc yeah. verse command batman beyond is in the future Okay, he would be a monster, but the, yeah. you know. So once again, like Jay's saying, that's what's hindering him and why he's always losing to Jason and Nightwing. Exactly, you know? he, he just lacks the maturity that Batman has. That's what he needs. So, yeah. uh, Granny Chiu and Sakura versus Kakuzu, all five hearts. Granny Chiu and Sakura are probably they beat Sasori. They're beating Kakuzu. So, Kakuzu's not that special. Uh, do you think? And by the way, Sasori is stronger than Kakuzu. Uh, do you think they will uh, bring Sas uh, Sasuke back his other arm so he can get his Renegon back? This is the same answer I had with the Kuruma coming back. It would defeat the purpose of the nerfing and defeat the purpose of passing of the torch. So I, I don't think so. Um, maybe his arm. Maybe his arm. I don't see the Renegon coming back, though. Maybe his arm, though. That's a plausibility, possibility. But I don't think he's getting his Renegon back. I could be wrong. Maybe they do to even the odds of Sasuke's not fucking fodder. While helping Boruto survive against the rest of the world that thinks he's a terrorist. But we'll see. The Uzumaki dude we saw with... I think I already read that. I mean, at least let Sasuke go out at top strength. I agree. I want to see a noble death. I don't want to see him get fucking folded and die. Uh, who do you think should get another one-shot manga after Minato? There's a few good guys in mind. Sakumo, Hanzo, Fugaku, uh, Toby Rama. So you can see how he really died. <laughs> um, who else? Hashirama, I wouldn't mind. I mean, just to see how he went out. Um, yeah, those are my main, like the top guys. I have to mind. Sorry, I gotta go have a blessed day. Thanks for coming, Legend. Appreciate it, man. If I was Batman, I would have been happily killing Joker. Oh, dude, I would have. If I was Batman, I'd fucking kill Joker too, man. Fuck that. After him, like torturing two of my like two Robins that I that I literally raised and made warriors and him fucking shooting Barbara in the spine. I would have fucking murdered that fucking dude, man. I'll be more mad if they let Sasuke get a weak death. Yeah, exactly. What I think are the strongest ninja in the world uh, at each point. Hashirama. Here is in Minato, Obito. Yeah, Obito. Edo Hashirama. Jubito. Jupidara. Naruto. Jubidara again. Kage. Naruto again. Yeah, if you, uh, yeah. Um, Hashirama, Jubito. Yeah, that's a, a fair list. Well, yeah, folks, any questions you may have at all? Many, any, any questions at all, feel free. All I have left are miscellaneous questions, the ones that are not anime. But any questions you have at all, feel free to keep asking while I continue on with that. Um, someone asked thoughts on the NASA UFO report recently. So, the aliens, yeah. of, uh, them talking about all the aliens and stuff. So this is what I think about not only NASA, but a few months ago with the Pentagon releasing possibility of extraterrestrial life. Uh, I think this event and other recurrent, uh, recent current events that involve legitimate governmental agencies, mind you, only further increases the possibility that extraterrestrial, extraterrestrial life exists, which is quite the aspect of the universe to think about. If the reports here and by the Pentagon are correct as far as their theories on the possible extraterrestrial life present, then we, unfortunately as species, would be mere ants to this life form based on the preposterous technology that could be possibly available to them where they're literally flying th hundreds of thousands and possibly millions of miles in seconds to minutes, which is just unimaginably far out of reach for us currently. Um, so we'd be uh, at their mercy if they were hostile in any such said fashion. Um, if, again, the Pentagon's right on their theories and NASA's right with their information. Um, yeah, it's fucking insane. For sure. I think that extraterrestrial life does exist. Because I think the statistical probability that we're the only life form in a universe that's expanding with at least billions of galaxies. With billions to the billions to the billions of planets and there being no other life form is remotely impossible so i do think there is extraterrestrial life present somewhere regardless of yeah 
the characteristics. So yeah, I'm along the same boat. Um, it's really interesting what's going on because they even have people as far as to going into court and swearing over the Constitution and the Bible and everything that he, you know, supposedly lying or bullshitting or whatever. Yeah. Um, and basically saying, oh yeah, like no, we do have aliens. We've seen them. This and that, yada yada, the whole nine. And they finally decided to release some stuff. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. What's interesting to me is they're giving that information and they're saying, oh yeah, there's this and this and that. Yet they're not letting anyone see it. They're not actually presenting yeah. the information that they're saying you have and this. And and to me, that's a little weird because if you have this information or whatever, this and this and that, what are you hiding? What exactly. are you working on? What? Are you... There... And it's like, it's you know, so yeah. To uh, me, the, there's two hypotheses that come to mind as to why. One is they are hiding the truth to avoid public panic, and they rather keep empirical evidence of extraterrestrial life under wraps for various reasons, maybe <laughs> even politically motivated reasons. Maybe only certain countries have access to this, and maybe uh, governmental agencies are determining, like, you know what? Maybe these extraterrestrial lives aren't as smart as we think, but have access to technology, and maybe it'd be better if we keep it under wraps. The other one is that they're lying for some reason. Like it's uh, another po sort of politically motivated um, ploy. Plan. Yeah, like <laughs> to for maybe to stir panic or maybe to take off. A lot of people theorize, again, I'm not saying this is my theory, but a lot of people theorize that the reason for this is to stir away attention from the real problems, which is like the elections yeah. and things like that. That's not me. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. So I don't think I have that because that I'm a conspiracy theorist. That's just what I've heard. I think the former is more likely. I think they're hiding it because they don't want to stir panic. There's um, possible benefits to keeping it under wraps from other superpowers. Um, that's what I think. Yep, pros but, but we don't know. We don't know. You know. So yeah, we really, uh, we really don't know. And that's that's what's interesting about it and very intriguing. Yeah. And another thing I will say is, I'll say this at least: if there is aliens or whatever, they clearly have to not be an intellect like very super smart at least competently wise or clearly not much of a threat to where we obviously don't stand a chance otherwise we'd be in apocalypse or there'd be problems or we would clearly be seeing things right yeah you know so the way i see it either if they have come across something or whatever it is it's clearly something they can be able to experiment with or work with or this and this and what and they're and that's why they're able to contain it and not have to reveal it even though it can have x and y and z and could potentially become problematic as well yeah so it's either along those lines, which is a little bit scary to think about because either the aliens are just playing them and things are going to pop off, you know, and they and they're underestimating them, or two, okay, because remember, human nature, we're power hungry. We always want power. You know what I mean? Look, nukes, you name it, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, if they find some alien that has certain components or this and this and that, we're obviously going to want to obtain some profit or benefit from that, right? Yeah. Exactly. So when it comes down to it, you know, hopefully we're not being played, but either way. If we are, things are going to pop off and it's going to go from there. Or secondly, okay, the way it works, evolution is also a thing. Maybe that's all it takes is some time with these new aliens or species that are now here or whatever. Or, or better yet, what if an experiment goes wrong, you know, and then now we're having some fucking Marvel or DC scenario type shit, you know. Yeah. And then now we have all these problems and who knows what. So it's really interesting. So you have that line of direction of how things could potentially go with the information we have so far. Or two... Okay, it's just bullshit because let's be real. Like Jay was saying um, before, you know, which was something good to mention, you name it. If we ever really get an alien to travel across eons of fucking galaxies, you name it, to get all the way in the fucking universe and get to us, we're fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're fucked. We're ants to them, bro. Like, yeah. what do we do? You know, what? like, we're just their playthings, yeah. you know? Um, oh. Levi, <laughs> what's going on, Jay? What's been for a while? Do you think Hashirama beats Minato? I think. Sage Mode Hashirama be beats every iteration of Minato besides possibly KCM. Most likely. I think KCM Minato scales that high now to where he could be a threat. Yeah. Um, but going back to the alien thing, I think that here's what people got to put in pers into perspective. If the technology that the Pentagon and NASA is theorizing is as advanced as they say, and they're correct, maybe the alien's intellect is so beyond our own that they understand things that we can even remotely begin to comprehend. If they're able to move across large distances of the universe in minutes, who knows, even fucking seconds, be light year to your, to us, light years 
is a term due to our restrictions on what we can currently reproduce and what speeds we can hope to go at. If these guys are beyond that, then that means they know of certain levels of speed beyond light. They understand physics on a whole different level that we can't even hope to comprehend. <laughs> We're fucked. There is no compromise. Fucked, now, if these <laughs> aliens, if they deduce like, oh, you know what? Uh, they have some weird reason to why it would be beneficial to them. Oh, their uh, their souls will be good for our harvesting or whatever the fuck. They come here. We are yeah. fucked. There is no compromise. They would laugh at our fucking nukes. Be like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, we traveled eons here and you're shooting these little fucking missiles at us. You're a fucking joke. We're going to harvest you. You're fucked. Like, that, be that's like all... some animated reality type shit, bro. Yeah. Like, imagine, like, go or somebody coming out. What do we do? Nothing. We yeah. can't do anything. It, it would fucking be like, uh, it'd be like, Christopher Columbus or, or invincible invincible, you yeah. know, well, Omni man. And that, it, it would be that, like, maybe some shit like that. let's just say this, that interaction would put Christopher Columbus and the Europeans introducing themselves to the uh, native Americans to shame. Like, you know, the discrepancy in intellect, the discrepancy in technology mm-hmm. there that would put, fucking be put to shame. If the aliens are that advanced, we'd be fucking stupid ass fucking, Cavemen with sticks compared to them, they'd be like, "What in the fuck is yeah. this shit? You're driving cars, bitch. We fucking they'd love be it. roasting them. Yeah, they'd be like, or, or bitch. Yet, they'd probably be so like intrigued on our species because we're just yeah. you know humans, right? They'll, they'll probably be like, you know what? Let's just play some games with them, bro. Like, let's yeah, just literally. have some fun. With them. They'd look at us like, you guys use cars to travel. We fucking teleport everywhere. You fucking retards. Like, we'd be fucked, man. We'd be fucking done for. So. Yeah. And what I was basically going with that is overall, that's why some people will come to certain conclusions and it's reasonable even like yeah. uh, crit- uh moist critical and whatnot because he's even talked about yeah. it as well where they're like they're like i don't believe it there's no way because if really we had it like we're, we're, we're just fucked you know there's no compromise there's no on the low this and that yada yada so the, once again we're just kind of putting everything on the table for you guys we're not saying all oh, definitely this is this there's no way for us to even know that yeah um but it, that that's basically what you're working with and that's the most reasonable possible ways is like i said what jay said with the political which is why they don't want to panic people yada 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 and all those variables it's either the option a or b what's it called um like the only other thing i can think of is you know uh it's the same thing like jay was saying as well originally um but you know it's more of like they just have way more control in the situation you know another thing you could also think of is let's say the aliens came down and they were way beyond us or whatever, but they came down on their ship and their ship went to shit and you know the resources are not there anymore and now they're stuck utilizing our resources. Oh yeah, that could also give give us the advantage and the edge because now they're technically fucked because they can't rely on their resources, and you know whatever blah blah. But either eventually that will backfire because if they came, there has to be more of them probably right. So that could be a problem. Or two, let's say some say ha- something happened to their planet and they were just trying to find another planet and they did, but now they're with us. That can also be another way possible to where they're they they are actually at our mercy because they don't have anything anymore. Yeah. It, so there can be scenarios, but we just don't know. You know. Yeah, it's like many things that we deem as to be revered and to be emphasized in our modern Western civilization. Who knows what what they revere? Morality. If they're so fucking advanced to where, let's say they're self sustaining, they don't need to eat, they don't need to do shit. There is no like things like morality, so- things like morality, things like politics. I feel like that would even be important to them, like hierarchical no, structures. Am- like, they would. Why would you care? They would look at us like know? fucking ants, like us experimenting on rats. Probably be like, dude, you guys are fucking like you guys or, are nothing. Yeah. Two more options. Two two more scenarios. Third, none of it's true and it's bullshit. Like where I was just saying because yeah. what you're saying or ants, whatever, blah blah. Or four, guess what? We're actually already fucked. We just don't know it. Oh, like, dude, who knows? Shit's going- yeah. They could be who knows? So, Maybe we're in the Matrix. So who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe they're so, fucking playing us right now. We could be like in a fucking. In yeah, their little, maybe they're we're like they're lo- they're outside looking into the bubble. They're like, look at these fucking retards fighting over this shit. Literally, fucking dumb motherfuckers. That could be or, like, or, very or, well. Look we're at just, these leagues on a podcast talking yeah, about us right literally, now. Literally, <laughs> you'd be fucking literally so fucking inferior that they're well, all playing us like a fucking fiddle. They'd be like, you know what? Throw some uh, alien ships in there. Let's see how they react. Like fucking who knows? Literally, uh, like fucking. <laughs> Where would the those aliens scale? It's basically like Brainiac, a Brainiac army. Yeah, yeah. they're just beyond. Yeah, they're just way Dark beyond side, us. Chill. Yeah, we'd be fucked, man. Um, I thought I forgot where I heard this analogy, but the amount that we search for alien life is comparable to scooping a cup of water in the volume of all the Earth's oceans when looking for fish. 
yeah, I'm sure NASA, Pen the Pentagon, the DOJ, and other maybe like Chinese governmental agencies, Russia's governmental agencies, like the superpowers, I'm sure they've looked in the sky because in our world, in Western civilization, there's always an arms race between superpowers. China, Russia, the United States, France, the, those, those countries are competing for superiority and for political and war power. Like they want dominance over the other superpowers. So I wouldn't be surprised if the United States, China, Russia, other superpowers have probably invested billions to who knows, maybe trillions of dollars in astronomy and their space exploration projects. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, similar to how they invest in, yeah, similar to how they invest in war, how they invest in their own uh, infrastructure, how they invest in technology. Yeah. It's all to win. That's what humanity is about. They want to win. So greedy. Yeah. And that's a really good point to bring up, Jay, because another thing you just gave a light bulb moment for what I can. They, uh, another thing, too, yeah. they could also be doing that to where let's say they are lying and it's bullshit. They could also be doing that to play a political play as like to be like, hey, we have some aliens, uh, Russia, China and you and you and you. So uh, back the fuck up. You know, we have things even beyond nukes and this and that. So uh, we ha we finally have the advantage out of yada and to kind of be like more of an intimidation and pressure tactics. Yeah, exactly. Kind of go those lines. And that's kind of effective in a way, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah. And that's good because we, we've seen that with technological advancements as well. Like going, going to the current movie that's is killing it in the, in the box office, Oppenheimer, um, the man that created the atomic bomb, if I'm not mistaken, he allowed the United States to gain like this power, like this, this, this intimidation factor because of the preposterous power that the United States presented in the, in the, in the world war with the bomb that he created. He even makes this crazy quote like, oh man, I just, I am death or some shit because he created this fucking preposterously powerful thing that was never even fathomed by most of humanity. Like something of that high AP, going back to power scaling, has never been seen to humans in human history. Man-made, of course. Maybe fucking, who knows, maybe humans saw like meteors and shit, but that's not man-made. As far as man-made <laughs> shit, Oppenheimer was like, like he said, he's like, I'm death. What I Look what I've created. I fucking created death. Like, so... If aliens are in, are in superpowers possessions, let's say they were able to like incapacitate an alien or some shit, they would use that as leverage. Maybe China and the United States are having problems, and China's like, you know what? We have alien technology. You're fucked. You think a nuke's going to kill us? We can absorb it now, <laughs> or some shit like that. That would be fucking crazy, man. That would be like an Oppenheimer event. Historical Imagine, event. Jay. <laughs> yeah, like China's like, we discovered nuclear absorption or some bullshit like that dude we'd be fucked man that'd be fucking crazy so aliens i think are fascinating and i think they're most likely real as well so yeah i uh, do think they're real as well well like i said we're just kind of playing devil's advocate yeah, yeah, and giving sure. some scenario, but yeah. only so much we have um but if we had to choose i do think they're real um the only other thing you can kind of do in a defense of arguing that oh it's not as of now or whatever some bullshit or maybe they're real in our universe, but but not on our planet or whatever. Yeah. Um, the only argument you can really use is, you know, well, we have billions and billions of people on our planet, right? And we have competitors like Russia, China, you name it, blah, blah. If we really have seen aliens and have aliens and we're admitting that, at least the U.S. is, okay, you're telling me not a single person has been able to expose that information. You're telling me anonymous, the world's in the most exactly. insane hack. Yeah. You know, blah, blah, like nobody has been able to get any of this. Exactly. It's just still on the lowest wraps, yada, yada, to where that can also be a good way to kind of maybe argue that it's probably bullshit, yada, yada, because let's be real. Come on, let's be real. Russia, China, and all these other people, they would definitely be desperate. If they're now hearing that the U.S. somehow has aliens and this and that, yada, yada, you best believe they're going to try to do some shit on the low. Yeah. You know I mean, like, look at Naruto for an example. Whenever people have certain power aspects or dynamics, they become, you know, a scared. They want to figure out ways to protect themselves, right? Yeah, it's a natural exactly. instinct. It's like the fucking... Not, crossing like, borders, really, yeah. you know, like the cloud village to the Hidden Leaf, where they try to, you know, get steal the Balkagon. Then you name it and blah, blah. So it would be very similar, basically, is where I'm getting at, to where if we have power, they obviously want to think, look at nukes. We get nukes, now everybody else wants nukes, and they get them, right? Yep. It's the same shit. So yeah. you're, t you're telling me nobody has been able to get anything or, or steal something or release something or expose or news people or reporters and yada yada or better, better yet, the anonymous that is always exposing people, yeah. you know, like, so it's interesting. Yeah, it's exactly. Really interesting. And to quote uh, fucking Vision from Avengers, he said a really good quote when they were talking about the Avengers power. He's like, power invites 
challenge. It invites threats. With uh, with our power, will inevitably lead to challenge and threats that try to bring us down. So it's the same thing with, uh, you know, superpowers in the real world. The United States, China, Russia, they know that power will invite challenge. And if they're hiding, you know, a very powerful power, that will avoid challenge. And maybe you know, if if aliens are real, that could be a reason why. But like you said. There's no way to establish yeah. credibility, whether it's one way or the other. So we just don't know. Yeah. You know, we we would need a revelation to know. They're real. Like let's yeah. say even if, even if they weren't on an Earth, I do think they are out there. Let's be real. It's yeah. the universe. Make it as unique. There's just no way. I refuse to believe that. I agree. Two, yeah. um, two. If as for me to give an answer, whether if they are on an Earth too, I'm be honest. You know, if I had a pick, I'd say they probably are. You know, what I mean, they probably are. And, you know, U.S. is doing whatever they're doing behind the scenes for X, Y reasons, whatever. But at least, thankfully, you know, these aliens that they may have right now are clearly not competent or enough of a threat to where we clearly would be fucked or be a contentious war. You know what exactly. I mean? Because obviously it, that, that's blatantly there because otherwise we'd be seeing it. So yeah. I do think we have, have control currently and we do have it. And obviously the U.S. isn't going to show whatever because they're going to use that as contingency plans to combat against people like China and Russia, et cetera. And so... I do think, for one, they are out there, and two, we probably do have it. U.S. is just keeping on the ropes for many pros, which makes sense logically and even psychologically as well um, when it comes to war and power and you name it, and that's all we have. So, yeah, exactly. You know? So to- maybe they're pulling with Toby and their masterminds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> what's the first superpower any of you would have if you could? Uh, superpower? Probably super speed. That would be a great one. I can go back in time. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I could phase through shit like Flash. Um, yeah. I could literally slow down time because I'm so goddamn fast. Uh, yep. Yeah, probably super speed. If you want to just pissed off one day and you're like, you know what? I don't like this life. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> just go back in time. Yeah, fucking you yep. don't like somebody. You know what? I'm going to go back to the point they were born. Fuck this. Let's go back in time. Yep. Fucking, uh, even. Look at reverse. He didn't give a damn. He just yeah. broke all the rules. He, he's like, you know what? I'm going to just do whatever I want. Nobody could really do anything unless you're Dr. Manhattan or omnipotent. Yeah. To be like, fuck literally. you. <laughs> Fucking literally. Batman. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, so. telepath- telepathy for me. That's a good one. Uh, there are good ones. I would personally, without a doubt, go for teleportation. The ability to phase through shit. I like Abuto. Yeah. Jay, how would you argue against the stance that murder is never justifiable? Self-defense or protecting others excluded? Also, besides self-defense or protecting others, excluded, how would I argue that? Um, now, if I had to sort of not be a nihilist, but I would have to argue from a more morally gray standpoint, I would argue that humans are inherently tribal, and that is an inevitable aspect of humanity that cannot be disregarded or avoided. Hence... War is necessary to mitigate the monopoly from any from any such said tribe, and death is necessary for that. I don't believe that. You're asking me to argue for it. This is how I would argue for it. So murder is necessary to mitigate the monopolization of any such said tribe. In today's world, there it's countries: China, the United States, Russia. Um, death is a deterrent to monopolization. Um, because with monopolization comes the Hitler idea. Hitler's idea was, it sounds fucked up, this is what he called it, he called it ethnic cleansing, which is fucking disgusting. His idea yeah. was to create one race, right? It was like blonde, blue eyes, all the fucking racist shit he came up with. And death is what stopped it. Fucking the United States had to go into fucking Germany and fucking exterminate, exterminate him and, and the enemies that were with Hitler. Right, so war was necessary to avoid this fucking tyrannical piece of shit doing what he wanted to do. So that was, that's how I'd argue against murder, um, if it's not self-defense or protecting others. I guess technically you could argue it's protecting humanity, but it's not technically protecting individuals or self-defense. Um, it's a necessary evil, I guess you could say, kind of like the moderate route. Moderate is a similar ideology. It's a necessary evil. Um, that's a, again. That's me arguing for it. That's not. That doesn't mean I agree with it. To me, de- murder should not exist. You know, but that's we live in the real world. So, um, favorite football team, the Ravens. 
because OBJ is on there, and OBJ is my favorite player. Peyton Manning retired, so the Broncos are no longer my favorite team. That was years ago. I was a kid. It's OBJ. Hopefully the Ravens do well with Lamar. And favorite football player? How can I answer that? OBJ. Yeah. But yeah, man, morality is uh, one of the most touchy subjects in the realm of intellectual discussion. Um, especially when you get down to the morally gray aspects. Murder is a universally like accepted concept that is deemed as unrighteous for most cases, unless, like you said, it's self-defense or protecting your house or others, which is morally justifiable and necessary to defend your tribe. Um, but yeah, I guess in a way, I kind of did argue protecting others. Because um, besides that, murder should never be the answer. You know, murder eliminates the other party's right to choose. You're eliminating their life, right? So they can no longer act on their free will. Their free will is gone. So that's the best way I could argue it, I guess, the way they argued it. So it's a little dark, though, some dark shit, but. Oh. Uh, but yeah, folks, any questions you may have? Any at all? I think that's all the questions that were pre-established. That's all the questions I had. Any questions you have, folks? IRL, like you said, I enjoy IRL hey, questions. I don't think I can hear me. I hear you now. Yeah, yeah you can hear me now? All right, yeah, my yeah. bad, bro. Very good. Um, yeah, what, what I was saying uh, to add on to that is uh, fucking the purge. You know what I mean? Like, oh, shit. That shit. Imagine if it was a legit thing where, like, oh, God. murder is it. Because cause that was, like, a, it was an interesting. It was an interesting thing. It was a political um uh, the, the economy that they're kind of utilizing and whatnot, and they're like, you know what? To reduce, you know, this and this and crime and blah blah and yada yada, this will help out and blah blah, and let this let people be what they want to do, right? And this yeah. way, you know, like you get the whole uh, point of it, right? Yeah, yeah. That was their uh -huh. analysis of pros and cons or whatever. How do well, what do you feel on that though? The you know, purge, like if there was if that was purge type thing. I think that the purge is a way to. This is a way. It seems that the governmental agencies justified it. They said the purge is a way to purge malicious intent to purge rivalry to, to to purge tension amongst others um i definitely yeah. think it's malicious and extremely moral like morally apprehensible yeah. for sure yeah um absolutely it's certainly not a way to to mitigate like some hitler problems. shit bro <laughs> yeah it's literally like some fucking fucking gladiator shit just like in the modern world like oh you guys sure, are i get i get Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is the fucking governmental agencies would say you can't kill governmental personnel. Like, oh, so you're excluding yourself? So yeah, literally, is... that's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so, so this is just a game to you. You just want to see fucking people murder each other for your fucking entertainment? Piece of shit. And that's why they they went after the governmental people. And the I think it was like Purge two or three. They started going after like the fucking governor or whoever the fuck they were like protecting. People were like, fuck these people. We're gonna kill them too. So it was like. Just the entertainment to the higher ups, almost like communism in a way. It's like, oh, you guys all, are, you all have the equal right to kill each other, but you know, us, the 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 top bureaucrats, are immune. Like, no, fuck that. That's communism. Um, either way, it's morally irreprehensible. I think it's disgusting. Not a way to mitigate anything. Um, they're justify the way, like I said, the way they're justifying it. It's like, oh, we have to. Uh, limit the population so there's more resources uh, by people killing each other there's more resources there's more space that's just a very uh, poor premise to me it, it, it literally tries to negate morality which it really it fails really badly at doing um, yeah that's fucking sad so speaking of the purge have you seen the TV series I, have, I haven't seen the TV series I need to check that out actually I know there is a TV series I just haven't watched it uh, what not yeah no I've never yeah. yeah. It sounds that sounds dope though. I need to check that out. Uh what Naruto character would be the first to get banned on Twitter? Toby Rama. He'd be saying ra he'd be saying <laughs> racist Rama, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he, the, he, the, the, the moment he sees uh Orochimaru with Sasuke, he's like, Of course you have a scoundrel with you. Yeah, he'd be like, fuck the Uchiha. <laughs> like immediately like just discriminate. Yeah. He'd be like, fuck the Uchiha and the fucking Elon Literally. Musk Elon Musk would be like, That's racist, you're you're banned. Sorry. Or fucking uh, who else? Fucking uh Heat on. Hanzo. Hanzo, yeah, fuck it. would be another one. Uh, he, yeah, Hanzo, uh, Donzo as well. Oh, fucking guy. Donzo. Uh, Heat on. Mar, obviously. Oh, really, like Mar, Hitler. He'd be a fucking, like, damn near a fucking pedo version of Hitler. Yep. 
Mariah yeah. as well because of him being a perv. He'd be a uh, sexual predator already. Oh, yeah, he'd be a sexual predator. Fucking, um, <laughs> he'd on would be like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And she's like making death threats on Twitter. <laughs> Um, it's like join my cult today. Uh, subscribe to my cult. There's some bullshit like that yep. on Twitter. Um, who else? Kakuzu would be a think. fucking Kaku, Kakuzu would be a scammer online. He'd be a scammer. He's like, I want that bag and shit. He'd be trying to scam people and shit. So Kakuzu would get banned probably for scamming. Um, who else is fucking? Moderator would be. He'd be cool. I don't think he'd get banned. Uh. Who else? Ishki, I guess. Um, Kaga's fucking retarded. She wouldn't even know what to write. Um, she's just retard. Um, yeah, mostly those guys. Or tomorrow would be friends with Seth the Pet. <laughs> yeah, they'd be friends. <laughs> they would be <laughs> friends, bro. Or tomorrow's like, hey, did you uh, talk to that kid yesterday? He's like, yeah. Fucking nasty ass shit. Jay, at least yeah, knows- another. Th- to, uh, uh, yeah, like I think you said it already, but like Kakuzu, him for sure as well, because he's over here like trying to steal, stealing people's hearts and then like trading people for balance. He's like a hitman, basically. Yeah, he'd be a fucking like scammer hitman or some shit. Yeah. Uh, Jay, at least knows agree with you that Itachi beats pain. Oh, really? He thinks that. I just agree with that. That's cool. Uh, well, yeah, because he th- and Itachi and Obudo are like beyond, but yeah, he thinks pain and Minotaur fucking fought him. <laughs> <laughs> It makes crazy. no fucking sense. Yeah. But yeah, that's why. Soccer would be simping over all the bad boys. Dude, that bitch would have an OnlyFans, for sure. As an adult, she'd have an OnlyFans. But she'd be simping over fucking Sasuke at the same time. She's like, he doesn't want me. I'm like, bitch, you're a grown woman with oh, OnlyFans, yeah. bitch. Yeah. That's why she, he doesn't Sakura want you. Sakura would dead ass. Yeah, she would do yeah. that shit. Ido would do it too, actually. She has oh, the personality ass. and everything. Bro, Yo, all the way. She'd have a fucking OnlyFans with her tits out and shit. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. No, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Inata, she, she would be the traditional wife uh, yeah, yeah, that we have now. She's just very loyal. You know, she's obsessive and weird, but she'd just be loyal to the man. Yeah, she'd be yada, yada. loyal as hell. She'd be a wife for sure. Um, yeah. Tsunade would probably. Nah, Tsunade is not a thought. She'd just be like chilling. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. she was, she just had bad like gambling habits. But yeah, no, she's in it for the like tra- just traditionalism relationship long haul as well. Yeah. So Naruto would be a funny troll. Yeah, he would be. He'd be dope on Twitter. You know, would be dope as fuck on Twitter. Probably like Mike guy. Mike guy would be dope. I'm gonna be real. If we had anyone from the uh, like I know we're talking about a bunch of Naruto characters that would immediately be dealt with and yada. I'm gonna be honest though. Like, if we're including like Naruto characters that are on our world. And, like, who we could, like, let's say, like, they're all, like, equal in stats and they only have their abilities, right? So they're equal yeah. stats to us humans, but they only have their abilities. i am be honest. I think the most dangerous person would be Pain and Madara and Obito. Oh, like, God. what the fuck do we do to them, bro? <laughs> and obviously fuck. it's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're we're gonna, fucked. They would take over the world and rule us all. Fuck that. Even yeah. even if they are equal in speed and you name it, their jutsus and power is ridiculous, yeah, bro. Yeah, we'd all be fucked. I mean, no, Itachi would just be Genji. Like, water could cut fucking mountains in half, bro, yeah. and shit. Fuck that shit. That's EMS. Yeah. Naruto would be a troll. Naruto would be a troll. Rock Lee would be a troll. Um, yeah. Gara would probably be in a mental rehab, especially at Part 1 Gara. Um, Rock yeah. Lee would probably join the UFC or some shit, oh, to be honest shit. with you, though. <laughs> yeah. He'd be in the UFC at like fucking eighteen. He fucking... loves his taijutsu. Yeah. yeah, my guy would be like a Muay Thai guy or in the UFC. Yeah, um, <laughs> fucking Kakashi would be like Kakashi would probably be like an FBI agent or yeah. maybe like a fucking like a police guy or something. Yeah, he'd be I like can a see him doing guy. that. Fucking Sasuke would probably yeah. be he'd be like a fucking rebellious kid, but grow up to be like a cop or some shit. Yeah, he'd fucking yeah. be one of those guys. Itachi <laughs> would be a goddamn fucking CIA agent probably. Minato. Yeah. Yeah, those guys would be fucking killing shit. Minato would probably be the president of the United States, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Minato's a fucking dog, man. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Uh, like, you just want to have a role, you know what I mean? Because that's his whole thing, to be, like, the leader for, you know? Yeah. He'd try, he'd try to be the president of the United States and then utilize his power to, like, make the world a better place. Yeah, literally. And Naruto would grow up and run for... He'd probably run for office, probably, eventually. Yeah. yeah he'd be dope as fuck, yeah. too. Uh, but, yeah, folks, any questions at all? Uh, I actually missed this question. Um, it was a combat sports question, so if you have any of those, someone asked me Francis Ngannou versus uh, Tyson Fury. That's happening in, I believe, uh, fucking December. So this, wow. is what I'll, this is what I'll say about that: Francis Ngannou, quite possibly the hardest hitting combat sports athlete we, we've ever seen. I actually think Deontay Wilder yeah. hits harder. I think he has better feats. 
uh, power scaling, going back to power scaling. But Francis Ngannou hits like a goddamn fucking freight train. So if he lands any shots on Tyson Fury's chin, face, anywhere on his face, he's going to sleep. But Tyson Fury is light years ahead of him in, in terms of boxing skill. Francis Ngannou is not a boxer. He's a UFC fighter trying to beat. Our, I think Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight of all time. I think skill-wise he is. Maybe not legacy-wise. Maybe that's still Ali. But skill-wise, I think Tyson's the best I've ever seen as far as heavyweights. Um, so I think Nganu has slightly better than a puncher's chance. I'm not saying Nganu's fucking ass with striking, but he's no boxer, man. Even in the UFC, he's not really known for that. He's, he throws fucking crazy shots. So I think Tyson Fury is going to dominate him for 12 rounds. And if Nganu gets lucky, he'll land a, a big shot to take him out, but I highly doubt it. If Deontay Wilder couldn't knock him out in three he fought him three fucking times he couldn't knock <laughs> fury out once and that motherfucker hits hard as fuck and he can box so no i yeah. think fury is gonna beat him um jiraiya would be a porn star <laughs> probably god uh, he'd be a <clears throat> porn star uh if my guy and rock lee are in the ufc i'm all for that i will pay to see their fights dude rock lee would be like uh <laughs> rock lee would be like fucking um like conor mcgregor my guy would be like yeah. Like Adesanya or some shit. Uh, Rikage versus Kisame. Oh, that's a good fight, actually. Um, the Rikage probably has greater speed. It all depends yeah. on that, how that plays out. If Rikage takes him lightly and he gets the water dome off, he's fucked. But if the Rikage yeah. is bloodlusted in V2, I don't see Kisame outspeeding that. Um, he'll probably behead him. Yeah, because yeah. the problem is, like, Kisame was barely able to react to V2 at V1. Exactly. Uh, yeah. He was equal to base B. And don't get me wrong, that is impressive in a sense. But base B is nowhere near V2 fucking Raikage. Nowhere. If anything, he'd be like on par V1 Raikage. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and like, and so basically what you're working with, if V1 and V2 can give him a run for his money and injure him severely, but since he has healing, that's why it doesn't matter. Um, and then he also just takes your chakra and power, whatever you throw, yeah. Um, and gets strong while you get weaker. So, like, he was just a hard counter for Killer B, unfortunately. But like Jay said, like, if he's in V1 and he's underestimating Kasame, then, yeah, he gets slammed. He's fucked. He's going to pull a B, and that's it, and, you know, whatever. And that's the only reason why, uh, debatably, even uh, B lost to begin with, because he technically wasn't allowed to go full Biju transformation because his comrades were there. He would have yeah, killed them. Exactly. Like, didn't. Um, so he could only go V two and V one, and that was that's easy mode for Kasami. He's all right, bet yeah, you lose then. So Kasami took advantage of that, and he was able to beat him, and that's kind of what you're working with. And with the, uh, I believe what it was the monkey, uh, fucking tail piece. He's like what four tails or three oh, tails? Four, no, four uh, tails. Four tails. Yeah, yeah. Go, son, yeah, Goku. He was able. Yeah. And obviously, full transformation would be allowed. You name it, blah blah. So we're not saying Kasami can't handle some full tail beast or whatever either. Um, cause with that, there is nobody near so meaning like it's, it's full, you know, free reign. Right. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like someone like the nine tails and eight tails, that's a whole other ballpark and Kasame is not dumb. And so he took advantage of that. So no matter what, in a con simple consensus, uh, like Jay said, V1, yeah, he could, he'll more than likely take it. It'll be too late before Raikage could even do anything. If he's a V2 immediately, it's, he's a speed blitz. He doesn't have Susano. He doesn't have anything remotely to prevent him from being killed in the spot. He doesn't have anything. Yeah. You know? Essentially, it's it's very circumstantial. It's very, it depends yeah. on the circumstances of the altercation. If Rekage is fucking bloodlusted and wants to eliminate Kisame for maybe beating his brother's ass, then Kisame's fucked. He's going to get blitzed and probably beheaded by the Larry or something. But if Kisame is being underestimated and he's like, all right, I'm a toy with this guy, and he uses the water dome, goes into shark form, and he's not in V2, Kisame's going to whip his ass and absorb his chakra and probably <laughs> kill him. Yeah. Jay, or if it's like in character fight potentially where Raikage actually wants to try to get some intel where like B was. It depends on the timing too, you know yeah. what I mean? So let's say he's still looking for B or better yet, let's say he's just trying to get intel in the Akatsuki because all the villages act in that same nature to where they don't kill him immediately, right? You know, they're going to try to hold back to an extent or whatever. So if that is in play, then he's also fucked. If he's not willing to kill Kasama and be bloodlusted, he's just not winning that. Yeah, exactly. Know? He's going to have to have considerable resolve at that in that fight because if he doesn't, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to go well for him. So, in character... That's yeah. Because that man, he doesn't give a fuck. He just kills people. <laughs> yeah, in, in character... Uh, Ricardo is a hothead in character for the most part. Yeah, um, true. So that is part, true. I don't think he'll be like, oh, I'm just going to toy with this guy. I don't think so. 
Um, no. Yeah, it's very circumstantial. So. Um, very interesting. Yeah. What Naruto character do you think has the craziest search history? Probably Jiraiya. Searching Jiraiya, like weird yeah. Shit. Or if it's like criminal history, probably like Orochimaru searching weird shit. Like how to yeah, experiment uh, on... How to experiment on humans one on one or some bullshit on Google. He'd be on the dark web or some yeah, shit. He'd be yeah. The, yeah, he'd be on the dark web for sure. Him and fucking Don's would be in the dark web. He on. Yeah, and then he would be doing all the bad no no crap and so yeah. you know he'd be he just have a bunch of like porn history and shit. Oh yeah. yeah. Um Naruto might be a little sus maybe because he has his moments. Uh Konohama as well. Here is an actually surprising with all the perks. Fucking Orochimaru so he... and Hidon and be fucking Yep. That'd be some crazy shit. Yeah, literally. Uh, a hit he, on part of beating websites. Oh, god damn. Yeah, he'd get arrested for sure. Uh, do you guys read One Punch Man? Uh, no, I do want to read that eventually, though. Yeah, eventually. Well, I've only seen uh, the anime. The yeah, anime's great. I've seen so. some of the anime. Put some respect yeah. to Kisame's name. Kisame slows the entire verse, changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, Kisame, Kisame's a beast, man, for sure. But yeah. yeah even without his. And like, and not even at like, well, no, he was at full power. He just didn't have his weapon. But without his weapon, which is basically fifty percent of his strength reduced, yeah. like he was able to like give guy a run for his money, and guy exactly. had to go seventh gate. Just, like that's impressive. That's bro. really <laughs> impressive, man. Yeah, to make him go seventh gate, it's extremely impressive. If Naruto has to have a live action show, who do y'all see playing the important characters? That's a great question. Naruto, <laughs> who would be like a? It have to be a blonde kid, obviously. Who's a blonde actor? Nobody's blonde. That's yeah, the problem. Fucking nobody. I don't know any famous yeah, actors. Chris Hemsworth, kind of, but I don't. I can't oh, see Chris yeah, Hemsworth. He's just so like, big. He's way too fucking big to be Naruto. Yeah. <laughs> like a jacked fucking Naruto. Somebody would have to dye their hair and change their hairstyle, and they would have to have good acting skills. That's yeah. what we need to pick up. Yeah, yeah it, looks wise. It's... Yeah, especially if it's like a part one Naruto. They'd have to pick like a really good kid actor. Uh, yeah. I don't even know any kid actors. Um, Madara. Oh, fuck, dude. I don't even know. That's fucking mm. hard. It'd be it, hard. It an actor like the guy that played Thanos, maybe get a wig on him. Oh, you know? that'd be dope. Like CGI. And then like, he's uses yeah, he uses yeah. acting with the moderate voice. Like I could see him doing it. That'd be that'd be um, a good one. Um, yeah, but and he, and he really likes to play villains, obviously. Yeah, so. Itachi. Fuck, man. Itachi. That would just have to be a, a really good actor. Like, um, now I'm not saying this who should be like, but somebody that has good acting skills, like Robert Downey Jr. You know, things yeah, like on that really, where they really, can like really good acting. Yeah. 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 I mean, as far as someone that looks like him, I don't even know, man. It's tough. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Nobody looks like these Naruto care. Let's be real. Like, yeah, nah. they really don't. Nah. Do the yeah. designs either CGI or they're gonna have to dress a certain way. But the acting's the most important component. So once again, we're gonna have to like be speaking based on the most high tier actors that we have out there for like the yeah. MCU exactly things like that. Yeah, exactly. For Star Wars too. Uh, so yeah. The same verse where Kakazu is in, he ain't selling shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Kakazu is omnipotent. It's true. Yes, <laughs> uh, that a book. Yep. Literally oh, she does. Uh, so. <laughs> where would Ambu Itachi with MS rank in the Akatsuki? He'd be like mid tier. I think he'd be above Hidon, obviously. Yeah, he'd still be above of data uh um, probably, Datara, yeah, probably Sasori. Because yeah, of his Genjutsu and everything. Like, because like, you got to think of it this way like, the Ambu Itachi compared to the Akasuke Itachi, the scaling really doesn't change drastically. Yeah. The only difference is Itachi's uh, usage with his Mingekyo shotting and when it comes to the abilities, and then you name it, and then probably eventually acquiring Susano. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, um, yeah, you know, yeah, so. He, he'd definitely be above Sasori. Kisame is only a contentious one if it's like a little. Like, fucking like he, he was threatening Obito, bro. Yeah, as the Ambu. Literally, like it wouldn't be that much different from, um, like Akatsuki Itachi. Uh, maybe he's not as strong. He, he, as, maybe he's not as strong as Kisame, but that even that's contentious. No, me. We can give him that. He yeah. he can immediately use that shit for whatever reason. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but but Amon, he still hasn't like done that yet, or not really aware. Yeah. Um, even though there's one argument for it, to where somehow, some way, Donzo was aware of that or whatever I mentioned it but then again the argument against that is that could have been when Jiraiya took the Amaterasu into his scroll and gave that to them for intel and that's how he was aware of it yeah exactly um so so we really don't so no matter what um the best way to stick to it and not only that that's why I say anime is important to watch and a lot of people don't you know understand that but it is because in the anime 
we actually get to see what happens right when he joins the Akatsuki. He uses the Moderatsu for the first time against uh, the third Mizukage, the yeah. three, the three tail, and there's no diffs him with yeah. uh, using the Moderatsu. He's like, oh shit, that's what these eyes do. Yeah, you know, so um, that's kind of like the best feel for Ambu Atachi is if you just watch the anime, you can just right there and then. But either way, uh, he can use Tsukiyomi bare minimum. Uh, Moderatsu, he just doesn't know. And Susano, I'm pretty sure Jay would agree. I- I'm not saying he can't whip Susano out because let's be real, he is a prodigy. Yeah. And if like, you know, if Madara can do it, or better yet, even Sasuke can do it, you know, on the spot, I don't see why Itachi wouldn't yeah, be any exactly. more better. Yeah. So yeah. I do think he can tap into Susano, just not into the full form he showed um, in the war arc and towards the end of the Sasuke. Fight. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah, because yeah, Itachi, so, I mean, Sasuke at like 15 or however old he was at the Five Kage Summit, he was already using it. So, yeah, it's more than likely that 14 year old Itachi could, 14 year old Itachi can already do it. So, yeah, and he could probably do it like to like further advanced stages right off yeah. the whip, too. Not, I would say full, like immediately, but just, probably like yeah. way. Than he was more. Wait, he was just more advanced than Sasuke. He just evolved. Or, quicker. or the yeah. real Jay. I'm pretty sure you would agree too. Atachi really was that fucking guy. He probably could do the 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 highest transformation he go, except for a perfect Susano. You know. Yeah. I mean, at, at least the skeleton. At least. Yeah. At least yeah, like the exactly. full skeleton. At least. Um, you know. The Rock would be a good Rikage. That wouldn't be a bad skit casting, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. He right. Would just, he would just need a fucking wig, but yeah. Uh. Yep. Dedoro went to the leaf instead of pain. Could he destroy the leaf? Fuck no. Against fucking Sage Mode Naruto? He could just ass beat. He would cause a lot of casualties and damage, but uh. but the, pro- the the only thing is, like, think of it this way. If Sonate could use her summoning to cushion what pain did, and mind you, he was bloodlusted at t- that point. He didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. Pain still destroyed the whole village, and he killed a lot of people with that as well, but she she helped, right? If she can do that with him, she could do a, imagine, even more better against, you know. Imagine how so. Kakashi would do. Kakashi almost sniped Datara when he fa- <laughs> barely <laughs> learned MS. Humbly. Imagine what he would do now. Yeah. He'd probably kill him himself. Yeah, he would. Just, oh. Yeah, like I don't. I don't think that doesn't matter. Like if we were really being honest, and let's say Datara pulls up, you know, by himself to the Hidden Leaf to capture the Nine Tails, right? And let's say for some weird reasons the story's not that there either. I'll be honest with you. If it's around that point in time where it's like pain arc, basically. Around that point in time, Kakashi just kills him immediately. I'm just gonna be real with you. He That's just calmly, calmly snipes him. Yeah, he could. Is yeah. a very good chance he'd snipe him. Like he's much better with it. Adara um, would somehow have to get through the barrier somehow without being known, which I don't think would be possible because he would have to acquire that information from Itachi, and Itachi's not gonna give that because he's a spy. Um, and most importantly, Obito can't really do help or interfere because he made a deal with Itachi, so he's not helping. You know what I mean? And yada yada. So uh, Data is still on his own, basically. And he has no way to not be undetected. But either way, let's remove that. Let's say he's not detected. And he does like what he did in the Sand Village. And he tries to drop that, that big bomb to cause panic and kill and whatever you name it. Like, sure, that'll do a, a good amount of damage. But it's not going to kill everybody. I There's think, still going to be the big boy that deal with him. I you think know? the AP of that, it's arguable whether it would be enough to like literally level the entire leaf. It's arguable. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you would level the leaf. No, yeah. I don't think so. No, it's it's arguable. Like, C, is C he... zero for sure, but that would kill himself yeah. if he did that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. C zero, but yeah, he wouldn't do that in character. Yeah, because that, <laughs> so... that would just kill himself, and then that'd be it. Yeah. So yeah, Kakashi would be a threat to him. That's for sure. Yeah. Overall, yeah. like if it legitimately happened, I'm I don't give a fuck. He's getting detected. There's just no way for him not to get detected from that barrier. Yeah. Bro. He doesn't have the. And it... Yeah. He's able to like to immediately detect the most like troublesome pain out of all. You know what I mean? You're telling me he's not going to be able to find data? Like, come on now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Kakashi's a hard, would be a threat with his lightning being able to hard counter. Yeah, yeah hard counter. The Conley. Yeah. Um, and data is near pain, and the fact that Kakashi was at least able to hold off pain. Okay, he would just stomp him. Yeah. He would just beat his ass. <laughs> uh, imagine Ryan Reynolds as Jiraiya <laughs> with a wig. Uh, that'd be an interesting casting. They would find a porn star with a nice rock to play Tsunade. I mean, shit, they would have to. Um, uh, which chapters are you on on JJK? I'm on chapter 173 now. So I'm about 60 chapters away to being caught up. 
to be fair, they could still get a really good female actor for Sonata, and all they have to do is just do CGI and make her boobs bigger. But, oh, shit. You know. 50 bucks from YC Project. Appreciate that, man. No ice. Go to today, man. Go to Appreciate that, man. Everything is go to yeah. Yeah, if you have any questions, though, brother, feel free. I know you didn't ask one in the chat, in the super chat, but I got you. Um, yeah, as always, a reminder: I do apologize ahead, guys. Sorry for not being here earlier. I had some shit come up, unfortunately. So yeah, and next week we should have the whole gang back. I think Shinobi as well should be yes. back. So yep. that'd be dope. But I already told them that uh, sometime in September we're gonna have Clyde on. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's gonna be good as hell. We're gonna have some lit ass bleach conversations. And some lit ass. That's gonna be all you got yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, and some lit ass uh, UFC. He's really good at UFC content too. So, oh, nice. Okay, yeah, so he's really good. And the only train I'm joining on is the hype for Vaster Lord Ichigo and, <laughs> and oh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I just I only got all the way from all of that to eventually Ichigo having his final fight with Eisen. That's as far as I ever got. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Exactly. It, it the Iranka arc. I hear even from guys that have finished Bleach, like that's always like the goaded arc. A lot of Bleach guys, are like yeah, the rank arc is the is the goaded arc of Bleach. Like it was so good, man. Yeah. Just all like the it was all the Soul uh, Reaper people, you know, from oh, like man. the rankings. Like damn it, it was then so seeing good. Each, and seeing the Espada coming into it and seeing all that, that was so. Good. It was just it was just all great, bro. Yeah, man, <laughs> that was fucking goaded. But yeah, thanks again, proud you for the several donations, man. Fucking goat for sure. You deserve an extra one of these for sure, man. Appreciate that. I might rewatch it to be honest, Jay. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking fucking good, man. I I might just rewatch it too. It's it's fucking goaded to be honest. Um, that good. Even Swag Kage was like they had the best like music as oh, well. Oh, dude, the music Even- is so good. Yeah, the OSTs, <laughs> dude, they're fucking. Yeah, it's like this like Latin American vibe music, but it's like mm-hmm. it's it has like a beat to it. It's like heat. That's really really exactly. Good. Yeah, I, I really like it. Like, um, it was the sound to a door or whatever whenever each goes getting his ass beat yeah exactly <laughs> or like after he gets his ass whooped and like the sad music's playing it's really interesting yeah. setting i mean is it's supposed to make like the audience like really sad like oh no this is getting bad exactly. um but like but it's always said as a comedy reference because let's be real every time that song played you know he was getting he's about to get his ass beat. yeah and it was crazy was the one one of the coldest moments in anime was ichigo's like main theme song was playing at the beginning of Soul Society arc, and then he tries to blitz Aizen, and Aizen beats the shit out of him in two seconds, and the music stops playing. He's like, you're a fucking <laughs> joke. I was like, dude, no one does that to Ichigo. Nobody. It was like an Itachi moment, bro, when yeah. he came to the village, Ashi and all of them. <laughs> yeah, like literally, usually when Ichigo's music plays, it's like, all right, he's about to fucking kick some ass, but then he tries to blitz Aizen, and Aizen's like, bitch, fucking, sw- fucking swatted him. It was Itachi, bro. Like, yeah. Itachi's... It- plays like turn you know it gets, it's getting all hype he's trying to fight itachi tachi immediately deals with him and then just like then the music goes away and then sukiyomi bam done with literally him. literally i was like what the fuck man that's how you know aizen was that guy right away um, literally bro when you get to the latest 10 uh, or so chapters into jjk so 20 uh 223 onwards you would love it because that's all gojo hype that's probably i'm guessing when the sukuna gojo fight happens oh yeah i need to get there asap that's why i've been reading so much i read like 30 chapters a day that ass. Yeah, I want to so, yeah. you know yet, Jay? From what I've heard from it so far, is and I could be wrong, guys. So don't take me on this. Um, is that everybody's being dishonest and that Gojo is still the strongest or whatever? But there, there's like some rap people out there that are saying Sukuna is now greater or some shit. Oh, so I don't shit. know if that's true. Yeah, I'm that's what to, I've been hearing. I'm about to catch up quick and like analyze that shit quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Seijimo Naruto versus Siki Tachi. Uh, even Seki Tachi's a uh, threat, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Hitachi would slam because of Genjutsu. Yeah, yeah Genjutsu problem. would be the biggest threat. Even though, even Kuroma can't break him out of some of those. Um, like, you... Unless all and mom pause there, then sure, obviously they could help and like, get him out, but the problem is he could Genjutsu all fucking three of them. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> fucking just fold all their shit. Uh, what's the strongest yeah. form of Sasuke and Naruto that like, Kisame can be? Uh, the most powerful version Kisame could probably beat of Sasuke, maybe five Kage summon Sasuke, maybe. Um, he might still be able to beat him, but even he scales to the Rekage, Kage at least in V one. Yeah. Um, probably him. Um, probably. You said it was Kisame versus what, five Kage summon Sasuke. Yeah, like he's, what's the strongest form of Sasuke and Naruto that Kisame can beat? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah, like the best you can really say is like, you know, all versions, um, like Taka, depending on how you analyze it, that could be contentious in a way. But, but basically, I would say like just a gas Kasami up a little bit more. I'd say all the way through to Taka, but once it gets to like five Kogi Summit Sasuke, and if he's at least like at full potential and power, then yeah, I'd say him all day because. Like, Asami kind of reaches his limit when Atachi is with the MS. You know what I mean? And yeah. it'd be the same con Asuke. Like, he just can't fuck with the MS. Yeah, you know? it, that's, like, the last chance he has. Maybe he beats Asuke. Uh, but after that, yeah. he doesn't beat any of them. EMS would slap him, and like the rest would beat his ass. But, but, but I agree with you as well, Jay. Like, yeah. I, I could even see Asami beating even five Kage Summit. But, yeah, if he know, can do, he's if not, he, if, if he No, he's blood, not built in the right circumstances, we get Blitz Asuka, yeah. Um, yeah. But Naruto, uh, Sage Mode? And Sasuke would have to be as well, because Susano is Chalker as well. Yeah, So he could still absorb, like, a lot of people th like have a misconception and think Susano's are not Chalker or some shit, or can suffer the same penalty. No, it's the same shit. It's Chalker. It can yeah, be so absorbed as well. Genjutsu, um, Amaterasu, things like that would be Sasuke's best yeah, he, tools. Yeah, he would have to be yeah. super quick in beating him, use yeah. his intelligence, and realize, hey, like he's absorbing my Chakra. You know, the sword was able to go through my Susano and take Chakra, whatever. I need to be smart. If I don't Genjutsu and kill him with Amaterasu, then that's it. It's over. You like, know? Uh, so. Yeah, like the fucking... Samahata would probably not want to absorb on Tarasa because it would burn and it. He transforms. He's probably fucked as well. Yeah. He does the water prison. Like, yeah, yeah, he's so going, he's, like, yeah, he's going blind. Be in his yeah. yeah, he's going to be in this A game. <clears throat> Naruto, probably Sage Mode. is probably the best Naruto Sakisama could be. Um, that's arguable as well. Yeah, it's after, arguable. Yep. After that, I mean, we saw what happened. Casey and Naruto blitzed his shit. That was fatigued Kisame, but he but, fucked Like, Sage Mode Naruto, he... He would definitely destroy Kasame in hand to hand. Like oh, hand if Kasame hand, yeah. tries to do what be, he's beating his ass. But then what's gonna happen is like Kasame's not an idiot either. You know, I mean he's not just gonna go in there balls deep and then just get one shot. You know, he's yeah. he's an Akatsuki member for a reason and a, and almost to the top tier. So the way it would go is, you know, he tests the water, he'll get he'll get beat up and he's like, Okay, you know, that's where you know, whatever. He's gonna start strategizing using ranged ninjutsu, blah blah, blah maybe even transform and just go from there and absorb his shit and that's it, you know? Yeah. GG. Exactly. I think the only problem would be how would Sage would interact with Kisame, get absorbing it. Um yeah, he would have to be careful with that, yeah, because that could actually F him over because we saw that with the path of pain. So Yeah. Um and like the way I could see it though is like let's say because which Naruto does this in character, if he throws a rising shuriken, which he probably will at Kasame. Okay, and he does that. Um, all Kasame has to do is do water style shark bomb. He absorbs that shit, and Nar what, is, what the fuck does Naruto do? He had to dodge it, and if he can't dodge it, he's done. Yeah, he's fucked. <laughs> so know? yeah, that, that's probably the best Naruto Kasame can be. After that, he gets folded by the rest. Yeah. Um, could Gotex beat Kid Buu? Yeah, no. I, I think Gotex lost to Super Buu. So no. Um, yeah. Does Genjutsu work on Sasori? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, he has a human component still. He even yeah. he even admits it verbatim. He's like, I'm not fully puppet. I wish I, I was, but I do have one weakness still. Like he has a, yeah, he has like part. some. He has a chakra yeah. network, so yeah. yeah. He still has chakra network. He has that heart component. So as long as you have that, then yeah, he could still be hit by Genju too. Yeah. Um, if he didn't have the chakra network with that heart piece, then and he was fully a puppet that he wanted to desire to be this way he wouldn't have those weaknesses like a human would then yeah then he, then you can't get him. yeah so. exactly um let's see does goten goten solo the utsutsukis goten hmm. goten oh that's that's the other uh goku looking kid yeah, that's the he's over, he's over to go super saiyan as a child i haven't read up on goten in a long ass time um yeah. i would say he might struggle with like Ishiki. I don't know if he, how strong Goten exactly is. I need to like reach his that. history, but if he's not able to body current Goten is not able to body like super perfect cell, then even Ishiki would whip him. So baby Broly versus the Otsutsukis. <laughs> baby Broly, he probably can rage too. I slam all of them. Um, but yeah, uh, Broly is a child. It's children. Super Saiyan seem like inhibited. You don't see like little kids unless it's Goten going like Super Saiyan. Um, Broly is an exception. 
if it's like baby infant Broly now, but if it's even like 10 year old Broly, maybe then, man, maybe even then he's raging. You know, he is a legendary Super Saiyan. So, yeah. Well, would you do a ranking yeah, video? Bro. Would you do Hollywood a Slam? Yeah. Would you do a ranking video of the special great sorcerers ranked from weakest to strongest? Yeah, dude, as soon as I conclude JJK, I will certainly be making videos. And also, I do custom yep. videos. So if um, <laughs> if anyone wants to like may, want me to make a custom video on JJK as well, I do those as well. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be making a content for JJK, for sure. Um, That'd be fun. Now you don't know one thing you do need to get into as well, Jay. Eventually, yeah. Which I'm surprised Six hasn't done it yet because I know he really loves this stuff too. Maybe he'll do it eventually, or someone pays him for it. But, um, but one thing uh, that you might really love, especially if you're a fan of DC, Batman, you name it, um, is Witcher. So uh, it's oh, about this yeah, dude, yeah, Geralt, sure. yeah. a Batman, but during the medieval times. Oh, that's dope. So it's not like modern or futuristic or anything. Like, it's during like where there's only horses and shit, you name it, you know, um, knights and whatnot, or, you know, the, the kings and right, you know, and queens and shit. So it's during that uh, period of time. Um, but the, what witchers are basically in a simple consensus without me spoiling any of like the great shit is basically he's a mu mutated human. To where he goes through a certain trials that has like a one percent a survival rate, and if he's you know if the human survives and he you know obviously survives it, and they take a certain thing and it makes them become a mutated uh, human and become a witcher to where their senses are more enhanced, um, and they're super intelligent, yada yada yada. And basically he's literally Batman, but during medieval times, and it's incredible. It's really really good. And there's monsters, and sorcerers, and then obviously humans. Um, and that's the world he's kind of in and it's very very interesting like the story is absolutely incredible all the concepts in it like there's you know supernatural things entities and it's it's great so yeah. it's pretty cool um, but, yeah I've, I've seen it like i've scrolled past it before i definitely took it out um I, I just like to see where others scale kusami thanks for answering yeah for sure man appreciate the donations again uh, Gojin, Gohan Super Saiyan 2 Cell Games versus Vegeta Super Saiyan 2 before the Majin boost. Now, the the sort of rare air that Gohan reached against Cell was not a level that he reached probably until the like when he was fighting Boo. Uh, well, not reached but surpassed. So, it's quite the jump in power. I don't think Vegeta before the Majin yeah. boost uh, is at that level, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so I would deduce probably just Gohan still. If it's Super Saiyan Rage Gohan, the one that like beats all the Cell Jr.'s asses and stuff, probably still Gohan. Probably. Yeah. yeah <laughs> probably. That's like a, a new level of power that we don't see for a while. Again. Uh, at least from my lens. So. No, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah folks, about 20 more minutes will depart. It's almost four hours. But yeah, any questions at all, folks? Combat Sports World is heating up. We got John Jones fighting in fucking you know November. Colby Covington fighting Leon Edwards. We have Sean O'Malley fighting next month. We got all kinds of good stuff coming, guys. So, yeah. yeah hey, fights. you were right about that. You probably already talked about it, Jay, but you were right about Paul winning. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jake Paul. By the way, folks, Jake he Paul. Won he won the way I thought he would. Nate Diaz is older, <laughs> slower. Yeah, his cardio is great. Yeah, he probably wasn't going to get knocked out. But Jake Paul is a legitimately good boxer. <laughs> He's a good boxer. Yeah. Got to give credit when it's due. Yeah, and he boxed well. Honestly, what surprised me the most was his cardio. He was able to fight 10 rounds with a with decent pace. That's not easy to do, especially against Nate Diaz. That guy smothers you for endlessly. And he was able to fight very, very well. I was impressed. Nate Diaz looked old. I mean, he's 38 years old, not surprised. And Jake's a good fighter. There's a rare possibility that Jake might fight Connor. I think it's a possibility. I don't know if Connor wants it, um, but it's definitely possible. That'd and be I, pretty cool if that happened. And guess what? I think it would be competitive. As, bad, as crazy as that sounds, I think Jake would compete with Connor McGregor. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Sounds insane. <laughs> sounds insane, but we saw what Jake's done. It's like it's it's a simple concept of like, you know, they're UFC fighters. They're not used to that that uh, perception of things when it comes to boxing. It's a different element. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot more things they're strained with. There's a lot more things they can't really do. Whatever, and it just boils down to your hands, right, and your movement and shit, yep. and you name it, and all the kind of spectrums and techniques. 
So you go from UFC where it's free reign, you can do all this stuff and get into, and then go into something where you're immediately limited to what you can do. It's a whole other can of worms, you know? And they're over here thinking they can come in, you know, from what they do in UFC, and they replicate the same thing in boxing, and that's just not how that works. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the, the difference, they're, they're, yeah, the difference between boxing and the UFC, distance control is different. The size of the gloves that you're using is different. What does that mean? The defense techniques you must utilize are different. Boxing allows for yep. more defense. Um, the way combinations are thrown are different. The linear lateral, yep. lateral fashion of combinations are different. The game plans are different. It, it, things are much different. It's almost as if boxing is a completely different sport than the UFC. Yes, in the UFC, you're using a derivative of boxing. It's MMA boxing, yeah. but it's different because in boxing, everything is done differently because of the parameters of the sport. You're wearing 14 to 16-ounce gloves. You're fighting three 12-minute rounds if you're a, a flat-out professional. Everything is different. So Nate Diaz has fought. 20 plus fights in MMA, but he's never really fought a boxing match before. And we saw oh. his power already wasn't good in the UFC, but with the bigger gloves, he really didn't have any power. Yeah, he hit Jake a couple times, like, oh, he got him a couple times. Never really stunned him. But his power, yeah. I knew, was not going to be a threat because he doesn't hit hard. He, he, he's he's a, not doing it in the UFC. He ain't yeah. doing that in boxing. Like, he has a lot of uh, <laughs> volume. Like, he could throw endlessly, but there's no, no power to his punches. I knew that was going to happen. I already knew that was going to happen. Jake can fucking and crack. Jake, oh, he'll have power. Yeah. yeah. Jake can crack, man. He dropped Nate in the fifth round. He can crack. So, Jake Paul might fight Conor McGregor. He might fight Conor McGregor. Now, where I think he gets a little crazy is where he starts saying, oh, in three years, I'm going to fight Canelo. You're never beating Canelo, bro. Canelo is the best boxer on the fucking planet. Like, relax. <laughs> you, beat Nate, you beat Nate Diaz, all right? You didn't fucking beat Canelo Alvarez. Relax. So, oh yeah, yeah Canelo ridiculous. is he's pound for pound number one or two in the fucking planet. Like one of the best boxers on the face of the planet. You're not beating him, so relax. That's just dishonest. That's so mean. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> lost to Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury only Tommy Fury is a boxer, but he only has nine professional fights. Canelo has fifty, and, yeah. he's, a, and he's a three division world champ, dude. You're not fucking beating start with that. the low. You got to start with the low ones, bro. Exactly. <laughs> you know you're not, if you if you can't beat oh, Tommy Fury, oh, dude, you're gonna get fucked up by Canelo. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Canelo's probably, Canelo will probably knock him out to be honest I'm not going to lie yeah, like uh, Paul can challenge UFC fighters all day every day and get yeah. nothing but clout and you know W's from that but once again if he starts going back to his you know to what he's specializing in and going to be challenging goats yeah, yeah he's, he's crazy for that yeah because no. there's, so, there's a difference between oh you're a good boxer and then oh dude you're world class like you're a fucking yeah, world no. class master like that's Floyd like the son yeah, Achi and Minato and Obido, you know exactly. It's like being like Kakuzu, like oh, you're your threat, and then being fucking yeah. pain, like oh, this guy's a fucking threat. That's the difference between like, like, yeah, even like way above. Yeah, that, that's even yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, like Paul's Kakuzu, and the guy he just shot it out and says that he wants to fight next, and, and say so like maybe he thinks that he can beat or whatever. That he's literally talking about like people on the the lines of like pain, Minato, Itachi, Obido. Blah, blah, blah. He's not even yeah. stunning. He's talking about somebody like all the way that far and that's just crazy yeah because there's a huge discrepancy like jake's a good boxer he's a good boxer canelo is one of the best boxers of all fucking time that's the difference so yeah um was there any reason why nagato didn't just revive yahiko um it's either he didn't know how to utilize that power yet or he was just so mentally distraught he didn't think of it and it was probably too late so, yeah, his ideology shifted anyway. So to him, it's like, my your ideology didn't work, Yakikiko. You know, I love you like a brother, but we got to do things my way. So I'm gonna just use your corpse. I didn't want to. Yeah, that too. Maybe he, yeah. you know. Maybe he just didn't want it. You know. Maybe, maybe he, he did. In that, all his hope at that point, he's like, you know what? That's my wake up call. That's it. Fuck this world. Yeah. You know. And if anything, he he probably would have known that Yakiko would have been disgusted by him. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing, Nakado? Like, what are you... You're fucking impl imposing your will through fear? We didn't talk about this before. Like, Yakiko would have been disgusted by him. So... Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. Like, I don't think... Like, I'm, I'll be honest. I don't think time was an issue because if we analyze with, like, what even Kabuto says to utilize the abilities of Nagato, clearly time isn't an issue because he's over here like, oh, I'll just bring him back when it's convenient. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like, and take your soul, bring, put him in the thing, and then I'll just bring him back. Or two, like literally all those chapters or all those episodes in the anime pass, 
And Nagato's finally like, you know what? All right, fine. I'll get my life and bring all these people back that I just killed. Like, a lot of time passed, bro. Yeah. And exactly. he was to bring them all back. I don't think time was the issue. It was either like what Jay was saying. He just, you know, said, fuck it. Like, Yagato, your shit didn't work. And I, that's it. You know what I mean? I've had enough. Or two, okay, um, he just didn't know how to utilize that ability yet. We, yeah. He could use certain abilities, like somebody in the ghetto and, and Shinra Tensei, but that's it. You know? Yeah. So. Yagato would have been disappointed in him. I think, I think Nagato knew that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah he would have. Yeah, he would have been. He would have been. It would have been like a friend uh, to uh, Obito all over again. He probably would have tried to stop him, and then uh, Nagato would have to yeah, kill him you know, again. He yeah. have to kill him again. Yeah, so. Red's too kind. She did like after her seeing everything Obito did. Yeah. she's like, "It's okay. I still love you as a friend. I'll friend zone you again." Yeah, <laughs> Literally. So, yeah. Nagato. Well, yeah, Nagato, yeah, he'd be like, "I gotta stop you," and then get shitted on. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Um, what do you have to say for the Sishui dick writers that still think he's relevant and even dumber still alive? Um, yeah, there's some people that really wank Shishui for sure. Unfortunately, he lost to Donzo yeah. in every iteration of the fucking the manga, the novel, the game, fucking everything. Yeah. So he's not that strong. Sorry. Um, he but could've... he can hold his own. You can give him that bare yeah. minimum. I mean, like, he was fighting the entire Amba Platoon and Donzo, whatever, blah, blah. And there's certain things, like, you can kind of, like, analyze in a sense to where you can even come to a conclusion that he doesn't necessarily scale to donzo but either way he still loses three times bare minimum okay he's at least within that ballpark right because he doesn't die immediately yeah um what's going gives him a good fight and even donzo praises him he, um two or if you go along certain spectrums you can say he's still beyond donzo but he has its limits so yeah he, he had potential but yeah the current iteration we saw of Sishui wasn't like Itachi and the Akatsuki or anything, unfortunately. No, uh, no. Like, the best thing he really had was just, like, being uh, contentious with three Tomo Itachi. That's it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, but, but. Noodles thinks that Pain is the fifth strongest Akatsuki member. I mean, yeah, that makes sense with his cockatoo yeah. scaling. <laughs> yeah, apparently even hit on would be beyond Pain, technically, oh, by Jesus. that. So, oh, my God. So. Maybe it was out of respect, too. He wanted Yahiko to rest in peace. Yeah, exactly. What do you guys think of tattoos on women? I think it's a big turnoff. Uh, if it's a ton, yeah. It's going to have a turnoff to me as well. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It, it, I'll be honest. There's certain uh, women that I have seen, uh, excuse me, uh, that have like tattoos in certain areas or whatever, and it's actually very attractive. Yeah, you know what certain I mean? areas. So it just depends. Yeah. If they're yeah. like covered in them, yeah. If they have them in like certain areas, it's it's cool. Yeah. Like, like the only like I've seen it's rare, but I've seen some women where they can be covered not on their face, but they can be covered like in a good way, like on their body at least. So this way, let's say like somehow, some way, you got the third base and you're about to sleep with the woman. You know what I mean? You can see all the tattoos on her body and stuff. Some women actually does look really good. Yeah, and, and, and they look attractive and, and sexy. Yeah, but for some it just work, bro. You know, yeah, it depends on <laughs> so, the on the aesthetic of the woman too. Yeah, some are just yeah, so, yeah better like, percentage. Majority wise, probably not if it's all over their fucking body. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, no. But there are W women out there. Uh, and then, second scenario, um, this would be my, the main W qualification for the majority woman where they have it in certain areas and it just looks good. It looks right. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it definitely depends. Most of the time, not. Nah, sometimes, yeah. Depends on your preference. Some guys like when they're fucking covering them. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think of Baron on mode? I feel like it came out of nowhere. I don't. I think that it was necessary to have a single remote chance against oh, Ishiki. Absolutely needed. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely needed. Like Dude. either, either Sasuke was gonna have to do like some. This is the only way I saw like if that for some weird reason wasn't the case. Either Sasuke would have had to pull what Obito did against Conan and utilize Izanagi in a sense, and they just get like a bullshit ass win con, right? Something yeah. like that, or two. What they did with Naruto, which is legendary. Or three, okay, Sasuke and Naruto somehow do something to where, like, they combine, like, I don't know, they do, like, so I don't know, Vegeta or Goku type shit. They do, like, a fusion in a sense, but to where it's going to, like, overcome Sasuke because he can't really handle everything what Naruto can, right? And so Sasuke dies in the end, but they at least are able to defeat him together. You know, kind of like a Dragon Ball Z moment, you know, with Vegeta and Goku working together. That would be like the only three ways I could ever see that shit happening. Yeah, so. I mean, it made sense for sure. Um, yeah, Fortnite Gojo versus was... Fortnite versus Fortnite Goku. Well, they're both axe level, so they're both ass. Yeah. Um, oh, I got I got uh, J two because I know you probably already talked about it. Gear Five was ass. I'm sorry, that's just me. Oh, the animation. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. It looks so goofy, 
bro. Uh, it's it's supposed to be like cartoony, I guess, but I need to check. Yeah, it, out. it looked like Tom and Jerry, bro. I'm not even lying. I'll... Yeah. Um, it's cool though. The concept of it is really cool. I like you know certain aspects, or whatever, and that was great. Yeah. But just how it was utilized in the animation, I just I can't vibe with it. So. Um, Jay I had the dream of you yesterday punching Seth in the face. That's a good dream, man. Cause I'd do that shit for sure. Um, <laughs> do that. For- yeah, I'd slap his shit. Uh, do you think Kuruma knew about Baron mode during the war? No, here's why. Because when Naruto technically died, or technically was, you know, removed from Kuruma as a vessel, Kuruma never brought that up. That'd be a perfect time to bring it up because both of them were going were at risk. So I don't think he knew about it back then. I think rationally, if he were to know of something that can give him that much power, he would have told him when they were fighting Madara. He would have said, "Hey, man, yeah, we're yeah, not absolutely. We're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, we're not going to beat this guy, so we're going to have to use this, and we're both going to die." He probably would have lied to Naruto and said, "We're going to die to using this, but it's the only way to beat Madara," and that's probably what yeah. happened. Yeah, but like, think of it this way: like, absolutely, Jay is a hundred million times percent. Think of it this way, guys: like, let's say if the six paths thing was never an option, right? Like, that was never going to happen. Let's be real: there's no way for the nine tails to know that either, right? So let's say like that's not even a whatever. And let's say Kuruma did have that knowledge. I'm going to be 100% real with it. Absolutely, he would have mentioned that to either Minato or Naruto. If anything, he would have actually said it to Minato out of anyone because he's an Edo, technically. And that would have been more beneficial. And that would, I think, what, he could probably just go infinite at that point or maybe longer in a sense. But then oh, Kuruma would die either half with you. You know, so like, um, or better yet, we don't really know that much about it. Unless maybe you do, Jay. But I think that actually requires both halves, not just one. But yeah, I don't know. I think so. But either way, like, if that was an option, they would somehow, some way have to figure out how to get get the other half, give that to freaking Naruto, and that's just going to be complicated overall in a sense, while especially wars going on, whatever. And let's say even if it was possible with just one half or whatever, it'd probably be way more shorter, but let's say it's, it's possible, whatever. Bottom line is, like what Jay say, it just it makes no fucking sense because the Nine Tails is over here strategizing how to deal with Obito's calmly, blah, blah. Yada yada yada, helping with the ten tails. Like he's going above and beyond to make sure they both survive and don't get ruled over by Madara. You know what I mean? And you're telling me it when especially when Madara is acquiring six past power and shit, yeah. or even just the Madara that comes back with you know uh, alive. You know, like you're telling me he's never gonna be like, hey, you should do this so this way he dies and we win. He would have done that. So yeah, there's yeah. no way he fucked. Especially when he, like I said, when uh, the nine the tail beasts are getting ripped out and like getting absorbed by Madara, they would definitely would he definitely would have brought that up. So Or scenario two, he did know, but once again, since he only had half, there was no way to utilize it. Yeah. So uh about five more minutes though, folks, and we'll depart. Um Beers with chopsticks versus whole Naruto verse. That's all he would need, man, to fucking soul the whole verse. Besides maybe Shibai. He'd sold the whole fucking <laughs> verse. Shibai would be the only one that would be a threat. Um that man would come through and just be slapping them all like he did the Bulma. Yeah, like he'd be <laughs> flicking them the way he flicked Super Saiyan three Goku in the Battle of Gods movies. Literally, literally like he, uh, he'd be giving them the Sanade treatment to Part One Naruto. Yeah, literally. Imagine how funny a Madara versus Tobarama debate would be. Presidential debate. Oh God, that would be a mess. Um, <laughs> Blood lost to Kakuzu versus SpongeBob. SpongeBob transcends reality. Kakuzu is omnipotent. Yep. Um. It'd be a good battle, but Kakuzu is omnipotent, so probably Kakuzu. Um, yeah. Have you ever seen Power? Really good show. If it's the show I think you're talking about, I've seen some of it, but I haven't finished it, and it was pretty good. If I, if it's the show yeah. I think you're talking about, um, yeah. Um, you always ask that. And season two is going to be coming out soon. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be dope. Uh, but yeah, folks, a few more questions. Three more minutes. About to hit three, uh, four hours, or close to it. We shall depart. But yeah, next week we shall have the whole gang. Um, be yeah. back. You know, um, like I said, I worked with a uh, content creator. I'm not going to say who, what the video is, but that's going to drop. He told me Monday it's dropping. So I'll let you guys know as well. I'm sure you guys already subscribed to it. I'm sure you guys are subscribed to him already. I'm not going to say who, but I'll let you guys know as well. Power with 50 Cent. Yeah, that's the show I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good show. So you guys will love that. It comes out Monday. It's going to be a banger one. Yeah, it's, it's a really good video. I think that me and you know, the content creator did good work. So, Candy Vegito versus the Otsuskis. Candy Vegito. 
I mean, at that candy point, Veg- even Vegeta with Candy <laughs> Duty slamming Boo. Yeah. Uh, Boo is arguably universal. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Veg- Vegeta even in Candy form would slap their shit. Yeah. yeah. Vegeta versus Tobirama. That's hilarious. Bro. Uh, yeah, that's, that's comical. It's a comical uh, matchup. Are we talking about, like, Kid Vegeta? <laughs> that's the only one that would fucking <laughs> Tobirama would contend with. Even then. Get fucking slammed. He um, probably would still lose. <laughs> like the little kid video that we see, like taking over planets, would fucking slam to around. Like, like, bro, like man can't even handle V two Ken again, bro. And oh, and then here's another thing uh, to, to give some more icing on the cake with this guy. I found out uh, some additional information. So there's a point where like Kakuzu says like, oh, like just like last time when it, you know once he's done in, you know he goes in a rampage into V two whatever. So what I was thinking is like maybe when Tobirama was fighting them. You know, and he took out one of them. The brother just got fucking pissed. You know what I mean? Goes into V two and just slams Toby Rama like with the nine tails power. Yeah. Like, bro. Like, and I'm like, that could actually be a plausible scenario, and that would have just been hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that that would have been crazy. Um, but yeah, Vegeta. Let's be real. The nine power with that is nowhere near even Dragon Ball Z, bro. No. You know what even, I mean? No. Not even a fraction. It's not even close. No. Vegeta. <laughs> current Vegeta is fucking. Universal Plus. Like, so. yeah. yeah, I know. Like Dragon, the, the the first Vegeta we ever see in Dragon Ball Z, like just the nine tails power with Ken and Gen, nowhere near that shit. Hell no. <laughs> it's why Kage at six. Well, can't tell you folks, but it's a really good content creator. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a really good content creator, and uh, soon we'll collab as well. Um, but I think it's gonna wrap it up, folks. Almost four hours. Great pod. Sure. Thanks for the donations, YC Prodigy. Goat for that as well. We'll be back with a... One uh, thing we can say for Jay, though, is for future plans, Jay is going to be more than likely collaborating with a bunch of people, though, guys. Yeah, so. exactly. I'm trying to really get know, Maybe then eventually you will get a swag in six, or maybe that is coming up, or maybe it's not. Who knows? We'll see, folks. But either way, yeah, we'll it's going to happen anyways. It's going to happen soon, <laughs> but we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be back next week, all the whole gang. And uh, appreciate it, folks. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out, y'all. Peace.